welcome to Sewing Quarter on this lovely Saturday morning. We've got a fantastic show lined up today. I'm joined by Anna from Alice Carolina and we've got some great Liberty fabrics which you're going to love. I've fallen in love with them already. Um, I'm Amy Burrows. I'm with you for the whole morning today and we've got a whole fantastic range of different, um, different threads, different storage options as well as these gorgeous Liberty fabrics you can see on my desk in front of me. So let's talk through what's coming up on today's show. At eight o'clock is Alice Caroline's Wonderland. So we've got two gorgeous Liberty print bags, which I know you're going to love, and some charm pack squares as well. At 9 a.m., oh, it's Colours of Nature. We're doing it in the wrong order today. We're jumping around. That's the, that's the title of the day, Colours of Nature. At nine o'clock, we have got Bobbin Along. So we've got lots of different threads and different storage options for your workroom. At 10 o'clock, we're back, Alice Caroline's Wonderland, Anna's back, and we're doing a lovely quilt block and also a clutch bag. And at 11 a.m. is Quilt As You Go. We've got a premiere, a brand new Quilt As You Go kit, which you always go mad for. They're always incredibly popular. So a really ex exciting show lined up this morning. And look at this bag that we're making. I can't, I love a bag. You know I love a bag. I can't wait to show you how we're going to do that this morning. And also this beautiful um, Sara tote as well. So two different options, depending on what sort of size you're looking for. So also remember, we love to hear from you. We love you to get in touch. If you've got any questions for Anna this morning about Alice Caroline, about the Liberty Fabrics, about the bags that we're making, the projects that we're doing, send them in, get in touch. So you can head to the website and if you go to the watch icon at the top of the page, you can click on that and just under the live feed of today's show, there it is. So if you just scroll down, it's jumped across to the other side, but the message to the studio box is there on the right-hand side of your screen, and you can drop us a message. So say hello, any questions that you might have, that goes straight up to producer Hannah upstairs so we can, we can get those answered for you. Hello with a, a gazillion exclamation marks. Someone's excited that it's Saturday. <laughs> and underneath that is a shopping list of all the products from today's show. So those are from yesterday, but as we go through the program today, all of the uh, different Liberty uh, packs and everything will be listed there. And you can add those to your basket and check them out that way. So also you can get in touch via um, email. So if you want to send us in a picture, perhaps you made something with the Liberty Fabrics last time Anna was on, send us a photo um, studio at sewingquarter.com and just attach your picture to that. And we uh, might be able to show it on the show. So please do send those in. So as I mentioned, we're making this gorgeous, gorgeous Catherine bag. So this is a quilted bag that we're doing using this, these lovely uh, Liberty fabrics. You can see it there on your screen. It's got a nice comfy handle. The bag itself is quilted. We're going to be showing you that um, chain piecing technique this morning with Anna. But you just get an insight there into those, how those gorgeous purple fabrics all come together to create that overall look. REBY24, we know that's going to be popular this morning. That's the Catherine tote. So in your bundle, you get your fabric there. So you've got all of the fabric. You've also got a lining fabric in that bright magenta pink. You've got the instructions from Alice Caroline, which have really lovely clear diagrams in there. They're color instructions. You've also got everything you need for the handle and you've got your wadding in that one as well. Oh, everything but the wadding. So you need to add your wadding to that bundle. What's that in the bottom left corner then, the white? Oh, we need to check that. I'm not sure it looked like wadding, but it's, it's not wadding. So that's what's in your bundle for the Catherine tote. We also have another option. This is the Sarah tote, or kind of like a magazine bag. So this is, producer Hannah loves this fabric. This is an exclusive from Alice Caroline, this fabric. And it's, it would be a perfect magazine bag. Perfect. The, uh, this is a canvas, so it's a slightly different feel, slightly different fabric, um, obviously a bit more durable, a little bit thicker, but it would be perfect for, uh, for magazines and books. It was a shopper. We're making this in this hour as well. So you get all of your fabric and your instructions in this bundle. You can see that there on your screens. That's a really classic Liberty print. F-A-B-Y-85 for that one. Now we've also got two lovely cute little charm packs this morning. They're two and a half inch squares so you can incorporate those into some chain piecing whether that's in a little mini cushion or perhaps in a makeup or toiletry bag which Anna's going to show you too. So we've got two colour options for this. I'll start with the purple. So you can just see this one here. You're getting 36 um, little charm squares in this. Um, so you can, see, you can see that you've got all those lovely florals, those classic Liberty prints. It is different to the one in the bag that you can see in the background there. There it is. But 36 squares, if you want to add some Liberty fabric to your, to your stash, to your collection, perhaps you've never had any of the, uh, their fabrics before. They're such gorgeous quality fabrics. They're a lawn, a really superior cotton. 
If you want to add those to your stash, that's the purple option there. Now we also have a pink option. So I can show you some of these when I go over to Anna, I can just give you a little insight into what the different fabrics are. But we just want to give you an idea of what's coming up in this hour. So you can see your pink charm squares here. Again, 36 squares in there. Two and a half inch squares. A-L-B-Y, oh, that's my initials, A-L-B. A-L-B-Y 92. And that again is 995. Okay, so everything else you can see on the desk this morning, we're doing it in the 10 o'clock hour. Anna's back again at 10 o'clock. So we've got this lovely quilt block. You might have seen this on social media. It's already looking really popular and um, with our butterflies and our raw edge applique. And we've also got a clutch bag, but we're going to look at those in the next hour. So at what, 10 o'clock, so in two hours time. So let's head over to Anna. Let's get cracking with these bags. I'm going to take this with me. I can't resist. <laughs> Here we go. Morning, Anna. Hi, Amy. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Oh, good. Great to see you. These are gorgeous. Oh, Aren't they lovely? Yeah, they are. I mean, you, know, I mean, you, you imagine wanted... working with these fabrics I know. every day. I mean, that was my next thing. I was just going to say, what is it like to just be with these fabrics all of the time? Well, A privilege. It's, it's like... It's, you know, chicken and egg, really, because <laughs> basically, uh, it's so amazing. We've got over 450 Liberty Fabrics in our studio. Amazing. But, but it's, you know, also a nightmare because I spend so much money on them. <laughs> <laughs> so you earn every, the money from the work, but then you just buy I things. I go to the studio, I'm like, oh, well, that will make a nice dress. That will make a nice cushion. You said that today, would... your yeah. dress is, this is I know, I'm quite fabric. proud of my dress today. I'm quite proud of it. This is my first shirt dress. I was quite pleased. Yeah. <laughs> So talk to us a bit about um, Alice Caroline. What, so talk about a bit about the brand, if anyone doesn't know, if you've not heard of, of yeah, Alice Yeah, so Caroline. if everyone hasn't heard of Alice before, she's, um, she's obsessed with Liberty Fabrics. So she's basically a designer. She designs patterns, quilt kits, um, bag kits, as we've got on today, cushion kits, all sorts of different things, uh, primarily out of uh, Liberty Fabrics. It's been a long life obsession of hers. Yeah. The Liberty Fabric, the quality, uh, you know, you can feel the quality oh, yeah, on them. The it's, lawn. That's such nice quality, and I think because they're such good quality, the intricacy of the design is so amazing. Um, and you know, you can get so much tiny detail, and you'll see from a lot of these lovely little prints here today that there's so much detail in them, which you couldn't got, get on a lesser quality no. print. So she sort of created an obsession when she was a young girl, really. But the thing is, as well, that as you said with those prints, you, there aren't many fabrics you could take a two and a half inch square from and that you would get this much design yeah, or this much exactly. pattern because exactly. they there's are so such, many. such detailed designs. Yeah, yeah. You know, you're taking the, these tiny sections. So this is from the um, purple charm pack. Let me tell you, I've got this bag on my shoulder. Yeah, this so is, this is the, this is the purple, purple charm, charm pack. pack. And I've made a little cushion um, cover out of it, to be honest. You, you know, you can see that you, in one charm pack, you can make a little cushion cover. Yeah. So, it, you know, they're, they're lovely. Or well, you could do so many different things with a charm pack. With the fabrics. Yeah. And, and what about with, for Liberty as well? If someone hasn't worked with Liberty before, why, why do people fall in love with these fabrics? I think it's the combination of the colours and the design and actually the feel of the fabrics. If you feel, if you feel yeah, that, it just feels so soft. It almost... Lots of people say it almost silky. feels like silk. It does have a silky feel. But it obviously is 100% cotton. Uh, it's called Tarn Lawn. So every fabric that we're working with today is, is a Tarn Lawn, apart from the canvas in the yes, uh, Sarah Tote bag. Sarah tote. Yeah, so uh, I think, you know, the combination of the designs, this is the pinks colours here. We could, you know, have a little spread out of these. Yeah. You know, there's so many different, different colours and, and intricacy of design. And I think... What, with Liberty, actually, you can get completely different fabrics that go together. Yeah, this is so, your pink one here, the pink charm squares. Yeah, so it's just it's just lovely just to spread them out, just to have a look. Just have and, a little look. You know, you can see that they 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 all look just beautiful together. They are just gorgeous, gorgeous prints. We get so many customers who basically have just fallen in love with Liberty, you know, their whole lives. And, or they remember it as a child. They remember having Liberty dresses as a child. the 1920s, Liberty. Yeah, it's from yeah, that era. And, yeah, and, you know, so people remember having their dresses being made, you know, as little girls by their mums. And, in Liberty fabric. And then they make them for their mum, their daughters and, and grandchildren. And I think that's... It's, it, you know, it's a legacy. And it's, they have a heritage. It's, 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 I think it's that's a fantastic heritage, yeah. And, um, yeah, so a fabric I've is fallen in love this morning. I don't know if you can see this cushion behind us here. <laughs> it's absolutely stunning. These fabrics just... I, 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 just I ought to make you one, didn't I? I don't, <laughs> Just gave it a massive squid, and I was like, I, don't, I want this, I need to take this one. It's a nice to be this morning, I might make <laughs> Oh my goodness, I'd love that. But yeah, no, they are absolutely beautiful. You can yeah. see them in the quilts, you can see them in these gorgeous quilts as well, using these um, these different squares. But we, we're working with these charm pack squares this morning. As you said, this is um, the yeah. purples here in the cushion and the makeup yeah. bag. Yeah. Just some inspiration of what you could do with these little two and a half inch squares. Yeah, so, I mean, you can make quilts out of them, quilt blocks. You can do all sorts of things with a charm square pack. You yeah. Know? But I've made a little cushion 
cover here with just an envelope back. A little mini one. Yeah, and um, I've also started to make a, a makeup bag just to show that actually from one charm pack square you can, you can make, make something. You can make the whole outside. You can make that the front you of know, a you cushion. You could even combine these, couldn't you? If you wanted yeah. to make it, there's nothing because obviously these are pinks, these are purples, but those colours still all work. All well, work actually, together. yeah, the pinks and the purples go very these well ones, together, so don't you they? You could pick these into. Yeah, absolutely. Or if you if or if sort of more bluesy your thing, then, you know, go for that. Go for I mean, what leaves. Alice does brilliantly is put colours together, and that, that's her thing, really. You know, she'll put brilliant colours together and brilliant patterns together to create something. something. So, for example, in your Catherine bag that we've got this morning, you know, I don't think everybody could put those colours together. I mean, she's done it in the charm pack here, but it, it's it's quite a skill, and I think Alice is fantastic for... at that. And, you know, creating these lovely patterns out of it, and, you know, just to create well, a, a really lovely tote, really. So we're doing with the charm pack squares this morning. Can we can we show us how some, how we would use these squares? Yeah, well, I'm just going to show you a bit of chain piecing, to be honest with you, because I'm using it in the next demonstration for the Catherine Tote. So, so I let's do let's, the technique, and then we're yes, going to apply that the to technique. the other projects as well. Pop on the glasses for this bit. <laughs> so all you do really is you you would get your your charm pack, um, your your different squares from your like charm this. pack. Yeah, and you put uh, two together, right sides together, and then you would. Um, just sew them at a quarter inch seam, or actually whichever seam allowance you like, but because they're quite small um, charm packs, I've, yeah. I'm sewing with a quarter inch seam this morning. Can we open this one? Yeah, of course. Always. <laughs> we can always open things. Oh, as well, all the, um, let's just pop these around here. Let's just stop two seconds while we just pop these fabrics out. Let's just look at what's in here first. So these are your, um, just before you start the chain piece, oh, one sorry. second. No, that's fine. I was just going to show. I'm racing ahead. The, um, I was just going to show these different fabrics that you've got in there. These gorgeous, which one's your favourite? This is your purple bundle. This is my favourite fabric of all time, this Betsy print. I love it. I've made a dress in green in it. It comes in loads of different colourways. And, oh, it, it's, it's one of the classic Liberty prints that so many people just awesome. love, love, love. I love this one. To be honest, there's not one that I don't like. No. <laughs> that's, I, I really, really like that one. It's quite, um, that would make a great dress, wouldn't it? A nice summery, summery summer dress. Top. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think you've got quite an eye. <laughs> so we're chain piecing. So what we're doing, I, I, I guess your your viewers will be quite familiar with, with yeah, patchworking. Well, but this is quite um a, quite an easy little technique for just speed. So you chain piece them together. So instead of sewing two pieces of fabric together and then stopping, you just keep going. So this is what um, John calls, calls tailgating, doesn't he? So you just tailgating keep or chain mailing, yeah. I think he called it last time. <laughs> I, was, I, took my, I took my children to a National Trust property the other week and um, we, we tried on these chain mail hats and it made me think of John, John. and this chain mailing. <laughs> because you, you just keep it moving through, don't you? You keep so it moving. Right on the bumper of that piece of fabric yeah. in front, you just... And it's, it's, it's a time saver, so you basically you're just... So you pin them right sides together yeah. and you're feeding those through the machine. Yeah, a quarter inch seam. And then you end up with lots of pieces in a chain. And then you would just snip in between. I mean, I'll stop there because, you know, you've seen the process. Ooh. And then once you've done this, what sort of things would you make with these? Obviously, you've got your cushions, you've got your little makeup and toiletry bags. So you see, you've got it's your like little bunting. chain. <laughs> it is, well, it's, yeah. it's lovely bunting, isn't it? But you've got your wrong side out. So yes, you, that's true. Um, oh, your cushion covers, you can make quilt block pieces. Um, yeah, blocks for quilt blocks. You, you, could, um, you could have a big plain quilt and then have each corner in a... splash of liberty. Yeah, you could. And, and it's a really good way of getting a bit of liberty in with, you know, your, in, with some planes. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's top of, it is top is of it, the yeah, end, it, liberty it, fabric. You know, it is an, an expensive fabric. Lots of, lots of our customers use quality. it in combination with plain colours. Um, plain fabric so that you can um, just make it more know, affordable you can, yeah yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah you just take out your have we got the iron to hand yes let's grab that for you and then as you can see I've just snipped in between the chain so you just separate those just separate them let's just move and then you've these. got your two pieces together let's just see that and then what what I think is really, really important when you're doing any sewing is pressing any seam afterwards because it makes it far more accurate. So I'm just going to show oh, what um, Anna's just done there. So well, where we put, were putting, feeding them through the machine, they were obviously like this, uh, wrong, right sides together, all the way through like that. Then you snipped between them. Yep. Then we're just opening them out yep. and pressing them. And pressing. Lovely. Yeah, and the better you're pressing... Yes. <laughs> 
Pressing, not ironing. Not ironing. Pressing. Pressing. I don't iron. No. I don't like ironing. The only time we ever <laughs> All about besides that it's pressing, it's not ironing. No, the only time I ever iron is when I'm sewing. <laughs> you said as well earlier, before we came on air, I don't even own an ironing board, I just have an ironing mat. <laughs> I know, Alice is horrified with me with that. I think it's something that she you're probably... You're just using it for sewing. She's trying to sewing. persuade me to, uh, to, to change. <laughs> and then you can do the same process again. I mean, I won't, I won't go on to show you because it's sort of the same thing, but you, again, right sides together and then you've got... You just need to make sure that, have you got, can, can you see that? You just need to make sure when you are then going into two, you line up your seams and then you pin your seams. Just very lightly, lightly pin. And then you would sew again down at a quarter inch seam and the same process as we go along. Okay. And then you, you, you build it up into whatever you want to build it so up into, really. So depending what sort of shape you're building it Yeah, so it up you could into. plan it out beforehand. If you were going to do this cushion cover, you can see it's five across. This would fit a 10-inch cushion pad. Yeah. Um, and so you would just plan Let's it. Let's just look at that one. You just plan it accordingly. So you would just, you do into fours, into fours, and then you'd add your two onto the end. So you'd still have, how many would we have left if we did five? Okay. Five fives are twenty-five. Five five, so you'd still have eleven left. You would, or you could do six. You could do six, six by six. Just do that slightly bigger. Yeah, depending on the size of your cushion pad. To be honest, six six by six or five by five would fit a ten-inch cushion pad. So either one. Yeah. But I do really like it. This is um, and it's just done this sort of incorporated it here as another idea into a little makeup or toiletry bag. But you've just got that lovely effect with those charm squares. These are your purple squares that are on your screens at the moment. But, I mean, that's nowhere near 36 pieces. You could do, you know, yeah. an even bigger bag than that, couldn't you? Or you, you could, could do it on the back as well. Alice has incorporate, um, Anna's incorporated a, a different Liberty print on the back. But with those charm squares, if you wanted to do the whole thing in charm squares, you could certainly do that. I'm glad you're calling me Alice. Everybody calls me Alice. <laughs> no, it's good. Uh, no, 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 it's fine. <laughs> I know, everybody, everybody thinks Alice and I are the same person. Really? And yeah, I've got straight hair today, so we've, got, <laughs> we've both got curly hair normally. And... Um, and so everybody thinks we're the same person. I think it's hilarious. But it's so growing can... so quickly, isn't it? All the Alice Caroline, all everything that you're doing with all the Liberty fabrics. Yeah, recently we did our own exclusive collection. When we were on, our, on the show a month ago, we did our exclusive um, fabrics. So you could only get them here or from Alice Caroline. Yeah. Which was quite a coup for the company, really, because Absolutely. it's the first time it's ever been done. So, you know, to have that relationship with Liberty, that where Alice worked in conjunction with the Liberty designers and recolored, for example, that Betsy fabric that I showed you earlier, like. this one, um, we recolored that in a mint, which basically has gone completely crazy in France. Really? In France? <laughs> yeah. The French love mint fabrics, and it's gone absolutely crazy in France. So you can see I've just done the four. So these are all from the purple charm pack. Yeah. You can just see the Betsy one. Did you say this one was called? Wasn't yes, it? yeah. You can just see that there, how you can start to incorporate those together using that chain piecing technique. But it's a nice, simple technique as well. Obviously, they're not... Oh, like it's really got, simple. It's, it's, not, it's not a tricky one, is it? And then you, once you've assembled no. those, it's just deciding what you want to do with it's, them. It's really... Yes, it is, exactly. It's really easy. So, you know, as we said, we can make a cushion pad or a little makeup bag or... You know, uh, anything you want, really. Yeah. yeah so there's so two options in those charm packs this morning. This is the purple one. You can just see it. here. Um, so we can just see, if I just lay the uh, makeup bag and cushion next to those, you can just see how they start to come together with all of those different purple prints, lots of florals. But again, that lovely Tana lawn. You can see it on your screens there, just an insight into the... Um, Oh, wow. Half the stock of that one has already gone. That's oh. going really quickly this morning. <laughs> well, it's a good job we did our demo. So it's 9.95. <laughs> yes, we're going to do that one quickly. <laughs> WBBY53. Let's just look at that so you can see it here in your cushions. Look at those beautiful prints. It's no surprise that they're popular. And you're getting the quality of cotton as well. It's just a really lovely fabric to work with, isn't it? It is really lovely. Absolutely lovely. So you've also got the option for a pink. We've not got um, any products in sort of, sort of made up projects in that, but you can just see here, these are your blues and pinks that come through. It's the same idea. Two and a half inch squares. All producer Hannah's loving that one. Let's turn that over. Really gorgeous with your florals. Again, those 100% cotton, that Tana Lawn, ALBY92 for your pink and blue. So you're just getting a snippet of all of those prints. It's like a little taster, isn't it, into the, into the Liberty family. <laughs> it's, it's just an introduction. Oh, once you're in together. the Liberty family, there's no escaping. No, really. once you're in. Yeah, once you're, once in, you're, in, you're in. in. I'm, I, you know, I've become slightly obsessed with it recently, <laughs> which is a good so, thing. We've got two bags this morning as well. I'm not yeah. aware we need to, we've got to keep moving. So we've got gorgeous yeah. bags that, um, that Alan's made. Yeah. We've got this Catherine one. This is the Catherine quilted bag, which we're going to do now. We are, yeah. But look at this. 
It's lovely. Really, really, really lovely. So the nice reason I've set. shown you the chain piecing, chain mailing, whatever you yes. like to call it, tailgating, is because it's exactly the same principle for this bag. So it just scales up a yeah. slightly larger square. Yep. Yeah. So let's see what you get in that bundle if, for this Catherine tote. Again, obviously, you've got your Liberty fabrics. That all comes in the bundle. You can see those there. So this is how it, that would all comes packaged like that. You've also got um, everything you need to make the handle. You've got your step-by-step -step instructions. I don't know if we've got a copy of those here, just so I can show you. For which one, sorry? For the, um, the Catherine tote. I've got some left. right here. I'll just show you the instructions that you get. Because these are really They're lovely. They're very detailed. And Alice, well, Alice is Alice brilliant does all these, doesn't she? So Alice writes all of these and draws all the diagrams. And so... Um, yeah, she. I, I just love her diagrams. I think they're so. Yeah, if you if you go onto her, this one. You know, I think they they really really make it very clear. And it's nice that they're in colour as well. Yeah. It's all Absolutely. Step by step instructions. It, it makes it really clear because I'm a really visual person. I don't know about you. Yes. But I read something. I'm like, what does what does that mean? Sure what, what does that, that actually mean? What, yeah. But she because she does the combination of the the um, the words and the lovely diagrams. I think it makes it really easy. Well, uh, people do learn differently, don't they? Absolutely. Is it kinesthetic learning? If it depends if you're if you learn by yeah, pic, yeah, yeah. you know by pictures or by doing or something. Like I'm one of those. People. Yeah, one of those one of those learners. I'm a visual person. Sure. Yeah, all visual, the way. a visual learner. Yeah. But you've got those. You know, obviously you've got those there. Whichever and way. Yeah. Whichever either way. way. Caters for either. So you've got your instructions, you've got all of your fabric for the bag. Let's look at the bag so you can just see. You've got that here. These lovely handles just so it fits perfectly on your shoulder, nice and comfy. And also you've got that um, everything you need to make the handles in your You do, kit yeah. Too. And what you were saying was, is that wadding? It's actually the base of the bag, I think. Is oh, what it's you're... the bag So it's, it's a firm bag base. So this is oh, a really look, heavy weight. What's it called? Visoline. Yes. You call it Visoline. Um, so it, it, it just gives it the bottom a bit more body. structure. Yeah. Also, it means it stands up. It does. So it gives it that sort of... It does. Yeah, so that's what that... You don't get the wadding in this pack. That's the only thing you don't get. <laughs> but you get this and you get the... Um, the folder band, which was very popular yes. last time. Which we, we yeah, we hadn't seen before. Yeah. So we'll, we'll get to that. So with the um, with the squares, so these come cut to size like this already, or do we have to cut them? Um, I think you have to cut them. Okay. Yes, you have to cut them. But oh, it's you know with a rotary there. cutter and a, it's quite a simple a simple job just to just yeah. to raise. I love rotary cutting. Oh, I love it. Once you get <laughs> once you get into it, it's quite it's very satisfying. And you can do four or five at a time. So because they're obviously all the same, exactly the same size. Yes. You um, can lay them all on top of each other. And just, and just go, whoosh, you can do it all of them at the same time. I made my first ever block yesterday. Did you? Yeah, we got the, we did had you a challenge it? to we had, Oh, because. Oh, the of challenge. Course. We had a challenge here at Sewing Quarter. Everybody had to make a block to oh, make it one, about big, that. Yeah. one big quilt. And I did an S and a Q in reverse applique. And the Q is back to front. So the tail of the Q looks, is the complete wrong way. And it took me so long to do it. I thought, I can't go back and do it again. So I'm going to have a back to front Q on my block. Oh, that's but brilliant. I know. It was, it was a my children attempt. do that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> that makes me feel loads better. Same level of sewing. One, yeah, it was my amazing. first one. So yeah. So oh, let's well get cracking how we make this. Bag. Yeah. So <laughs> let's pop those instructions away. So because I've shown you the chain piecing already, I've, I've. A part made. Okay. It. Um, so this is that same technique we just did. Exactly the same technique. So as you can see, let's hold it up. You've got six across, six times four, and then you've got one row of four at the bottom there. So you can decide where you lay these fabrics. You can absolutely decide. I mean, want. obviously, it's best if you don't get two of the same next to each other. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it, a little bit of planning is quite good. But, I, you, you know, there's enough in there. It's uh, plenty of fabric, actually, to, to make it, you know, do it however you want to. So if you're, for example, this one's your favourite... <clears throat> Can do more of that one, or you know, or so you could have those all in one. You could. Yeah, you could, yeah, and I think that's up to every individual. Design it how you how you want to, really. So what I've done is I've got a, a piece of wadding, and then I have. So you've made your your um, patchwork block. Yes. So you've done all your your bits. You've done them into strips. I sewed them into strips of six, and then we attach them all together, and then the strip of four on the bottom. So there's enough fabric in this kit to make the bag. You've got everything in there that you need to make this this full size bag here. So once so you you lay all of these out. Obviously, once you've chosen them, you've got your wadding. Yeah. Then what's the next step? So the next step is you would attach it to the wadding, um, and I use just a sort of a, a simple glue. Oh, do you? Okay. So you would just dab it with your glue oh, right. and then put it on. it just holds it in yeah. place so it's soluble so it you know it obviously disappears just, when you wash it yeah just dab that into place and yeah and then I like to put my wadding slightly bigger as you can see here mainly yeah, because okay. then if you've got a bit of give in the fabric then you know you can actually trim it it's very neat at the end 
rather than feeling like you could, stretched. <laughs> you could cut it before, you know, to the exact size, yes. which, which is which is equally fine. But then I, I you know, I, I prefer to do it this way. Each individual is, is different. But you can see that I've, I've part quilted it and I've done it in, in purple. You could actually quilt it in whichever colour you want to. So you could make a feature out of the quilting. Out this one's done in a cream. Yes. So it sort of it shows the quilting, but it doesn't it doesn't make a big thing of it. But actually, the the purple I've quilted this one in in a purple um, thread, which with that <coughs> purple charm pack does actually work really yeah, well. Yeah, it does work well. But I mean, I've got cream thread on here today, so it'll it'll look a bit weird at the end. But and um, this is all visual; it's just so you can see it. At it home. is actually the back is really good because you can see where I've quilted and where I haven't. Is that so you can just see that? So I you can see this see bit's that. quilted. Here we go. If I just lift that up, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just lift that up so you can see. So you can see it on the back. And basically what we're doing is we are quilting between the squares. So you're quilting from corner to corner. So you're sort of diagonally going yeah. across those. So basically I just need to finish that off. You just literally put your needle in at the corner. What foot are you using for this? I'm just using a n standard number one foot. Okay. You can use a, a quilter's foot if you want to and it makes it go that's through slow. easier for, for big quilts that's probably quite advisable but this is quite a small project so actually a, a number one foot is absolutely fine and you just go in straight lines down through the corners so just and then, aiming for those corners of the square yeah i mean you could mark it out with a washable pen if you want to but i quite like going freehand just seeing what happens i like going uh, this is my super speedy you should have seen how slowly i was sewing yesterday <laughs> Have it's, you got your own you sewing it's, machine? It's a tortoise and a hare, and I use the sewing machine here, and you can you can move the uh, the speed on these. I love machines. the tortoise and the yeah, hare. Yeah, I moved this. it right across to the tortoise, and I was like, ju, 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 ju. <laughs> <laughs> so you can go really fast on this actually, because it 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 looks um it'll look pretty good. I mean, it, obviously, it depends on how experienced a sewer you are. Yeah, of course. Cool. Oh, right. What sort of level would you say this bag is? Would you say it's maybe an intermediate? Uh, I'd say it's beginner to intermediate. Yeah. Um, the instructions are so good that you know pretty much anybody could follow it. But I suppose if you're a complete beginner, you um, you know it, it, it's you probably to be able more to use the machine and to yeah. Yeah, I mean if you were going to do it by hand, it would take you a long time. <laughs> Certainly this quilting process. And if you've never quilted before, it's, it's a really satisfying, a really well, satisfying. To have something you can use as well. This obviously you yeah. know this is something that you can actually take. Take with you. It I'm is. Once I get a bag on, I don't want to take it off. But it's just a nice, comfy. Obviously, you've got that nice. It's a. It's a. The size of the handle is is such. That it fits really comfortably over your arm. Yeah. And because it's quilted, it is nice and soft. It feels it's lovely, doesn't it? So actually, I think it's kind of a sort of a combination between a tote bag and and actually, you know, you could use it for an evening, couldn't you? You're obviously a, a lady who likes her bags. I love a bag. I'm a bag, bit of a bag fanatic. And on the inside as well, you've got your lining in this kit. So you can just see that here, I'll show you. On the inside of the bag. So not only are you getting all of your fabric for the outside, but on the inside, we've got this uh, lovely magenta pink. I don't know if you can see that there. You can see on the lining that it's partly patchwork on, on the top, on which the is top nice, well. I think. Yes, yeah, so you're just keeping that Gives it a really it nice through. finish, I think. <clears throat> So yeah, we're just finishing the quilting. I've only got two more lines to go. Okay. Once oh, you've done that. I have a question, actually. Let's Ooh. see. Um, morning, Anne. This is from Anne in Surrey. Um, charm squares are normally five inch squares. What size are these, please? These are two and a half inch squares, <laughs> so they're smaller ones. They're half the size, aren't they, I suppose? Yep. Um, so you can just see those here. And there are purple ones and there are pink ones. These are for the little, little individual packs. The purple ones, you can... Well over half the stock of those have already gone, so if you have got those in your basket, please do check them out if you, if you don't want to miss out. Or you can give the call centre a ring, 0800 112 4433. So these are your purple ones coming up on your screen now. They're just coming, there they are. WBBY53, and that's what you can see in this uh, lovely cushion here. They are different to what we're using in this quilted bag at the moment. So this is the... Um, those purple squares make this cushion, which I can show you here. So that's the purple charm square pack. And there, that is also available in pink as well. So that's this one. So, oh, we're into single figures of the purple if everybody checks out their basket. So if you do want that one, you're gonna have to move quick. They go so quick. Then we've got pink ones too. And so there's a bit more stock of the pink one. You can just see some of those fabrics there again with that beautiful Tana lawn from Liberty. A great way to just get some liberty in your stash and maybe to, to tackle a project with their really superior 
fabric, ALBY92. Again, that's 9.95. So yes, um, they're two and a half inch squares, those charm pack squares, slightly uh, smaller than your regular ones. But so we're quilting the bag. Let's so we are, because once I've finished quilting the bag, and um, as you can see, I mean, so obviously some of it's now in cream and some of it's in purple. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, you would you would you do, do it all that. in one. You do all in one colour. So that's finished quilting, and then we're going to we're going to trim it with our rotary cutter. You don't need a rotary cutter to do this. So you, if you don't have it at home, then you, you don't actually trim. need it. You can just use a you know regular pair of scissors. Yes, good old scissors. But I do like a bit of rotary cutting. I think it, you feel really like whizzy with a rotary cutter. You feel yeah. like, do you know what I mean? So you would just make your, your edge straight, and then it just you know it's just nice and. Nice satisfying. And satisfying and tidy. I've been uh, accused of not being the tidiest of sewers oh, really? in the past, but <laughs> I'm trying really hard. I would have said that this morning. You were super organised. Everything was in folders very organised. I'm just a bit messy. <laughs> <laughs> they often say that, don't they? Um, what is it? If you, you have a no, what's the what's the phrase? Not a tidy mind. Uh, so often people that are messy are actually quite organised or they know where everything is, but it's just only you would know where everything is. Oh, I know is. where everything yeah. is. But it's just not in necessarily <laughs> the place you would expect. No. <laughs> So yeah, we're just rotary cutting the edges just to just to neaten it up before we then attach it to the other side. Okay. So this trimming around the bottom as well, we're obviously going to do that. You have to just cut into that bottom part. So this is so you yeah. can make the base of the bag. Yeah, no, the, well, this bit is the base oh, of the this, bag. Yeah. So the four there is the base. You can if you turn it upside down. Yeah. Oh John, Get told off for not doing that. Rotary cutter. You can see the four here. Yeah, that's a slightly smaller bottom. That's the bottom. And we've also got that base that comes in the kit as well, so it just gives you that sturdy, I don't know if you can just see that there, but giving you that, that nice, strong, rectangular base that stands. And also you get, you're getting the uh, lining as well, so you can see that magenta pink fabric there, um, which is enough to line all of the bag in that solid colour. 47, uh, 45, REBY24. I love this bag. Just trimming around. What would you use this for? I think I'd use it to go, you know, if you were going to the shops, you know, yep. put shopping in it. Um, it's a great shopper. Or actually, I think it's it makes a great bag. day. A great, great selling yeah. bag, yeah. It would, because like, yes, it's got width in the bottom. So you can pop lots of things in there. You've got your, your body at the bottom, which means that actually it's quite sturdy, which means that you can... Because it stands. It is nice that it stands. It gives it a bit more of a... Um... It's got a lovely little pocket in it. Well, this one doesn't, but the one that I've... I can show you the pocket. <laughs> you said, didn't you? You're probably going to kill me for saying this. But, um, Alice said, oh, I didn't have time to do a pocket. She texted you at six o'clock or something this morning. She, we said, were texting each other really early in the morning. And she's like, I can't, I haven't got time to do the pocket. <laughs> but here's the, here's the pocket, which in is the the, it's a really nice, yeah, in the lining. You just pop that in there. So is this, really this nice. is all explained in the instructions as well, isn't it? Oh, absolutely, it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, right, we've got our, our top. Now I'm going to show you how to do the handle. And this is using the folder band. Um, so Lorraine's actually messaged in as well. She said, what size are the squares? Um, for the, what do you cut them to for the bag? Uh, do we check those instructions? instructions? I'll, I'll check those instructions. instructions. So your... All of these instructions 3. are in the 3.5 inches. Oh, so the square are bigger than those. Yeah. The, obviously, the charm pack squares that we're selling in a, in a pack are two and a half inch squares. These are three and a half, but yes. Forgive me for not remembering question, every figure. Figures no. are not my thing. No. And, um, you know, remembering all the seam allowances and all the size of the squares is a, is a... Creative people, I think, often quite messy and not necessarily good with numbers, but they do all of this very well. <laughs> <laughs> don't they? Don't you? Because not... everyone has their thing. Yes, numbers, numbers are not my thing. Um, so... Sorry, before I start ironing this, I could actually show you what it is. And we had it on the last show, and um, everybody was really interested in it. What, it, what is it's it? It's called Folder Band, and it's basically your Visaline, but it's, it's got this uh, slotted um, section. And you'll see in a minute how wonderful the slotted section is for creating bag handles. Um, and, it, and it's good for creating I've waistbands. Wow. Well, show me how we like it's to done. Show, we like Something to show new things. So you just basically fuse it onto the wrong side of your fabric. Okay, so this so is all to, in the kit? It's all in the kit, yeah. So you just get your bag handle, cut it to size, and then fuse it on. You just have to do it for a number of seconds so that it's properly fused, just otherwise so it, it comes adheres. apart. So all of your fabric as well in that bundle, um, for the handles and obviously for everything, for all yep. elements of the bag. Yep. So I think that's pretty good now. And then, so you've got it like, oh, you pretty good view so then you just fold the ends in I love this 
This is one of my favourite things. So that because of those little notches in the um, yep in that Visoline, it just gives it that bend. So it you gives know. it the bend. So you, don't so you haven't have got to, to measure anything. You haven't got to get a ruler out. You haven't got to. You've got the bend there. We've got a little bit of. And then you fold it into the middle. That was so easy. Ta da! <laughs> and also, it gives it that structure, and it you know it's, it gives it a bit more uh, rigidity, doesn't it? So it it's does. got that. Yes, because just fabric on itself um, is, is probably not strong enough. In the Saratote, it is just fabric, actually, because it's a, it's, a, it's a heavier weight Yeah, canvas. it depends as well what you're putting in the bag. <coughs> I think in a big bag like that, if you are going to have, particularly if you are going to use it for shopping, if you've got heavy, yeah. you know, if you fill that with fruits and vegetables or anything like that, it's going to be know. quite heavy. It needs to have a sturdy handle. So then you can give it a little pin and then you would edge stitch down the sides of the handles. Obviously, you'd probably choose a purple. Yes, uh, thread, thread for that for one. this, and then we just attach this to the bag. Then you just attach it to the bag, and then sew the bag together. It's dead easy, actually. Just think, you could buy the kit when you get it in the post. An hour and a half later, you could have a you brand new bag, bag to a take out. Bag. Is that how long do you think? An hour and a half? I think probably. I mean, to be honest, the cutting of the once you've done the cutting of the fabric, then you can just go. Then you can just go if you've got a rotary cutter and a you know, it's uh, make it very quick. Yeah. So then you would just edge stitch it okay. down along each edge. I'll probably only just do one edge to show you today. What's lovely is well, all of these Alice Caroline products are really beautifully packaged. They're really, yeah. I don't know if I've got the um, kit, we have got a, a picture of the kits, but they just come really beautifully. They're all wrapped up with lovely, um, sort of obviously all of your instructions and diagrams, but you can see there, it's the sort of thing that you, you want to get open and you want to... You want That's to, her thing. You know, it's like a gift, isn't it? Oh, this is all about how present. everything looks and how it, yeah. How it feels. Yeah, and when how... we send packages out, we do it. We put really cute little animal tape or, or, or floral tape on the packages. Everyone, loads of people comment on the, on the lovely little tape that we use. <laughs> <laughs> just love, yeah, it, I just think it's those finishing touches. There's lots of thought gone it into it, to everything. It is. So, yeah, we would do this on both sides of our handle. I'm trying to go super speedy for you so that we can get as much in. And then so you would just cut two of those. Yes, so I've already I've already made one half because obviously we don't want to spend time doing that, okay. showing you the same thing. So this is the half I made earlier. So you've got the handle already attached to that half. So basically, all you do. So this is where you need to check that the handle's the right way. You do. When you're attaching, you don't want you to. You do, and and you also make sure need to make sure there's no twist in it. Yes. So, um, actually, it's, it's pretty good, this Visoline. So it's, it's not, you know, your seam is right on the edge there. So, actually, it's, it's very good for... Helps you know where... Well, it's very good for not, not, not actually having too much of a right or a wrong way. So you would then attach this here, either side of the central. Can you see that? Yeah, so you've got your two central squares there. This is the top of your bag. And then you would just attach it like this. Make sure, this is the bit where you need to make sure there's no... No sort of loop, twist. Yep. So there we go. So just either side of those two squares, so we're yep. going to end up with two like that. Yep, then you just sew them on, which is really easy. Again, just same thread, everything all the same. Yeah, so I'd probably pick a, a, a purple thread or, you know, and, and the same seam allowance, so it's a, a, a quarter inch seam allowance on this. And you've pretty much got your bag made at this point. And what I would do is I'd go backwards on this one. Because oh, it's so a handle. Lock that in. So mm. it's a point where you want it to be a little bit stronger. Yeah. So I would use a, a you know, go over it twice. So in terms of process, we cut the squares, we then um, pop those we pop those onto your uh, batting or wadding and yep. then quilted those once they're all in, into place. Yeah, oh, well, first of all, no, you did the, um, the chain piecing, didn't you? Chain and piecing. Then, then yep. you uh, put them on wadding, then you're quilting that, and then you just literally cut around it and do your handles. Yeah. You do. So there it we go. It's a nice, nice weekend project, actually. It's a lovely weekend yeah. project. So now, I mean, I don't know how, how we are for time. Oh, we're uh, running out of time. That's we? okay, it's all right. So we've got our two sides of our bag, and actually the lining is made in exactly the same way, but just so you cut the, the fabric, you obviously don't... Um, don't have to do the piecing. You don't have to do the piecing. Well, you've got, you've got your six bits along the top there. Let's show you that again. <coughs> so you've got your two... One, two, three, four, five, six. So you've got your two um, patchwork strips of six that you would attach to your hot pink lining. Yep. Would you call it magenta pink? I think so, yeah. Yeah. 
Hot nice. pink. Hot pink. Hot pink. pink. On a Saturday pink. morning. Yeah. So once you've done, so you would do that piece, would you put the bag together first? Would you assemble this first before you did the lining? What order would yeah, you do well, that Yeah, well, to be honest, you know, you would, I'd, might, I'd make the bag first. Yeah. And then you would do the lining. And then you would insert the lining. I love the bit where you insert the lining into it because it actually, it's like, it's a big ta-da moment at the end. You know, where you get that satisfaction of, ah. As long as you remember to leave the gap in the bottom of the lining. Yeah, you can pull it through. all the way around. <laughs> yeah, you're like, like, how am I supposed to pull that through? See, I didn't get a ta-da moment with my foot block yesterday because it was all backwards. <laughs> oh, well, you know, everyone's got to start somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of you loving this Liberty fabric this morning. Are we going to get to see your quilt block? Oh, it is. Well, maybe I should put it on social media. Yeah, I mean, it's quite embarrassing that I did do it all wrong, but it's a start. It's a start. Well, what's it for if it's not going to be on the social yeah, media? Yeah, I mean, absolutely, I think. absolutely. Some of them are amazing. Honestly, Hannah, who does all of our, our VT videos, so the videos you see in the breaks and things like I that. I forget she's a sewer. She, well, no, she isn't a sewer, but oh. the block that she did is amazing. It's a hot air balloon. There's all buttons on there, like creating the balloon itself. She did some um, applique. It's, it's brilliant. She said, oh, this took me hours and hours. She put me to shame. Everyone's, but everyone's you've got done hours one. and hours to yeah. do it, really, isn't it? So now we... Sorry, I ought to tell you what we're doing. So <clears throat> I've put them right sides together okay. and we are going to sew down the sides of our bag and then across the bottom. So you've just pinned that right sides together? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And then we've almost got a bag. I wasn't you start always... to see it, don't you? It's there. It's you do. So there. Yeah. And I like to um, always have a long thread. So to stop it from getting tangled up, okay. you know, when you when you first start sewing, um, it, to to stop it from getting tangled up right at the start. Just got that yeah. bit of extra give there. Yeah, indeed. So I'm always down here. John told me I had to go faster last time. I wasn't fast enough, and I didn't talk. <laughs> <laughs> you're doing no, you're doing very well. <laughs> Sewing under pressure. No, because that's the worst thing then if you start to overthink. Oh, am I talking enough? Am I doing too, 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 too slow, sewing too quick? Yeah. No, it's great. <laughs> I think it's uh, all, in the, all in the speed of someone's mind. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just pin that bottom bit. So um, this is the Catherine Toad. That's the one that's on your screens at the moment. R-E-B-Y 24. If you want that one, that's here today. That's brand new. We've never had it on the show before from Alice Caroline. You get all of your instructions in there. You've got that base of your bag to give you that nice, um, sort of the uh, rigid uh, bottom, the base of it, so it will stand up. All of your Liberty fabrics. You've got that hot pink or magenta pink uh, lining. And also you've got the uh, Visaline, uh, the interfacing to go in the handle, so it's nice and strong. 47.45. Do just check out your baskets on that if you do want to get that bag. It's really popular this morning. Oh, we've had a message from Sonia. Let's see. Oh, it's not on the... Let's see. It's from Hannah. Okay, so the folding uh, thing for the handles, we don't sell those separately at the moment, Sonia. They're just in the Alice Caroline kit, so that's exclusive to those at the moment. Hopefully, we'll get them in at some point. Um, but we, we don't have those at the moment. That's just exclusive to this kit. Anna said she's on it. She's she just trying it. to get it. She's, she wants, <laughs> she's onto the buy team. She loves them, thinks they're great. So, producer Hannah's on it, Sonia. She'll, she's going to get that in for you. <laughs> I know, it's quite a revelation, yeah, isn't it? When it you is. find a product well, like that. Just because it's, it's done, the, the crease is there for you. So it's... I know. The people who are used to sewing and dressmaking and you know making handles and things will be. That's amazing. Why have I not I found that to, before? <laughs> I need to make that. I need, to, need so, some of that. You're just doing a quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way around the bag. Yep. You're obviously not leaving, you would leave the gap in the lining, you don't leave any gap in this for the outside. No, you don't leave any gap in this. So um, the only reason you leave the gap in the lining is to pull the bag through out. in the end. So as you can see, we have, well, I'll just turn it out this way so you can see what I've done, but we have, obviously we've got some holes in the yes. corner at the minute. <laughs> Not ideal if you've got little bits and pieces in there, really. Is it? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, but that, that, that creates your um, that creates your base. Yes, so that's going to give you your. I'll just show that so you can see. Mm. I'll, I'll, that's just, so I'll sew I'll sew them up now. But uh, so this is just the base of the bag there. Let's move back to the other side. But you can see how quickly it's come together. Yeah, we've got we've got a bag. We've got a bag. We have got a bag. So how do we get this and um, the base into the bottom? Yes, well, let me let me just sew the corners in, okay. <coughs> and then you just sew the base into the into the. You sew it in. Yeah. Okay, great. So with these, all you do is so you've got your your bag flat. All you need to do is to sort of go ta da. Yeah. <laughs> like this. Pull them together. So you pull them together. Make sure you've got your seams matched. Am I doing it the right way so that I can see? Make sure. Actually, you'd probably press all of this before you do this, but I'm running short of time. I did say press, 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 didn't I? Yes, that's okay. We, it's... Imagine me press, press, pressing. And then you just pin it 
across the bottom. And then you can see that this together. makes your box. makes the box at the bottom. Got tangled up with my cable down here. Well, lots of you with this bag in your basket, please do check it out. Or give the call centre a ring. You can see the number on your screens there as well. This is just going so quickly this morning. And everyone, oh, I'm, no. I'm really impressed. Everyone's up at 8 o'clock this morning, nice and eager here at Sewing Quarter. I love that. Saturday morning I thought, I'd have, more, I thought I'd have more time to do this. It always it goes, goes so quickly. quickly. It's because there's so many things to show. Do you want me to... I don't, I don't quite know where well, to just go. Maybe should we should I just, just, should yeah. I just show you the process? Because yeah, otherwise I'm not going to get onto the Sarah So you've just I? boxed that corner. You would obviously repeat that again on the other side. Yes. So you can see. Let's turn it out because actually it's quite... I love this bit. I think it's really... You get your dobber or whatever John used last time. And yes. You point, point Push it right your corners, in. And you can see that you've got your corner of the... And then that creates the, the base of your bag. It's there. It is it's there. there. It's a bag. <laughs> it is a bag. And then, so you would then sew your, you cut your Visaline, and it's quite heavy, you can feel it's quite heavy weight. Yeah, it's one. a nice thick. You so how do, you, how do we sew this in? Perhaps sew it into the seam allowance. Okay. So we would sew it. It's going to be quite difficult because I've only done one side. But you would sew it, pin it into here. So those two flat ends that you put together for the boxing, yeah. you just... Um, you then sew it into the seam that. allowance. Yeah. And if you imagine me doing it on the other side as well. I love this. It's all about imagination, isn't it? Imagining that we're there. It is, <laughs> it is, it is, you can see what the process is. It's fine. You can. So there we are. And then we'll just sew it in. Okay. And then once that's in place, the, you would just, you, obviously you've got your lining and then you just pop that inside. Do you stitch around the, around the top? top yeah. And then you use that hole in the bottom just to turn it through. Yeah. I can probably get, I can probably got time to show you that process actually because I've made the lining already. As you can see, it's quite thick at this point, so you might actually want to choose a sort of more heavyweight needle. But this it's doing quite well. But all of this are in those comprehensive instructions, so you've got that guide there. You've got all of those diagrams talking you through the process. We just want to give you a bit of an idea, so you know how we get to from A to B. Yeah. So I've stitched it into one side. There, you can there see you the are. shape. You can see the shape. It does give it that sort of 3D structure, doesn't it? It's got it that does. nice... It gives it that um, yeah. stability. Yeah. You can just see there where that base has been sewn in. Now you've got a nice... It gives it a bit more... Um, it stands, so hmm. it stands. It's got some weight to it. And then all you do, because I've made the, the, the lining's made in exactly the same way, so you would down the sides and at the bottom, and then you'd make your, your box the bit. And then you get your lining wrong side out. Yeah. And then you shove your bag... <laughs> down inside your lining, like this, and then you sew it all together. As you can see, I've left a, a whole gap. To turn through. So many times I've just, <laughs> oh, you know, whizzed through. And then, <laughs> I don't need to read the instructions. No, 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 no. I can't no. know what I'm doing. Who needs to read the instructions? And um, yeah, obviously I've forgotten to leave the hole. Oh, there you go. That's where the unpicker comes in hand. Yes, that's, I think that's what I said was my favourite. The favourite tool. My favourite tool. Well, because any mistakes can be undone. They can, and I think that's the thing with sewing. Just try, try anything, try it all out, really. So you can basically see that if you sew around the top of the bag, which we probably haven't got time for, if we need to get no, we'll the Sarah we'll bag, that's you fine. You sew around the top of the bag, and then you pull it all through the hole. Yeah. And then you've got your bag, and then, and you, then you top just, stitch it. And then when you obviously just fill that hole in at the bottom. Yes, you can sew through. that, or you, you can, can do it on the machine, whichever you prefer. So there. Perfect. Yes. So, so you don't need to encapsulate those. Um, the handles will just be sewn around the top. You would just, they would get yes. in, yeah, encased yeah. in the lining yeah. as you go yeah. around that. Yeah, it all goes into the lining. Perfect. So there, well, there we it are. is. We've got two now. We've got matching bags. Come on, Anna. I've got two. It's looking a bit rough on the edges. Bags <laughs> <laughs> so this is the, uh, the purple, uh, lo really lovely Liberty Catherine tote. It's got that nice rigid bottom there, so it stands perfect as a shopper, perhaps as a bag to take to classes or to workshops. A really, a, a, just those beautiful Liberty fabrics. And if you've not seen those before or not worked with them, they're just gorgeous Tana lawn, really soft and silky. They have quite an iconic feel to them, really, don't they? They, they really do. are. People sort of associate lots of fabrics or yeah. compare them to Liberty. Yeah. R E B Y 24, and that's 47.45. Had loads of messages in about this fabric this morning. You can see everything there you get in your kit. All of your fabrics, your lining as well, the hot pink lining, the base, the instructions and the handles as well. Please do check out your baskets on that. So, the final one we've got to is the we've Sara got, tote. We've got ten minutes. We're we okay. <laughs> we've got it, we've got it. So this is the Sara tote here. Where, oh, you can see it here. 
So this is actually a canvas, isn't it? And it's, it's, a, it's a heavier weight canvas. You can feel it's, it's, it's completely different to the Tana lawn. Yeah, so it, it's a canvas, which is perfect for a tote bag. Really gorgeous. Really, the print and is just lovely. Well, do you know what? This print is in the, not this colourway, it's, it's in a very, uh, you know, dulled down grey, but it's in the shard. So it's on all the furniture in the shard. You know, so when we're you're sipping your the cocktails shard. at the top so of the shard. So we, we can pretend that we're, that we're that posh. <laughs> I know. We've got the same fabric as the shard. And also, this fabric, Alice Caroline, is this, this is an exclusive. It, it's a fabric that you can't get anywhere else, yeah. No. It's not one that Alice designed, so it is a, it's an iconic Liberty fabric, but yeah. you can't get this canvas anywhere else. Anywhere else. No. else. So, so yeah. um, this Liberty canvas we're using this morning to create the tote, again, with those nice long handles so you can fit it comfortably on your shoulder. You get all of your instructions in there as well, and yeah, your fabric. Yeah, I've got the instructions here, actually. So I mean, this is, this is a really easy, an easy make. It's, it's a fantastic make, really, because it's, it's very, it's, and it uses a, a very simple French seam. Yes. Which was very, you know, you were talking about your French seam yesterday. <laughs> and that's what he was really impressed when I knew what a French seam was. <laughs> you can see your instructions here again, all of those colour instructions. <clears throat> so how do we do this one, then? So with this one, when you're making a French seam, you um, sew your wrong sides together, which seems a bit unnatural, but, you know, it does work in the end. So you would just get your two pieces of fabric. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't have a, a, a gusset or anything, this bag, so it's, it's just a simple sew around the outside. Probably, time-wise, let's see how we go. <laughs> <laughs> so you sew a quarter-inch seam again. <clears throat> oh, wow, already half of these have gone. And um, FABY85, if you like this one, please do check it out. It's fourteen ninety five, so it's a, it's a really affordable um, sort of one, way to have some liberty as well. Oh, isn't it's it? fantastic! I thought this one would be popular. It's because of the, I think it's because of the print. I think so many people watching will just recognise this liberty print because it's it's quite an it's iconic, an iconic one. one. Yeah, and so you would just carry on sewing round at a quarter inch seam. Also, if you're carrying lots of things with the lawn, it's quite nice that the canvas is thicker. It's a bit more durable, isn't it? So you've yeah, got... it's quite. It's a great look. I love your description of it as a magazine bag. Yes, is that, that's, what, that's is that what you do? Go me. to the shops to go and buy just, magazines. Just buy magazines. Or for books. I just think it is that sort of shape for A4. I'm just an it to the library. Yeah. yeah. I, well, I love stationery, so I always have lots of folders and, and notebooks and things. I think that, that lends itself to to um, to that sort of thing, like an A4. Oh, stationery. Honestly, you could just spend. I know. You can join mine and Lucy Brennan's pub. We love stationery. We always end up talking about stationery. Yeah. So this is a well really Alice. simple one. We're just going right, just going around the three edges. Yep. Yeah, and you can probably, you know, whiz it quite quickly. And then take out your pins, and then you just trim your seam allowance. And I do have to press at this point because if you okay. don't press, no worries. When you're doing a French seam, you get into trouble. <laughs> Too bulky. Well, it, it, it's, it'll go skew-whiff, really. I just need to trim. Shall I just show you one edge? Yeah. Probably just get away with just doing. So you trim to an eighth of an inch, and then that basically keeps it all neat down inside when you actually... Or should I use my rotary cutter, shouldn't I? I do like to use my granny scissors every now and again. <laughs> They look like they've they've um, they've been around the block been, a yeah, bit. Yeah, they've been they've they've seen a lot of projects. Those ones. They have seen a lot of projects, and uh, probably could do with a sharpen actually. But um, my gran they're my granny's old. Oh, are they? Yeah. Oh, you've got to keep hold of those. Yeah. So you would trim all the way around all of it, and then you would press that seam. Just press a little bit of it here. I can do it from the other side, maybe. <clears throat> I've got about three minutes or so. Have I got three minutes? No. <laughs> Not to put any pressure on. <laughs> it, just, uh, right. it goes so quickly. It so does. It's like, well, do. it's quite fun, actually. I'm just how, it's really, <laughs> how much you can get done. Well, let's just show you a little bit then, because if you press that seam... So you don't have to do the French seam, do you? If you don't, if you know, if you were a beginner and you just simply wanted to make a well, actually, I I think it's worth doing the French. It's worth investing because it's actually really simple, and, uh, and it gives you that professional do finish, doesn't it? It does. I could just show you a little bit of the French seam, and then you. Would, so I've trimmed it at an eighth of an inch, so it's all. I'll just show that quickly. Nice and neat in there. <clears throat> okay. And then we would sim again, see, uh, sew again at another quarter inch, and then you can see it's all tucked nicely down inside. Let's just do that. And then at least we've done our French seam. Oh, we've got less than 10 of these remaining now, so if it's in your basket, F-A-B-Y-85, you can check that out on the website or via the call centre. So it's 14 95 Wow. Oh, 
gone quite well. It has gone it? really quick. So you can see that on the out, on the outside you've got a lovely neat seam, yeah. and on the inside you've also got a lovely neat seam. So if it was going to be inspected, it passes the test because it's not. <laughs> yeah, I mean obviously you would neat. do that all around the edges. Yeah. But I've, as we're just usual, run out of time. running ahead. So then, and then after you've done that, <coughs> it's just the handles. Yep. So again, you're getting. <coughs> so the handles. This is not done in that folder band. This is just in a. Because actually, canvas. you can feel it's quite it's quite yeah, heavyweight. Yeah, because it's a thicker fabric. And you would just fold down the top, quarter inch press, another inch and press, and then you tuck your handle. Obviously, you'd measure your centre point. It's all in the instructions anyway. Make sure there's no twist in your handle. So it's a nice long hand as well for hanging over your shoulder yeah. too. And then you would sew all around here and then you would top stitch at the top. Perfect. Amazing. So in this, yeah, ta -da. <laughs> we did we did make it through. Um, so in this hour, Anna's been showing us these lovely Liberty fabrics. If you've just tuned in, um, we've got some gorgeous Liberty prints. If you've never seen them before, you want to add some to your stash. So we've got the tote bag, um, which is, where has it gone? Oh, we had, oh, you can see that one on your, we've got seven of those left in stock. So $14.95, it's that iconic Liberty fabric. As Anna said, you can see that in the shard. So it is a really lovely fabric there with that, those gorgeous, lovely, rich purples and pinks. F-A-B-Y-85. Then there was also um, another bag that Anna's made this morning. If you missed that, we were doing, um, we, we've just got that one here. Jay's just sneaking it in for me. Here we go. So we've got that lovely, uh, that chain piecing that we looked at. And this is a quilted bag, again, with those handles with that um, interfacing in. Well over half the stock of that one's gone. A nice little pocket in there as well with that hot pink lining. You get your handles, you get your nice rigid base in the bottom, all of your instructions and all of your Liberty fabrics. R-E-B-Y 24. Well over half the stock of that one has gone as well. Then we also showed you two other um, things that you could do with the charm pack. So we have the two and a half inch squares in two different colours, purple and pink. Again, those have been really popular too. We'll show you those. So um, I'll show you those in the next hour. So you're back at 10. We're back at 10. And we're doing... The quilt block. Yes, yeah, so we're doing the Raw Edge applique, applique quilt block, okay. which is the butterflies, which is one of my ultimate favourite things. Yes. Raw edge Once you've done Raw Edge applique, it transforms your whole world. <laughs> so we've got that and we've also got this. Clutch bag. Yeah, I've got matching shoes love. for this. Matching Might bring shoes. them on in the second hour. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Anna. We've run out of time, but we'll see you in three minutes. <laughs> follow us so on Pinterest. Search for our Sewing Quarter page and follow us to discover sewing work we create and love. Did you know there are multiple ways you can contact us, even if it's just to ask a question? Our friendly team are always on standby. You can call our customer service team at 0800 112 4433, email us at help at sewingquarter.com, visit our Facebook page, follow us on Instagram, follow us on Twitter at Sewing Quarter and even message us through our website and our presenters will answer your questions live on air. So I'm going to be showing you how to do an ease stitch. Um, it's very similar to our running stitch here, um, but the purpose of it would be different. So I've kind of mocked uh, the head of a sleeve here. Nine times out of ten you will have to ease the top section of your sleeve. So this is the stitch that you would do that with if you were going to do it with hand. So I'm going to use the embroidery thread. I've just popped a knot on the end again just so it doesn't pull through. Normally you wouldn't do it with um, embroidery thread. So on your sleeve, normally these sections will need to be kept as they are because it's only this section here that we need to be working with. So I'm going to be doing a running stitch quite close to the edge of the fabric. I'm just going to do the quick method here where you're pulling the needle through the fabric while keeping it on the same needle. So I'm going to stop there and then pull that all the way through like so. So you can see that I've got just that section sewn there and then as I begin to pull you can see that I'm easing the head of my sleeve in. So when that is stitched these curves should disappear, they shouldn't be there because you've eased the bigger section into a smaller section on the clothing. So that's easing.
Tilly Rose returns to our studio on Tuesday the 1st of August with two inspirational hours using Thread's printable fabric. With Thread's, the creative possibilities are endless, as you can print any image onto fabric from your home printer. And textile artist Tilly is here to offer a little inspiration. She'll show us how to enhance your printed images with machine embroidery to create beautiful effects. And she'll also demonstrate how to make a personalised quilted photo album cover. So, join us for Threads with Tilly Rose, Tuesday the 1st of August at 9am and 11am, only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78. Good morning, welcome back. If you've just joined us, we've got bobbing along. So we've got lots of lovely different threads and storage options for your workroom in this hour. If you just missed it, we just had Anna in from Alice Caroline and we were looking at those gorgeous Liberty fabrics. This cushion behind me, I've got my eye on it. Anna said, I wanna, I wanna take that one home. It's so lovely. The fabrics are just so gorgeous. And we've had those two bags in that hour as well. If you managed to get those, congratulations. So in this hour, as I said, we're talking thread. So obviously we always have lots of different fabrics on the show but you need thread you need things to to assemble those things with whether you're doing um, a quilt perhaps you want 100% cotton thread so you've got you know keeping that cotton all there for your quilting or your polyester threads for for other projects for dressmaking and for anything else you might be making so we're going to start with something we've never had on before. This is, um, we've never put this together. This is a launch, this is a premiere. So this is a thread rack and it comes with all of these threads. So, so often we have a rack on the show and it doesn't have any threads on it. This one here comes with all of these threads with it. So these are all your Gutemann threads. It's a German brand so, and it's, they're really um, sort of well known for the quality of their threads. You can just see these here. These are 100% polyester. They've got a really high abrasion rate so they don't fray easily. They don't break easily. So you can just see there as well on that spool. So it's a really lovely collection of colours working all the way through. So you've got your lights here with your whites and creams and yellows. Then working into your baby pinks, your darker pinks, your reds and burgundies. You've got your purples, moving into blues, baby blues, navies, greens, then moving up to your forest colours here with your lovely browns and creams as well. Now, I must warn you, we are limited on stock on these bundles and these Gutemann threads are really, really popular. And the fact that we've put them all together with the rack as well, so there's a storage option, great to just pop on the side or perhaps if you have a workstation or desk, you can just have this position next to your machine. Or again, in a cupboard, this just makes it really easily accessible. You can see those vertical spool um, pins there. So your spool's just fitting really comfortably onto those. And just they're really displayed in a really visually and easily accessible way so you can just grab whichever colour you want. So just on the side there you can see all of those lines of threads, keeping them nice and neat and tidy so they don't unravel, they're not all causing, causing a drama in the bottom of your drawer or in your work bag. VSGC81, that's for the stand and all of these threads and it's 59.95. Now, perhaps you've already got a whole collection of threads already. We know some of you have got hundreds of threads. Send me a picture of how many threads you've got. If you want a larger stand, and um, this one doesn't come with any threads, so this is just something as a storage option, you can see this one here. So, this is a um, 60 spool rack. So you can see here you've got loads of different, um, different rows, and you, you, it's obviously a wider, bigger piece um, of storage kit. Again, with those vertical spool pins, so you can just pop your threads onto there really comfortably and easily. It's that nice natural colour, so it's going to go with any colour uh, sort of uh, workroom or uh, lounge or perhaps if you've, you've taken over the dining room with all of your sewing projects, then this colour isn't going to be offensive or clash with anything. You can see there at the side, you've just got these legs here so it stands up if you wanted to pop it in a cupboard. Again, as you open the cupboard, that's going to be really easily accessible, visually really obvious as well where everything is. Also, you can pop these legs down, if I just clip those here like this. So if you wanted to, you could lay this down. If you wanted to pop that in a drawer or just to have it on a desk, on a workstation, so you could have your threads that way. I'll pop a couple on so you can see. So again, you could just open the drawer and have all of those threads there laying down as well. 
So a really popular item is a storage option. Let's pop those back on the other rack. But you've got 60 holders here. So you could have, you know, a different row for every colour. Perhaps if you wanted a, a red row, a yellow row, all of those different ones. And then also on the back, I'll just show you. I'll turn this around so you can see. So you've got your legs here, which you can pull out for it to stand up. Let me just take those out first of all. I probably shouldn't have done that backwards. But also you can see here you've got two little holes if you wanted to hang it on the wall. So it would look really cool actually as a decoration. I don't know if we've got one. Have we got one in our studio? We've got a rack actually. We've got all of our rack here um, stood up, but it would look good hung on the wall. You know, if you've got a really colourful, you could have even a couple of those hanging all along almost like a border or a decoration. Um, but with all your different spools on there, you could add a splash of colour to your wall. Oh, like our um, screen today, Colours of Nature. Nice and colourful. Um, so this is a 60 spool rack. MBGQ43. Again, because this is plastic as opposed to wood, it's that natural colour, but it's not going to catch. You're not going to get any splinters. You're not going to get any little um, sort of nicks where it's going to, um, to catch your thread or get anything attached. It's just that nice, smooth um, plastic. So, 19.95, a really popular storage option for your spools and um, just keeping them nice and easily accessible to you. Now, what one would we like to do next, Hannah? The large storage box. So you might see this next to me. It's not a toolbox. This is a storage box. So you can just see here in that lovely bright pink and your um, graphite grey on the top as well. So this is the creative options large. As you can see, it's a large grab and go. It's a rack system. So it's a storage system and it's a really lovely way of keeping everything in one place. Also on the go. So you've got this handle here making that really easily transportable. You can take that with you wherever you want to go. Perhaps if you're going to classes or to workshops, perhaps you're sewing with a friend and you're going to, um, you want to go and, and sew together and you've got lots of things to take with you. It's a great way of assembling everything in one place and taking it on the go. Let me move these spool racks out of the way so I can show you this storage rack. Also, perhaps you don't have a workroom. Oh, that, that's a luxury, isn't it, to have a, a separate room or a sewing room. Perhaps if you want to keep everything in one place in your lounge or in the kitchen or, you know, anywhere, this is somewhere, a way of keeping everything nice and neat and tidy. So let's look at this. This is also good for lots of different hobbies. I don't think this is just for sewing. You could use this for, for all different things. So um, perhaps if you, do, um, if you do art, you've got oil painting, water paints, all of those things, you could use it for that sort of storage. You could use it in a children's bedroom. You could have a storage option there, perhaps. Obviously, it's a, it's a nice bright pink colour, but you could have that for, for toys or for little bits and pieces, little knickknacks. Perhaps you do um, drawing, you've got lots of pencils or, or jewellery making, and you've got lots of notions and beads and things you need to keep in one place. This isn't, you know, this isn't unique to sewing. This is a, a storage option for all of those crafty hobbies. So, oh, I, actually, that's a good, good idea. Producer Hannah's saying perhaps you sell things at craft fairs, perhaps you make things and you go and you, you know, you, you sell those on, then this is a great way of taking everything with you. So, as I said, you've got that lovely, uh, strong plastic handle on the top there for taking it on the go. You can just see there as I turn it around, it's a nice deep storage box. Then on the front here, you've got this plastic clasp. I'm just going to turn this slightly so I can, I can see it. So this just comes off like it's a clip and up. And then as we lift the lid off there, you can see this lovely deep storage. So you can fit lots of things in there. So if you've got lots, or perhaps even fabric, perhaps you want to keep all of your um, fat quarters and fabric um, away from the light so they don't fade. Perhaps if you don't want to have those exposed to sunlight, because it's this nice dark lid as well, you can keep those all, all kept away in there. Or a project, perhaps you've got a project on the go and you've not finished it, you've got things that are bits and pieces that aren't stitched together. <laughs> Producer Hannah just said she lost a llama leg last night. She's making a llama. Um, is it English paper piecing, Hannah? Yeah, English paper piecing, so lots of different bits and pieces. And she's uh, doing it for the quilt block that we're doing here at Sewing Quarter. It's a llama. So if you've got lots of different bits and pieces, if you've got llama legs hanging around, pop them in there and keep them nice and safe and secure. And there's nothing worse, actually, is there, than being in the middle of something and, and not having everything in one place. You want to be able to pick it up, pop it in, pop it in, shut the lid and leave it and know you can come back and pick up where you left off. Perhaps you've got those Liberty Charm Packs, obviously those little two and a half inch squares from the eight o'clock show. You want to keep all those bits and pieces in one place. Perfect for that. So that's your top section, that nice deep storage um, in the top there. Let's just lock that back into place. 
Then, this is the fun bit. In the front here, you've got lots of different drawers, lots of different sections that you can put dividers into to separate all of your notions, your different um, haberdashery, your threads, your spools, your bobbins. Let's get inside and have a look at those. So, those nice two locks there. Then you're just opening this front plastic section here. It's lovely as well that this is clear. Obviously, once that sticker's not in place, you can see, you can see inside. Now, the same applies to these three trays inside. Obviously, they're that transparent plastic, so you can see everything that's in there, making it easily, um, easily viewable. As you tip that, you can just see there that these drawers are sliding in and out of your shelves. So you can just open that straight out, take whichever one you need. Perhaps you could label them up so you could have bobbins in your top one, spools in your second one. Um, you could have, you know, fabrics in the bottom one or perhaps buttons and beads and sequins and you want to keep those in separate areas. You can just separate those using these three separate drawers there. Keeping that pink theme through with the clips on the plastic boxes. So this top box is a slightly uh, th a thinner box, if you like. So this is a, isn't such a deep one here. So maybe this could be for um, embroidery storage or if you've got cross stitch and you've got little, uh, little bobbins and things, you can keep those in one place. So as we lift the lid up here, you can just see it's lovely that you can see straight away inside. So you could see everything that was in there. Let me just grab a, um, a spool here so you can see. If these were all inside, let me just lay those down. What's great about that is that they're visually, obviously you, you can customise the size of these, I'll get to that, but you can see everything through the lid and through the sides so you know what's in there. Let's return these to the right. Don't want to mess up the colours on the spool rack. <laughs> so inside, you can see here, people are multi-buying these already, so perhaps you want a couple of these, you've got different projects on the go, one for knitting, one for sewing, who knows, one for general arts and crafts. So you've got these, um, these dividers that are placed inside the tray. So you can pop different things in different areas. And the really uh, cool thing about this is you get these dividers inside as well. So you can place these, I don't know if you can see these channels here, these little slots, but these will be slotting onto those and you can divide the sections however you wish. So perhaps you want uh, one larger section so that you could then lay down those spools in there like that and keep them in one place. Perhaps you want to keep it as one big long channel on the bottom and you just want to divide these sections, but you get these plastic dividers to pop those wherever you, um, wherever you feel appropriate. So perhaps if you've got little needles or crochet hooks that you want to keep in, into one small area, you can divide those into those little storage pods. So that's the top uh, tray there. You can just see that rectangular one that's going to, it just slides nicely into these shelves within the uh, main body of the storage, the grab and go itself. And again, you've just got that hinge on the back there, that nice easy lid so it just opens really easily. I'll open that up for you. It's just a nice simple plastic storage option. So let, actually let's pop these back inside, don't want to lose our dividers. Here we go. <laughs> so, oh, producer Hannah's saying she's guilty and I think a lot of people will be able to, um, to, to agree with this, is that you put things in, in cardboard boxes and then those boxes just get put away or they get put in the loft or in the garage or somewhere and you don't know what's in there, you don't, you don't end up using those things. If it's stuff that you think you might use or you are gonna bother keeping hold of, maybe keep it in a place where you can see it and where it's all nicely kept in one place. So, we pop that in the top shelf there. I don't know if you can see, but it's just got little um, sort of ledges there so the, the drawers can slot into those nice and comfortably. There they are, like that. So then when we pop the drawer in, that just sits and slides in there really easily. Then as we move down, we've got two, uh, two further drawers. These are deeper storage options. So um, you can use these for fabric or, again, for all of your notions. Let's take one of those out and have a look. Now, the dividers in these sections aren't movable. These ones are fixed in these two deeper trays. So it's creating three channels. I'll just lift that up there so you can see. So three nice deep sections there in your storage box. And this is slightly taller. I keep picking up spools because these are what's here, but these can, your spools can stand in this quite comfortably. You've just got that height there and that depth, for, you know, to be able to fit those inside. Again, because it's that perspex plastic, you can see see straight through. Lots of space in there, turning it to the side, you can see that that is a really deep storage box. All your rotary cutters, your scissors, embroidery scissors, you obviously don't want those all hanging around, you can pop all of those in there too. 
So let's just click those back in. That nice. Oh, I like that. I'll do that again, it's satisfying. That clicky noise. So you, then you can pop that back inside in your tray, again on those little ledges there. And you've got, again, a repeat on the bottom. Now this one doesn't have the, uh, the two larger uh, divider. This is one big open box. So uh, uh, there are two ridges there, but you can just see this is a flatter, a flatter box. It's not divided into large sections. So you've got the option there to, to lay things flat. Again, perhaps your fat quarters, perhaps uh, as a stash of fabric or ribbons. Or fabrics that, you know, off cuts where you've got little bits and pieces that are in your stash. Perhaps, you know, you still, you still think you're going to use them, you still want to keep hold of them, but they're just all little bits and pieces. You can just, you could throw all of those in there. So that's the bottom tray. Again, that click, and you can pop that back in the bottom. So three trays in there, you've got that top one with a movable divider, so you can keep those into little sections depending on what you want to pop in. You've got the second tray with the three channels, so for laying different things in there. Or perhaps if you're using it for knitting, you could put your knitting needles in there. If you're using it for painting, it's great for paintbrushes because it's long channels through those rectangular boxes. And in the bottom, that flatter tray, so the option to lay out fabric or to have um, even pieces of you know, notebooks and paper and maybe uh, different patterns. Or patterns, yeah, you could keep all of your patterns in that bottom box um, and instructions. So we just got to pop that back up there and you've got that lovely uh, that you can see there on the front that's just clicking into place like that and that top section if you miss it is a nice deep um, tray in the top really secure you can see everything in there producer Hannah just said could you sit on it I don't think we'd sit on it Hannah would we would we sit on a storage box I don't think so, because we were saying you could take this to craft fairs. You know, you often need a chair, don't you? If you gosh, I've done those exhibitions and you, well, you, need to, you need somewhere to sit. All you want is a chair. I don't think we'd sit on it, though. I, no, I don't think we'd sit on the, on, the, on the box. So this is the Creative Options large grab-and-go rack system. Lots of people with that in your basket, so people multi-buying that as well. Perhaps if you're, um, maybe you're an a, a exhibition Fanatic, and you've got lots of things, or you've got lots of things to store. 47.95, GBGQ53. What price are you going to, you know, that's the, what, what are you going to pay to keep everything nice and neat and organised? So, lovely. Um, if you do like that one, add that to your basket or give the call centre a ring 0800 112 4433. Now, I do love to hear from you, so please do get in touch if you're watching this morning. If you've got any questions, we had Anna in from Alice Caroline Fabrics, and she's in again um, at the, in the next hour at 10 o'clock. We're looking at those lovely Liberty prints. If you've got any questions for Anna, if you want to see some of those bags that we made, um, or, or just if you want to send me some pictures of perhaps something you've made with, with any of your Liberty fabrics, please send those in. You can go to the website and message the studio or email us, studio at sewingquarter.com. Now, the um, thread bundle with the stand, I showed you that at the beginning of the show. Just a quick recap, because this is the first time that we've ever had this on the show. We're in single figures already, Hannah. Wow, we're already in single figures for this. So please do be aware, if this is in your basket, um, do check this out. You can see you've got 32 threads and they come with the stand. So this isn't just the stand itself. This is all of your threads for 59.95. These are from Guterman. They're 100% polyester. That lovely quality thread, 100 metres on all of these spools as well. So you've got corals, you've got your yellows, you've got your lovely, uh, your crisp whites and creams, purples, indigos, oranges, yellows, all the colours of the rainbow. Just wanted you to be aware of how limited a stock we are on that. And obviously they're all on that lovely rack, which you can pop on your desk or in a cupboard. Lovely. So... You might have noticed this Hawaiian box just to my side here. Perhaps it's caught your attention this morning. This is fantastic as well for a beginner, perhaps someone who's just getting into sewing. This would make such a lovely gift because it's like a starter kit. It's, got, it's a sewing basket, but it comes with lots of little bits and pieces inside. And I'll talk you through those. It would make a lovely present. It's the Summer Bundle Tahitian Treat. So first of all, let's look at the box itself. It's got a really lovely sort of Hawaiian feel to it with these um, hibiscus flowers and these lovely palm leaves you can see there. It's in that nice sky blue, again with your greens and whites and yellows. A very summery feel to this. I feel like you could wear, a, this, is, this is like a Hawaiian shirt. <laughs> this is the sort of thing that you'd wear on holiday. 
you can't wear the sewing box. So you can see on the front here, let me just show you the, the shape of this. It's a nice rectangular sewing basket. You've got this handle here with this uh, woven detail. That's on a, on a hinge there that you can just move that to the side. Again, as you move around, it's got a nice sheen to that weave as well. And as we come around to the front, you'll notice this uh, magnetic clasp on the front there. So keeping everything nice and secure. Then as we open it up inside, this is lovely. Look at this. So you've got a pin cushion here built into the lid of the sewing basket. So somewhere to just keep all of your pins. If I turn to the side, you can see that that's um, a 3D pin cushion there on the top. This is lined with that nice silky satin. And then you've also got a pocket here. So perfect for storing little bits and pieces like your pins. It's an elasticated pocket as well. Then inside, can I take this off? Let's see. I was just going to show the tray. OK, well, we'll just show you what's in the box while I do this. So you can see there, this is the sewing basket. And you get lots of different things in there with that. It's great value. You know, if you wanted to buy those tools separately, um, you, you would probably pay that price elsewhere just for the basket. So you're getting all of these things inside as well. And as I said, it's great as sort of an, as, as a starter kit, but also things, you know, if you are um, a more accomplished sewer, they're things that you're going to use anyway. Um, tape measures, scissors, pins, threads. So I've taken off the packaging. We can come back and look at what's inside. So as I said, we've got that nice button fastening there. Once we've opened it up inside, I'll just tip this so you can see. You've got this lovely removable tray again in that clear plastic. So you can see everything through that's in the bottom if you've got lots of things in there. Again, those divided sections, so for keeping things in separate areas, nice and organised. You could pop different uh, bobbins in here and needles and threads. And a hole here so you could pop your scissors so they stand up in there. You can just pop the blades of the scissors through that little gap in the tray. Then as you take the tray out, it's a nice deep storage box there. You can just see at the side that there's some nice depth to it. So you can keep lots of things inside can tidy everything away, popping all of that in the box. All of these bits and pieces that come with it. So all of those go in there. Then your tray just pops in. Oh, I've laid that down. It helps if you lay it down. <laughs> you can see through into the bottom. And that nice lid too. So let's have a look at what's inside this Tahitian treat bundle. It's not just the sewing kit itself. You're getting lots of different things inside too. So we've got, first of all, this. So this is a lovely matching pin cushion. I don't know if you can, I don't know if I can open this. Can I open this? Yes, I've got permission to open it. Yay. Okay. So this is, Jennifer Taylor always wears one of these, one of our guest designers. You can wear this on your wrist as a pin cushion. So I don't know if you can see that there, it's just got um, an elasticated band that you can pop onto your wrist. Then you've got that floral pin cushion there which matches obviously the fabric of the sewing kit. But lovely as you're working, you can just pull your pins out, pop them into the cushion as you're feeding something through the machine and you've got them really easily accessible to you. That nice button detail in the middle there, pinching it in to give you that 3D flower look. Great on the go as well. Just keep everything in one place. Just obviously you don't want to, don't, don't put the pins in your wrist, just pop them into your, when Jennifer Taylor's here, often when she's doing dressmaking, she's just popping the pins in and I just, I'm like, well, it looks like she's just putting, aiming pins towards her wrist, but now you've got one of these on. So this comes in the kit, storing all your pins in there. And look, it matches the, um, the box itself, which is really lovely. You could even give this as a gift to someone actually, couldn't you? Perhaps if you want the box for yourself, you could uh, give the wristband pin cushion to someone as a little present. So that matching there, then you also get, let's pop that back in. <laughs> so upstairs they're having a bit of a debate. We've got um, our director Mike and we've also got Hannah, producer Hannah, and they are having a bit of a debate about whether you could separate this and use it for different gifts. So um, if you have a gift drawer, perhaps you're starting to, I know we had Christmas in July, we can't talk about Christmas, but we can. Um, so if you've got lots of different bits and pieces and you, maybe you're going to separate those out, you could give them as different presents. So if you know that like, you know, perhaps you, you want the basket and you want to give um, some of these other little bits and pieces to somebody else, then they're not going to know. You could definitely do that. Let's look what else is inside. So you've got these scissors here, craft scissors, um, with that nice soft grip plastic handle. You can just see those there. 
So these are really sort of small and versatile scissors. You could use those um, for paper, paper thing projects as well. So for decoupage or for scrapbook making and knitting and crochet or felting, cross stitch, lots of different things you could do with those. So those are seven inch scissors. They come inside the pack. So the pincushion, the scissors, then you've also got pins. So you've got 40 pins here on a pinwheel with those. Um, the, these have got a, per, a nickel plated pin with those um, different colorful heads there. Then you've also got more pins. We've got dressmaking pins, lots of those in there. Obviously, they're slightly finer and they've got there those steel pins too. Then you also get black and white thread, which you can never have too much of, those colours that you're always going to be using, and some needles there too. 100 metres of each of those threads in this bundle. Then you've also got a tape measure. <laughs> so the other day, I... Um, I'm, I'm doing, this Christmas I'm actually doing Panto and I'm doing, doing Cinderella, which I can't wait to do. I love doing theatre. And the, um, I had to send my measurements in for costumes and I didn't have a tape measure, like a, a normal tape measure that you do. So I had to use one of those tape measures, you know, that is for DIY. You know those hard, those measures that you pull out and that you have to lock the, um, the tape measure into place that you can't really bend. It's not ideal for measuring sort of um, your, your, your body with. So I don't know what size the costumes are going to end up being they're going to they're not probably not going to fit me I'm going to end up with a ball gown that's all all misshapen so yeah I probably need one of these actual proper tape measures that that, um, that you can move that are perfect for tailoring so if you're buying this and separating out like producer Hannah upstairs is doing I'll have the tape measure please I'll bag through the tape measure so yeah I'm sure most people do have a tape measure but um, if you don't then there's one in this kit too <laughs> And then you've also got your needles here as well. So you've got, it's a, a needle compact. You've got 30 different needles in there, all different sizes, obviously different size um, eyes as well in that needles. So you've got your needles, your tape measure, your scissors, two sets of pins, dressmaking pins and your normal pins. You've got your threads. Oh, this is right, right out of rubbing my hands. You've got your pin cushion on your wristband, all of those. And they come in the bundle in this Tahitian box. I'll just show you that once more so you can see the design. Really good value, $29.95. This would be lovely as well as a, as a gift to someone. Perhaps it's a, as a summer holiday gift. Oh, actually, that would be nice to take on holiday, wouldn't it? If you're taking a project away with you, it's got a nice summery feel. Or maybe you've got a grandchild who's, who's getting into sewing for the summer holidays. The weather seems to have taken a bit of a turn for the worse. You're going to do some indoor, um, indoor projects. This would be a really nice um, present for them. Something, you know, to give with, with some, an introduction to those different sewing bits and pieces inside as well. RMKB18 for the Tahitian treat. And that's $29.95. So we've had a message in. Let's have a look. This is from Yvonne in Clacton. Morning, Yvonne. I'm from Essex as well, so happy, happy Essex hello. Um, so <laughs> I started the sentence there, and I, this, that's what Essex people do, the happy Essex hello. Um, so I purchased one of the storage boxes, and it's fabulous. It stores so many items. Yeah, it does. There is a lot of room in there. For, it's a really deep storage box. You can see at the side there, but you've got lots of room. And because of those, all of those different trays inside, those different little sections, they're still laughing at me upstairs at my happy Essex hello. Hello. Um, you can see everything in there and it is a, it is a really sort of um, large storage option for everything, keeping everything in one place. So thanks for messaging in Yvonne. I hope you did the happy Essex hello back. It goes like this. <laughs> so you can see that, that creative options there, that big storage box. Great for keeping everything in one place. Okay, so we've also got some lots of different little bits and pieces for your threads in this hour as we're bobbing along. And Anna was singing the song this morning, bobbing along. I don't know the next bit. What's the next line? I know that's the first line. I don't know the next line of the song. But let's go and look at the threads and you can see some different ones. We've got some Aurifil threads, which I know you love for your quilting. So let's look at those. Okay, so we have got... Lots more storage options for bobbins. Um, these are fantastic. If you've not seen these before, this is like a donut. So you can just see here. Oh, I could eat a donut. You can just see this bobbin ring here, which you can pop all of your bobbins into this channel around the outside. Now you might be thinking, why, why would I want this? It's, it is a really great way. You can see there, you can just pop your bobbin out of this shape. And also you can shrink this. So if you drop this into boiling water, perhaps if you have a machine that uses a slightly smaller bobbin, you can shrink this to a smaller bobbin size by dropping it into boiling water. 
Now the bobbins pop in and out of this. They make some really, if I show you the one in the packet, you can see how they, do we have any bobbins? See if we can grab some. But you can just see those there. Um, how, how they sort of fit inside and it just keeps them all in one place. It stops them from unraveling. It keeps them, um, stops them from all unwinding in your bag. We're gonna grab some bobbins so I can show you that. But just keeping them, it's great to take on the go. You can just throw this in your bag and it also does keep them really securely in place. Once they're in, you can, I'll show you in a second, but you can sort of give this, you could give that a good wiggle and they're not gonna come out. That does keep them nice and, nice and tightly in place. So, oh, we've got some bobbins, let me show you. Thank you very much, Jay going to try and sneak in thank you so if we just pop these bobbins in there if you wind them up and just the best thing to do is to keep your bobbin thread place that sort of bottom side down but you can just literally drop these in there oh it's all unwound da, 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 da. here we go just popping these lock those into the place there they just drop pop straight in and once they're in they're really secure, they're not going anywhere. It does hold it really firmly. So you can, obviously you can imagine that when they're all the way around, you can keep that all in one place. If you've, you know, if you've, if you've wound up a few bobbins and you're only using it for a small section and a small area of a project, but you're just gonna keep those on, on the bobbin, you can just pop those in the ring. So these actually came about, we had, um, I think it was Jane in from Elna and she had one of these and I said, why, why, we don't have those, Where, what are they? What do you, she said, what do you mean you don't have the donuts? So we managed to get them in, the buyers um, listened to Jane, we got, we got in these bobbin rings and they are really popular as well at all the fairs too. JAPH17 for your bobbin ring or bobbin donuts and that's 9 95 Okay. So the other bobbin storage, perhaps if you want to keep them in a lock box um, and you, you'd prefer to take that on the go or buy your sewing machine, this one here has got a nice clear lid, again, so keeping it nice and uh, viewable so you can see what's inside. How many hubs does this hold? 32. So you can see there, four rows of seven. Oh no, eight. Yeah, eight. That was bad maths. <laughs> Let me just show you with some bobbins inside. <laughs> I'll lay some in just so you can see how that looks again keeping all of your bobbins in one place and that nice lock lid lovely very smart that's the prim bobbin box P-U-P-H 79 and that one is 445 so your two bobbin options, the box and the donut or the ring, depending on which one you know you prefer. This is really fantastic for taking on the go, for taking to classes, to workshops, and perhaps if you're sewing, um, you know, if you're travelling and you want to take something with you, it's a really great way of keeping them in one place. So we've also got some different thread packs in this hour. So obviously we've shown you those spool racks, we've shown you the storage options, and then we wanted to show you some threads in our bobbin along. So we've got the Gutemann ones to start with. Let's just move those to the side. Again, always popular. These are a German brand, so they've got a really, uh, they're, they've got a very high abrasion rate. They don't break easily. They're very resistant to breaking. We've got some different colour combinations. I'm going to start with these because I think the colours are beautiful. This is a denim pack. So in here, um, these are slightly different. They've got a lovely sheen to them, but also the colours. You've got a beautiful um, sort of copper colour here and a gold working really well with denim colours and with your navies. And these are more sturdy, these threads. These are a thicker thread. And so they are made to work with denim. You've got your three different colours there as well of your blue. I don't know if I turn it to the side, if you can see more easily. But you've got a nice dark navy. You've got one with a sort of a silver sheen to it. If I shake that down, you can see that lighter blue one there as well. But I love these coppery colours, very autumnal. But if you can just see, you know, I don't know if you can just see that there, but imagine that these, these are the sorts of colours that work really well with those denims. Yesterday we had on the um, art gallery denims, which are uh, actually 100% cotton, but these colours would work really beautifully with those. So three of those threads are 100 metres and two of them are 200 metres. So you're actually getting 700 metres of thread um, in this pack for 13.95. GHGQ12, that's your Gutemann denim pack. Let's give that a tilt so it's not too shiny. So that's specifically for your denim. It's an extra strong, it's 70% polyester and 30% cotton. 
Okay, so we've also got um, two different, well, three actually, three different colour options for different thread packs from Guterman. So this one here has got a very spring-like feel to it. This is fantastic, um, particularly with your Tildes, if you've got those lovely, dainty, um, vintage-y uh, florals, but a really a sort of soft, pastel-y colours in this bundle here. Oh, we're very limited on stock on this one. So this is the Summer Loft pack. Oh, we've got less than 10 of these already. So you've got that lovely soft mint green on the top there. We're always reordering this because it's so popular. We've got the white, you've got a nice soft pink, a slightly darker sort of candy floss pink there. Can we open the packets? Oh, great. So you're getting 100 metres of all of these threads. That's better, now you can actually see. So you've got that lovely... Um, it, You've got that lovely sort of darker green there. Then you've got this soft pastel blue. You've got your lovely pinks. Those nice paisley pastels. DSGQ27. Less than 10 of these in stock. It might take us a little while to get these back. So if you do like this one, please do check it out. It's 8 95 Don't want any disappointment. <laughs> So next up in our thread packs, let's look at this one. This one is called Fenton House. I wonder why it's called Fenton House. Oh, it's a National Trust property, I'm being told. I didn't know that. Learn something new every day. Oh, ha producer had admitted you have to Google it. Okay, that makes me feel a bit better about myself. I'd like to see Fenton House. I'll have to get a picture of that. So this is um, a sort of a darker, there's some nice... <laughs> Oh dear, let's hold these up. Let's turn these on their ends. <laughs> I need a small back, that's what I need. Okay, so. <laughs> this is a, these are royal colours in this one. So you've got your, and you've got some nice deep, um, deep purples, deep magenta pinks, nice royal blues. You've got that teal on the end there. Obviously your classic white. A soft pink, a red. Perhaps if you, um, in Christmas in July, you had some of those more traditional Christmas fabrics. Obviously these two here, particularly Christmassy. But all of these, 100 metres of these cottons. Oh, sorry, these, uh, these are polyester, actually. These are 100% polyester. So 700 metres in total. NLGQ83 for the Fenton House National Trust. <laughs> Lovely. So despite the fact I spilt them all over the table, let's just move those over there. <laughs> At least they didn't roll off. So we've also got one other um, thread pack. This one is called French Cottage. Come on then, Hannah, what's this one named after? A French cottage? <laughs> she doesn't know the answer to that one. Okay. So let's have a look at this French cottage. Oh, Anna, our designer who's back in at 10 o'clock. On oh, she's her last day at work when she's off to France for a month. I'm very jealous. So um, we've got this lovely um, cottage pack here. You can just see you've got that nice soft blue on the end. Then you've got a, a purple or an indigo. You've got a coppery orange. It's a nice uh, contrast in this bold pack. Um, a magenta pink, a softer pink, a nice grey there. And then you've got that nice um, sort of lime green on the end. French Cottage KQGQ95. And that one is 8.95 as well. Let me just check. I believe these are all 100% polyester too. Yes, they are. So these ones are all 100% polyester. So three different options for um, those different packs from Guterman, and also that denim pack as well, which was a slightly different. Um, they're slightly different spools. They're um, they're different threads as well. Now. I requested to have this back on today because we had it on yesterday and it was a launch. It was a premiere. We'd never had it on before. This is Thread Magic. So this is brand new here at Sewing Quarter. If you didn't see it, see it yesterday, I'll show you exactly what it is. But this is to condition your threads. So if you've got um, threads where you just want to, this is a great way of adding some longevity to them. Perhaps if you're investing time in making a quilt and you want a thread that's going to, um, to stand the test of time, this conditions your thread. Um, it stops them from tangling. It's also eliminating static. I'll show you what's inside. So it looks almost a little bit like um, a, a, like a, a like a lip uh, like a lip balm or a lip gloss, but it comes in a little pod like this. And inside, I'll just take that lid off. You can see there; it's almost like a um, like a like a, a glue, like a glue stick. 
But what you do is you pop your thread through this conditioner and it's strengthening it, it's taking away the static, it's also going to stop fraying of any of the ends. So I'll show you what you do with, I don't know if this is the thread, we've only got a bob in here. Let me open this. Shall I use a darker one so you can see it? So you take your thread and you can just pop this in the conditioner. If you, I don't know if you can see these little grooves here on the side of the um, thread magic, but you can just pop this in like so, across two of those. Then you can even pop the lid back on and just pull the thread through the conditioner and it conditions your thread. So you can see sometimes people would use a beeswax traditionally, but as you just pull that through there, and what's lovely about this as well is if you're doing the ends of your thread, as you come through like that, obviously in terms of threading the eye of a needle, if you've got um, fraying on the ends or little bits of um, where, the, where the threads come away, that's going to keep your thread, it's going to stop it being, um, being so frayed and being so static as well. So it's a really, really simple to use. Great way of just strengthening that thread. Also, this is hypoallergenic, so if you're, if you're worried about having any sort of reaction to the thing that you're going to pop on your cotton, um, you, you don't have to be concerned about that. And this, this one here just comes in a little pot. Thread magic, lid clips on like that. And you can just pop this into your, into your sewing bag, into your kit. It's also safe on all your fabrics. It's not gonna leave any residue. And it doesn't melt, it doesn't freeze. FP EQ 34. Bought that back today. That was a premiere, brand new project uh, product on yesterday's show, and I managed to sneak it back in today into our bobbin along as I felt it was relevant. Okay, so the Orophil thread packs. Let's look at these. Okay, so Orophil. These are from. Uh, they're made in Italy. Now, this uh, these threads actually. They the company started. They used to do a lot of embroidery, um, and they used to do have embroidery machines. And they found that lots of quilters discovered their cottons. They're 100% cotton, really superior quality cottons. And people would sort of rave about the um, the cottons that they made. And now they specialise in those. they um, the company are based in Milan. They're a family-run company, and the cottons that they create are, are perfect for quilts. Obviously, if you're working with those 100% cottons. Um, I mean, we call these quilting cottons, but you, you can use them for other projects. Um, obviously, that's just what they lend themselves to. So the Orifil, first of all, this one is called Happy Colours. So let's have a look at these Happy Colours. This is the most popular one when we've had this on before from Orifil. So you can see inside you're getting 10 threads. These are a 50 weight. They're lovely, bright, happy colours. I can see why this is um, a happy, joyful pack. So again, you can see in there, you've got your pinks, your yellows, your oranges, greens, blues, and that nice bright red there as well. 100% cotton. Again, if you're investing in a, in a project that's gonna take a lot of time and you're using your 100% cottons for your quilting, you obviously want to carry that through to the thread as well. R-A-U-A 46 is your item number for that one. Your happy colors from Orophil. So those ones are 50 weight. We've also got another option, two other options actually, um, different colours. So let's look at those spools. Comes in a nice little box as well. So the next one, this one is called Dandy Days. So let's look at this one. This is again, 10 spools in here. Um, this one is a combination. So you've got um, some are 50 weight and some are an 80 weight thread. So seven of them are 50 weights and three are 80 weights. So um, some slightly more sort of uh, substantial threads in there too. So you can see some uh, softer colors in this one with your grays. They've got a nice almost silvery sheen to those top ones. These are your 88 ones. You can see there they're on a wooden spool. So that's the difference. You can see that those are thicker. Then you've also got that lovely um, sort of sheen on the pink and purple. You've got your yellows, a nice coral, a turquoise and a blue. LBUA05, that's the Dandy Days Orophil pack. Elsewhere for one spool on their own, these are... These are between four to six pounds per spool on their own if you were buying these individually. Um, so putting, those, putting those, all of those in one big bundle uh, does make those better value to have those all in one kit for you. 33.95. Then your final one, again, another different color option. 
This one here is called Going Home to Roost. So let's have a look inside at that one. This is sort of an, uh, an essentials colour collection um, with some lovely... Let's just check inside here. Um, lovely, really soft corals. These have got quite an autumnal feel to them, actually. You get that from the front of the packet as well. Home to roost. Oh, that's very unusual. I feel like a, I like a bronze. I love the corals. And you've got a nice gold, sort of golden colour ones here too. These are all 50 weight cottons. That Aurifil cotton from Italy. Home to Roost, 10 50 weight threads in there. It's a neutrals pack, so the colours that are going to um, work really well with, with the majority of fabrics and busy prints or even your solids. TNUA58. And that's 33.95. Oh, we've just had an email in from Anne. So, oh, producer Hannah's saying, actually, the, um, sorry, we, producer Hannah, we got muddled up. The higher the um, thread weight, so the 80 weight, is actually a finer thread. So thanks, Anne. Thanks for, for filling, in, filling us in. So those, that um, pack there, the Dandy Days, that's got three 80 weights in on the wooden spools, that's actually a finer cotton. So um, sorry about that. We got a bit muddled up. So you've got three different Aurifil packs there, um, Dandy Days, Home to Roost, and this lovely Happy Colours one as well. So depending on which colour combination do you like. So should we head back over and look at those storage options? Yes. Okay. So, oh, we've got some pictures been sent in. Fantastic. So thank you so much for sending those in. I love seeing your pictures and I always look at them. We don't always get a chance to show them all on the show. But when we finish, when, we, when I come off air, I always go and look at them all. I, want to, I was saying yesterday, I'd really like to create sort of um, Amy's album, have a little album of pictures that people have sent in. So people are sending in pictures from their Liberty prints. Let's see what we've got. Oh, this is from Therese. That's that fabric that we had this morning. So that's the Sarah tote that we had at eight o'clock this morning. Oh, wow, we've only got three of those left in stock. But that's lovely. I love the button detail as well that you've added in there. That's gorgeous. That's the fabric that um, Anna was saying you can see uh, in the shard. It's a really iconic Liberty fabric. We've got three of those left in that canvas tote this morning. And Diana's also sent in a picture. What's Diana made? Oh, the clutch bag from last time's programme. That looks like it's from the pink patchwork, the pink charm squares. I like that. So we, oh, that's gorgeous. Do you know what I love? We're actually making that clutch again in the next hour, but in a different bundle. And I love that. Um, it's got that clip on the side, so you can sort of hang that over your wrist. This is the one we're actually making in the next hour. So it's a, it's a summery version um, with your greens and those bright summery yellows. Anna's going to be making that at 10 o'clock, so... Thanks, Diana, for sending that in. I love that colour combination. Pinks and purples are always gorgeous, nice and nice and colourful. So, um, if you have got the, have we got the charm packs? The, oh, we've got these the charm packs from Alice Caroline that we had in that hour. Just a quick recap: a few people asking to see these. These were really popular. If you've not got any Liberty in your stash and perhaps you want to treat yourself to add some, we're very. Um, how many left of these, Hannah? Six, only six of these left in the purple. Um, so these are two and a half inch charm squares. So um, this morning, Anna was showing you how you could piece these together to create um, perhaps a small cushion or a makeup bag with chain piecing. You get 36 squares in here of all these different um, Liberty squares. Those iconic Liberty prints. It's just got that heritage that those, you know, they're, they're iconic colors. Very quickly, lots of people with these in your basket, so please do check it out if you have got that and you do want to um, add that to your order. Then we also had a pink one. We've got a little more stock of this. We didn't make anything with this this morning, but well over half of this one has gone as well. Um, this is a different colour palette, so pinks and blues in this one. But again, it's got those lovely florals. And it's that Tarna Lawn that's synonymous with Liberty. Again, lots of people with those in their baskets, 36 of the two and a half inch squares. You could incorporate those into a quilting project. You could add those as a splash of, a splash of something um, exclusive. ALBY92, that's the charm squares. I just wanted to recap those in case you didn't see those this morning. Don't want you to miss out if it's in your basket. 9.95 for the pink ones. I love the Liberty fabrics, they're so gorgeous. We've got it all over our studio this morning. I don't know if you can see on the quilt and also this cushion. 
Look at this, it's stunning. Oh, I just want to take this one home, it's lovely. So we've got more Liberty coming up in the next hour with Anna, you won't want to miss that. There, um, we're doing, oh, let's move that. We've got a quilt block um, and we're also uh, making that clutch bag that uh, Diana just sent a picture in. So, and we've also got a book, thank you, Jay. We've also got a um, book in this hour, which I can show you. That's the clutch that we're going to be making with Anna in a moment. That summery clutch, perfect for holiday or if you've got a wedding coming up and you want to add some colour. So we've also got in this hour a make your own quilt book. So this is about making your first quilt. So perhaps if you've, uh, perhaps you heard me saying earlier, I made my first ever block yesterday. It didn't go quite to plan. I probably should have sent a picture in so you could see. Um, the, uh, the, the block didn't quite go to plan. It ended up a bit back to front. I did some uh, re reverse applique and the letter was backwards, but I did try. Um, so if you're making your first quilt, and this is sort of an, an A to Z guide of how to do that, a visual guide, I probably needed this book. So you've got um, layout options in here, but also talking you through the process, um, sort of from A to B to C, all the way through. All the pages are stuck together. So talking you through the tools and preparing your fabrics. Perhaps if you've never made a quilt before, I'm um, a checklist of what you need to make a quilt. This would be a lovely present for someone that wants to uh, perhaps move into patchwork quilting, perhaps if you're more of a dressmaker and you, you fancy a new challenge. So you go through all of these, it sort of talks you through all of the, uh, the processes and then it also shows you the different layouts for different blocks. So talking you through uh, backing and batting and your different stitches, machine quilting there. These are stuck together. <laughs> And then this is the section where you get to the project part. So just showing you different, blo uh, different blocks that you could incorporate into quilts. So you can see here these um, crossroads blocks. You can make this quilt here um, using, it talks you through all those different blocks and how to get it to that final place um, through all of the different process. So it's sort of a confidence builder really, holding your hand through that process of how to create those different um, sections so that you can then assemble it to create one big quilt so this is all your quilt top instructions. Then it talks you through the border. You can see that there with all of your uh, labeled diagrams too. And then finishing your quilt. So um, layering and quilting. And of course your binding. So you can see that here, this is from Alex, Alex, um, Alex Anderson, I nearly said Alexander, um, and she's written over 30 books. So um, she's from San Francisco. She's got loads of different books, also does some blogging. And if you are making, you're thinking of sort of moving into your first quilt, uh, doing something for the first time, it's just a really sort of hold your hand. It's a comprehensive guide for how to do that. Or as a gift, perhaps if you want to um, introduce someone to quilting, it's that nice hand-holding guide to help you with the process. So 1095 SAS P45 for your first quilt book. So we also had one other storage box that we've not seen yet in this hour. And um, this one here, last time this sold out, last time it was on the show, this is a 50 spool box. Let me see if I can open this packaging. Oh, I might need some scissors. Let's see, got some scissors in here. Okay. So this is actually a, um, a sewing quarter sewing kit. If you've never bought anything from sewing quarter before, the first time you spend um, over £10 with us, we send you one of these. You get 40, it's worth £14.95, lots of bits and pieces inside. I've just taken the scissors out to, to do something with, but you get all of those threads, your pins, your seam unripper, the tape measure that I needed myself the other day for some measuring, and needles and buttons. And that's with your first order over £10, we'll send you one of those. So this storage box, this is the one that sold out last time it was on. This is for um, 50 spools. Let's get this undone so you can see what's inside. So these are stackable. Sorry, I'm aware that's probably making a bit of a racket. You can stack these all on top of each other if you've got lots and lots of spools. You can just see here again, it's that clip lid, which you can just flip the lid up there. And inside, you've got all of your spool holders. So you can just pop your spools onto those, keep them all in one place. 
So it ho holds 30 cones of embroidery thread. So perhaps if you've got those larger, um, those mini cones of embroidery thread, um, or 50 spools. If you've got your traditional th uh, spools like these Gutemann ones, they all fit in there. And then you've got that, you can obviously pop the lid down, keep those all in one place. And obviously once you've taken this off, in fact, I can take this off now. Let's just undo this. We weren't very organised this morning. I think it might be stuck all the way around. But oh, oh, here you go. You can just lift this and you can see inside. So you can see everything that's in there. And it is stacking. You can just see here these little feet. They match up with, on the back, these little um, sort of dots here. So you can stack those really readily. OFGQ70, sold out last time it was on the show, very popular for all of your spools. Perhaps if you've got those new Orifil ones or the Gutemann ones, you need somewhere to put them. That's just an option there with all of those um, vertical spool pins inside. So, let's pop that one back over there. Now we've got Alice, um, another Alice Caroline hour coming up with Anna. Remember, if you do want those um, those charm pack squares that we've just shown you, they're in pink and purple, and we're very very limited. There's one left in the purple now, so if you do want that one, well, it's gonna, that's going to be a bit of a race, isn't it? Who's going to check out the basket basket quicker? Um, so there's pink and purple um, charm pack squares. We also had two projects that you um, haven't seen yet coming up. So first up, we have got the quilt block. So I'll show you that it's the beautiful one you may have seen that on social media introducing those liberty prints with the butterflies there you can incorporate that into a quilt or into a cushion but that's coming up with Anna in a moment and the clutch bag as well so it's a really bright colorful clutch bag with a um, with that metal ring on the side there and that detachable handle and we've also got a Liberty book, which we're going to be looking at. If you haven't seen that before, it's the Little Lady, Lady Liberty. So lots of projects for little girls. Perfect if you've got um, a child or grandchild who you want to make things for. And we've got some different projects we can show you from that book as well. And that Anna's brought in with her today. Gorgeous, utilising those Liberty fabrics. Also, if you've got any, any questions for Anna, please send those in so we can ask in the next hour. Studio at sewingquarter.com or do it on the website and we can answer any questions you might have about the Liberty fabrics or those bags that, and quilts blocks we're about to do. So finally, in this hour, we've been doing lots of spools in bobbin along. So we had this um, spool rack to start with, where you've got all of your bobbin, uh, your threads included with this one. We're in single figures on this one now, 32 threads, and it's included with the rack. If everyone checks out their basket, we've actually got less than five of these available now. So all of your threads are included, those Gutemann 100% polyester threads, 32 threads there in that spectrum of colours. And then the other spool rack is the 60 spool rack. You can see here that doesn't come with any threads, but this you can either stand that up in your workroom, you can lay it down flat or hang it on the wall. It's got 60 vertical spool holders, so you can arrange your threads however you wish on all of those different rows there. And you can just see, you can lay that flat at the side by taking the legs down. People multi-buying that, MBGQ43, and that's 1995. So as I said, Anna is back in three minutes. We've got that gorgeous quilt block and the clutch bag. I can't wait to get my hands on some more Liberty. Don't go anywhere. You're not going to want to miss it. See you in three minutes. Join us on Facebook. Simply search for The Sewing Quarter and like our page for the latest news and more. many different ways you can buy from us here at the Sewing Quarter. You can order from us by calling our free phone number at 0800 112 4433 and talk to the team at our UK based call centre. Alternatively there are other ways you can buy from us. You can go online and shop through our website at www.sewingquarter.com. You can even watch the show there and shop as you go. You can check out as many times as you like throughout the day and only pay a small fee of £2.95 postage and packaging for the whole day. We also offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all products excluding custom cut fabric. Our friendly UK-based team will help guide you through every step. The Sewing Quarter website is simple and easy to use. You can view a live broadcast of the show on our homepage. 
Get instant access to our online shop, which has a wide range of wonderful products for you to choose from. You can also enjoy a selection of projects and guides, which we have on offer to help you enhance your skills and gain valuable tips. Watch the live shows and you can buy the product which is currently being shown on air. You can even message the studio to ask our presenters or team any questions you might have. Below, you'll find all the products from today's show for you to look at and purchase. On the right of the screen, next to today's products, you will find our simple programme guide listing all upcoming shows. So, join us today at sewingquarter.com. Join us at the quilting event of the year this summer. From the 10th to the 13th of August, we'll be at the Festival of Quilts at Birmingham NEC. Come to the Sewing Quarter Cafe where you can meet our presenters and enjoy a spot of English paper piecing with special guests, including talented quilter Joe Carter. And on Sunday the 13th of August, join me, John Scott, and designer Mandy Shaw at the Sewing Quarter Workshop. Learn how to make Mandy's red work Christmas decorations and take home a free iron-on pattern transfer to help you get started. If you fancy being part of the fun, head to www.thefestivalofquilts.co.uk and use the voucher code SEWQ17 for £2.50 off adult tickets and £1 off concessions. We hope to see you there. Welcome back and if you've just joined us it's nice to see you this morning we have got Alice Caroline we've got the lovely Liberty fabrics back in this hour with Anna from Alice Caroline and some gorgeous Liberty prints if you've not seen these before or perhaps you've never had the chance to add any to your stash these fabrics are absolutely gorgeous really renowned for their Tarn and Lawn with that lovely silky feel to it and the designs and prints just beautiful I was just well in the break I was just oh lovingly looking at all the projects in this book so, um, first of all, in this hour, we're going to be looking at this quilt block. So this is a butterfly quilt. We're doing some raw edge applique with Anna and just introducing these Liberty fabrics in all of these beautiful butterflies. So you could perhaps incorporate this into a larger quilt as a standalone. You could hang that on the wall. You could incorporate it even into a cushion, the front of a cushion. But in the bundle for this, you get all of the different Liberty fabrics for those butterflies. You get the, um, the, all of your instructions from Alice Caroline, again, those colour instructions. You get the fabric for your binding. And you get the white fabric as well for the main body of the, uh, the quilt block too. So everything in there you need to make that, you just need to add the wadding. Now, this is really quickly already being put into baskets, I'm being told. So um, we, <laughs> we knew this was going to be popular this morning. Um, if you do want that one, please, just if, if you don't want to miss out, just to keep you in the loop. So that's the, uh, the butterfly uh, quilt block. And then we've also got this, which is lovely. Diana, in the last hour, sent in a picture of this from last time Anna was on in the different colour combination. But this is a really lovely summery one, nice and bright. Anna's got matching shoes on in this fabric today. Um, and it's got this gorgeous... Um, snap a clip hook at the side so that's obviously detachable you can use that to um, place around your wrist we're loving this this morning at sewing quarter and inside as well keeping that liberty fabric all the way through do you know what's lovely they didn't they didn't need to give you liberty fabric to line it they could have given you a plain one but they don't you get liberty for both so everything you get in there you've got Everything you need for the fastening for that, um, for that hook and with the ring as well, that's from Prim. Then you've got the zip, you've got the, um, all of your Liberty fabrics for the lining and the outside and your instructions as well. Last time this was on, again, this sold out in the other colourway. So um, this is a nice, bright, vivid green one this morning, ZUBY68. And then we also had the lovely Little Lady Liberty book Look at that, the alliteration, lots of L's. So this book here um, by Alice Caroline, who has a real passion for Liberty Fabrics, a lifelong passion for it. Um, and you know, this is all about making things for little girls. So um, projects that perhaps you might make for a granddaughter or for, for your own children. 
and so there's that cushion that we've got on the show that I love. I just gave, gave a big squidge to. But we're going to um, look, talk to Anna about this book, but there are so many gorgeous projects in here. I don't know if you can see here, but different clothing and bags, storage options. Let me just see. Look at these. And I mean, that does that. I mean, <laughs> producer Hannah said she's a big girl and she likes those. That's not just for children. <laughs> Lots of beautiful things incorporating those Liberty fabrics. Look at, we've got, we've actually got some of these. The um, photography is lovely, but with these skirts and dresses, very girly. Lovely different projects in here. Nice little bags and purses. But we'll look at those in a moment with Anna. So I'm going to take the, um, let's, shall I take the quilt block and the bag and the book? Let's take it all with me. So we're going to crack on with this next one. Okay, Anna, did you Hi. have a nice little, you've got a little, little 10 minute, well, an hour, hour break. You could, maybe you could call it a break. You could a call break. it a break for, for, for the this next, next one. one. Yeah, yeah, no, no, yes, it was true. lovely actually. Getting your brain in Lovely for listening to you talking about threads. <laughs> Right, so we are doing a, this quilt block. Talk oh, I'm excited about, about this. this. I, I love this, and, and we're going to use a technique called raw edge appliqueing. And once you've sort of discovered raw edge appliqueing, there's sort of no going back because it gives you so much freedom to do lots of different things for quilting as you want. You know, you can use it for, you know, quilt. Obviously, we're using it today to quilt around the edges of these lovely butterflies in all the in all the beautiful Liberty fabrics. And Alice is a. Um, Done it in a rainbow so that you've got it from the darks up to the moving up all to the, the way through. Things. She's obsessed with rainbows as well as Liberty Fabric. That's oh, that. really? Alice's that's thing another thing. Yeah, it's all about it's all about <laughs> rainbows. Well, you see in the rosy floor cushion behind you, which is one of the this projects. This is the one the that book. I grabbed earlier. I just oh, we need to do that on the show. I just love it. It's gorgeous. <laughs> um, but with the so, what is raw edge applique for someone that doesn't know? Raw edge applique is when you you've got your raw edge. So we've cut out our butterfly here, um, and I'll show you a bit more. You know how to do that shortly. Um, and so this is your raw edge. So you're not tucking it under. So it's yeah. basically a raw edge. And then you are appliqueing around the outside. So it ends up like this. So it, will that fray in time, you know, over if you've got what Well, you've got I've used here. Bonder Web on this one. So oh, or right, some okay. kind of fusing. Or you can use spray glue or um, you can use this um, uh, solvent-free glue. Okay. I, I think sort of some kind of fusing. That, I don't know if you sell it on yes, here. Yeah, so some kind of so yeah. some kind of bond web, and then you would, and then that would stop it from fraying. So you've got the combination of the fusing and and the, the whole ridge appliqueing. Yeah, appliqueing. So that basically keeps it fast to hold it all in. Yeah. So the quilt block is this? Uh, how complicated is this? Is this a fairly? Um, I think you need to you need to practice. Well, the quilt block itself is just what you can see from here. So it's um, the actual block is is a, a backing fabric. Yeah. And it's called a quilt sandwich, actually. So you've got your, your backing fabric, then you've got your wadding, and then which you, you'll need to get, and then your top fabric. So the actual quilt block, I think you need to practice your raw edge appliqueing before you launch Don't straight, straight onto, onto Liberty. Liberty. And I think, you know, when I when I show you, I'll be going really slowly, because the key is to go really slowly. There's no, well, there's there's no prices as well speak. in those butterflies too, so you yeah. just need to make sure. Yeah, well, the raw edge appliqueing, and the, well, we'll show on the free motion quilter's foot that actually you're in control of it, but it does it, it does require a little bit of practice. Okay. So in the in the bundle, you don't get the wadding. That's the only thing you need to add to this quilt block. But you do get all of your Liberty fabrics for this rainbow of butterflies. Um, you've also got there. You can see your instructions. You've got the white fabric too for the backing and for the front of the um for the front of the quilt block. So everything there, you need to make it just adding the wadding. And that's what it looks like at the end with that binding on as well. I know, it's lovely, the binding. And the binding that's picks all up included. the fabric. In, yes, the binding's all included. It picks up the fabric in that cute little... This one This here. is one of the most popular Liberty fabrics. It's called Wiltshire. And it's one of the uh, most popular Liberty fabrics. People go crazy for it. It's oh, another one of those one. sort of iconic traditional ones. Like the Betsy, ones. is that the one you said? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, if half the stock of this has already gone before oh. we even started the demonstration. <laughs> oh, I know, we should probably get started. Um, so, so how do we start this one then? So we start, I'll, I'll need my glasses for this. Okay. <laughs> Post 40, need my glasses. So, <laughs> I wear glasses, that's fine. Oh, see. oh yeah. it's all right then. So we, oh, it's very simple actually, the first stage. So you would just, can you, can you see what I'm doing on the thing? So I do it upside down. I might be able to get a close up on so that. So all you do is you draw around your pattern, and all these patterns are provided in the pack. So um, they're, and they're all exact size, so you haven't got to resize them or anything on the photocopier. So you just cut them out, and they're all numbered to make it easy. Oh, so you haven't even got to scale those up and down. You've got you haven't got to scale them up and down. They're all the exact size in the in the pattern that you get. So you would just draw around the outside of it, and then you transfer that onto the fabric. And I don't know how familiar people will be with. Bondo, I, love, I love a bit of Bondo web. Bondo web. <laughs> 
There's Bonder Web on the website if you do need to use that, um, if you do want to use that for... Um, yeah, there are, there are various on. different methods. And yeah, so, you, so I said you can use spray glue or, um, or other kinds of fixings, really. Would freezer paper work for this? Uh, yes, I, yes, it would work, yeah. Okay. Right, so I've drawn around that. And then we're going to just snip it roughly so that we don't waste our, our fusing. And then we are going to fuse that onto the fabric. Did you get the iron out? Oh, yes. <laughs> I need to be thinking one step ahead on these things, don't no, I? Is it actually switched on? We'll go a step at a time. It's, is it on? It's, it's, yeah, it's on. on. It's on. So you can incorporate this into a cushion, couldn't you? You can make it into a cushion. You could do. You could choose a, make a big quilt and have one in each corner, and then sort of do all kinds of intricate you could designs. Do multi, in the you could have multiple. You could yeah. have multiple ones. Yeah. So you would get enough fabric in the quilt block to um, to make one, but you would. If but you had you, more kits, you, you could, could actually do. use the butterflies again and again, obviously, because you know once you've got the pattern, you've got yeah. the pattern. So we iron that onto there. Yeah, you'd need more fabric, obviously, and then we would cut around that. Let's just roughly cut it now. This is going to show how steady my hand is now, isn't it? <laughs> Your Nan's scissors are really good. They're sharp scissors, aren't they? Yeah. Well, <laughs> I think there's a technique to using them. I could, they could do with a bit of a sharp sharpening. <laughs> I love her, I love the fact that she used these. Oh yeah, that's fifty I think years that's, ago. That's amazing. I love that. Did your nan teach you to sew? No, she didn't. My, my mum and my dad actually taught me to sew. I, I, I dared to mention before that it was my dad who taught me to sew. My mum got very cross with me. <laughs> so it's both. Hi, mum and dad. She said, I think both. you'll find that I taught you a lot about. <laughs> I made my wedding dress, she said. I made all my... Really? Yeah, she so, did. So they're both into sewing? Yeah, not so much anymore. My dad used to make all the curtains in the house and things. You know, it's just... I don't think they, they don't make things anymore, to be honest with you. There. No. Those days of gardening. It was when we were little as kids. Mum used to make quite a lot of our clothes, actually. And I, I don't think I appreciated this when I was on last time. <laughs> Is it worth getting some of those projects out from the book while I'm oh, yes. faffing around with this? Oh, yeah, good idea. So we've got some of, the, some of the projects that you can see. Oh, look at these. Look at these. Um, in this, uh, the Little Lady Liberty book. So this is, um, this is by um, Alice Caroline. There's so lots of different books in there, as I'm, um, different projects in there, as I mentioned at the beginning. There's over and 20 projects. Yeah. And some, you've bought some of those in today, haven't you? I have, yeah. Look at these. I'd have loved this. I'd have, I know, I'd they're gorgeous, aren't they? Look at this little bag. Lovely little it's girly so bag sweet. there. So sweet. And all the projects in the book are actually named after people that Alice knows. Oh, that's a nice I idea. I know, after little girls. So one oh, named after they? my after daughter. Oh, really? It's, uh, What's your daughter's name? Lily. Lily. Oh, I've got to have to make Hi, Ethan, as well. You'll get really upset. <laughs> you keep missing <laughs> So you missed out your mum, you missed out your son. You've got to make that good yeah. option them all. That one there. That's that fabric that I loved earlier. Oh, it is. About a dress. It looks fab in that, doesn't it? So there's a little skirt. There's all of the instructions in the book for how to make the skirt. Yeah, and you, you know, you're, the world's your oyster with this, isn't it? With all these absolutely lovely. Just adding little know. bits of sparkle and. So that's in the in the book, the pattern for all of that and all of your instructions. Then you've also got another lovely little skirt. Oh, these are lovely. A little rah rah skirt there. Sweet, isn't it? Yeah. Who made these? Did you make Alice them? Made Alice them made all, them. Yeah. And then this. Look at this. This is fabulous, so. I'll show you this in it? the book. This is a reversible doll. So you've got this here, which is lovely, just like this, just this side on its own. But then also you can. She's she's now she's going out and doing something else. She's, she's got a different facial expression on. Change style. Let's check. So you've got this lovely little. She's got a hair in a bun in that one. Oh, they're just lovely. Look lovely sat on the bed. Absolutely gorgeous. It, it's and then the it's other sort of end a, a is traditional pigtails of time old, isn't it? That one. Yeah, it's very yeah very traditional. So this is all in the um, in the book. You've got all of your instructions for all of these different projects. These are just some of them. I'll show you in here. I don't know if we can find the doll actually. But you get all of your templates in here as well. You do, yeah. Oh, hair scrunchies. Here's the doll. So it's worth just saying. So I've cut out my butterfly. And then you just peel the backing off the uh, off the underweb, and then we're going to iron that onto the. Ooh. Then we're going to iron it onto the uh, onto the quilt block. Okay. So that here's just this is just the doll that I was just showing you. So all of your instructions in the book for making that reversible doll. So loads of different lovely projects in there. 
that's the Little Lady Liberty book, QOFW09. And lovely as a present as well, but just if you've got a, if you've got a grand a granddaughter or your own child and you want to make things for them, just the inspiration in there is oh, just... Oh, they're, they're lovely. There's so many. I've made about five or six of them. Do you make things for Lily? Them. Have you made things in I there? I have made them? five or six. Well, I've made the one that she's been named after, the Lily Duvet set, which is Let's quite a lot of one. Liberty fabric. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lily's got expensive taste. <laughs> Lily's has got expensive taste, yes. Oh, so that's the Molly purse. Then there was the... Um, then there's the so there's a Sophie quilt, which is named after Alice's daughter. Oh. I know, I love that about that's, it. Yeah, that's just, just something so personal, isn't it? And as well, the bags that we had in this morning, so the um, the Catherine bag and the Sarah tote, Sarah tote, sorry, so, they're yes, named after people in the office. They in are your, named in after your, people yeah. in the office. All very lovely people. In the people. Alice Caroline office. Yeah. Everything's thought about. All very thoughtful. It is. It is. That's so I've ironed those onto the... The quilt okay. block. So let's just recap that. So you um, popped the bonder web on, then yep. you've peeled that off, and then you've in, just yep. then you've. I've just fused it on. You've just fused that on. So that should keep your edges. You know, you're asking about whether your edges would fray. Yeah. So that should keep your edges all nice and neat. There we are. And in terms of the on. placement of the butterflies onto the block, there's a pattern. I, uh, have you got the pattern here? I... We'll grab one. So it's all number coded. Um, as you can see from this one, it's got the number six on it. So there's a there's a there's a pattern in the in the pack which says put number six here. I mean, actually, you could order it however you wanted to. Yeah. You could do them all around the outside, but as you can see from the pattern, if we if we manage to get it on. Shall I just grab that? <coughs> Thank you. Let's see in here. So these all will be numbered. So inside, this is how your um, the, the pack arrives. You can see that you've got all of your Liberty fabrics inside for all of the different butterflies, all your different sizes there. And inside the kit, you've got your instructions. Yep. You can just see that. And then you've also got inside, within that, you've got um, obviously your instructions here. You've got your templates for all of the butterflies. And here it is. This is what you were talking about. Yep. This is uh, showing you the placement of where yeah. you can pop all of those different butterflies. But and there's nothing to say that you have to do it like that. You may want to put them around the edges of a quilt block or put them around... The, you could actually... Um, Pick out your butterflies and put them all around a bigger quilt, couldn't you? If you yeah, if you, to. you don't have to even put them into one into that size no. square, I suppose. But yeah, they're all of there. All of those are on this instruction set here. If you do want to replicate the exact quilt block um, that Anna's doing this morning, right. So what do we so do? So we're ready to do all red appliqueing. Now it's ideal to use a free motion quilter's foot for this which um, I've got attached onto the sewing machine. I don't know if you can see it, um, but it, basically it gives you the freedom to move the um, quilt block wherever you want to. So you yeah. are basically, you've I've dropped the feed dog, which, are the, which is the bit at the bottom, yeah, which and feeds it through. Um, and it basically gives you the freedom to do the length and the direction of the stitch. Yourself. Yes, which needs a bit of practice, because obviously, <laughs> if you're in control of both the length and the direction, it could You've go got anywhere. You've in control, that means you <laughs> and have if you, got to be in control. And if you don't move it anywhere, it doesn't go anywhere. No. You're like, why isn't it moving? <laughs> oh, it's because it's there. So, you're basically, so what I do is I grab both edges of the quilt block and that basically means that you're in, that you're in control because you, you have to feed it through yourself, which I'm tugging here, so okay. you have to pull it here. And I've got to make sure it's on that tortoise. Yes. The key to this is so to go slow. We're going slow. slowly. It's a slider on the machine. We're going towards the I mean, the as you get, you know, as you, as you, as you practice, um, um, you know, it'll become easier. You might have to talk me through some of this bit because I have to concentrate doing this. That's okay. So you're just following the edge of the butterfly. I'm going as close to the edge as I possibly can. And what I'm grabbing it as, a, as a guide it. for that. Are you just doing it by sight? I'm doing it by sight. That's why I need my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'm basically doing it by sight. I mean, it's a bit more tricky if you've got um, a background, a darker background, if you're using a pattern background. But because we've got a white background, it's see. actually, you can see what you're doing. You can use that sort of gap in the foot, can't you, to you see can. where you're... Yep. And as you can see, I'm going super slowly. You can actually do a, a, um, a, a number one quilter's foot. So you're not quilter's foot, the regular foot. The regular foot. foot. So you can... I, I, I quilted the rest of it with this because I couldn't actually find my one for my, my sewing machine at home. <laughs> <laughs> Slightly mislaid it, you know, which is always a bit of a bind. But... Um, Jay was brilliant and found me one this morning, so that's great. But as you can see, it's, a, it's not a fast process. No. But I think it, it, because you go slowly, I think it, it, it sort of benefits the, the sort of finish of it. Could you do this by hand? You can. You can, you, you can do it by hand with a, with a blanket stitch. It'd look rather nice, actually. 
Yeah, lots of people. I, I've got a very, not a very neat hand stitch, actually. I can slip stitch is fine, but my hand stitch is really not right very... <laughs> it was but, not the neatest. No. I mean, as I was saying earlier, I'm not the tidiest of sewers. <laughs> and uh, I try... Alice is she's always telling me off for not being so tidy. <laughs> <laughs> but as you can see, it, it's a time... It's always a time consuming thing, but once you've, once you've mastered the sort of process, you can cut out any shape and you can put it onto a child's t shirt, you can applique anything onto anything really. And, and if you a, were a real beginner, you could just fuse it onto the fabric with a bond web. You don't have to do the raw edge applique, you know, that's, that's an additional step. Obviously, it looks lovely and you get that lovely um, yeah, it wouldn't feel last, to it, but it doesn't have the. It wouldn't last over time if you did it just with the bond web, I don't think. It do, no. It, it, you do need the combination of the stitching to hold it in uh, place. To hold it, yeah. See, I've gone around half a butterfly now. I promise I won't do them all. That's why I did <laughs> half of them before. Because obviously, you know, <laughs> it would be very boring watching me just do this all the time. I love the fact that this sewing machine's got a snail, a, and a, yeah, tortoise a tortoise and a hare. It's a tortoise, isn't it? Yeah, here. That's a... So if you were watching earlier this morning, we had um, two different charm pack uh, squares on. The purple one has now sold out, so they're two and a half inch squares, um, which we were incorporating into like a little mini cushion and a toiletry bag. We have still got some stock of the pink ones, um, which is this set here. I don't know if we've got any open, but um, these are two and a half inch squares of those Liberty fabrics. Those have got some iconic prints in there, all in that Tana lawn. So you could incorporate those into a quilting project. You could do that chain piecing and make um, the toiletry bag or the mini cushion. But these pink ones, there are, is still some stock of those, 36 in this pack. A, L, B, Y, 92, and that's 9.95. Well over half of that one has gone, but just so you're aware, you can still add that to your basket if you want to. Also, a stock update on which ones? The butterfly quilt block, how's that? Oh, is it? <laughs> Less than 10 remaining. Oh, <laughs> so, I mean, it'll, it'll sold out by the time I get around the edge of... So, so more people with those in their baskets than we have available. If you do want that, please do check it out. And PVBY31, everything you need in there to make this quilt block, except the wadding and the batting, or batting, whatever you call it. Um, so just need to add that to your um, to the kit. But you get the, uh, the binding, all those Liberty fabrics for the butterflies, your instructions, and the main white fabric for the body of the quilt block too. And then the, one other thing, the Catherine bag from earlier, we've still got some stock of that. That was the one, again, which was um, scaled up uh, chain piecing. You can see that there with the beautiful purple Liberty fabrics. That had the uh, really cool uh, Visaline um, interface <coughs> handles with that lovely sort of gripped um, interfacing. And it's got the hot pink lining with that one and the sturdy bag base so it stands up on its own. R-E-B-Y 24. That's the Catherine tote. Named by... So who's Catherine? Alice Campbell. Catherine's the um, operational manager. Operational manager, Catherine. She makes got. everything happen. <laughs> by, by magic. She's got a bag that named <laughs> after her. Yeah. It's a, and I think it's the lovely bag. It's a, it such a, a nice bag. bag. And the canvas tote is just about to sell out. Sell, sell out. Sell out. <laughs> the uh, Sarah tote. So if you have got that one in your basket, um, you might need to be quick. I think we've got very limited stock on that. And who's Sarah? Sarah is the lovely lady in the studio who also makes everything happen. I think <laughs> I'm the person who doesn't make anything happen. You, but, you do. Know. You do make this happen. You just sew the butterfly. So, yeah, we've gone around the edge of the butterfly. And um, obviously you need to get used to your sewing machine and whatever it does. Um, and certainly the feed dog is, is, yeah. does take some practice. But um, you can see we've gone around the edge of this butterfly in probably five minutes. Do we think it's less than probably that, less than say. five minutes? Yeah, you can just see here. <clears throat> So by doing that stitching on the Royal Jupiter, it's giving it that longevity. It's going to yes. give it that strength. And yeah. Stability. So you can you. I don't think a, big, a zigzag stitch looks as looks as smart. Um, the straight stitch looks quite good, but the but the blanket stitch um, does you look really nice on it. You can see it more nice actually on, on, um, <coughs> on one maybe one of these green ones where you can see the thread standing out a little bit more, just to see around the edges. <coughs> Do you want me to do another one to show you, or do you want me to, to move also, on? What, what, what would the next step be? You would just repeat that for all of the butterflies. You do that for all of the butterflies. Yeah. It, you know, it's a really nice thing that you can sort of pick up one evening when you've got, you know, five minutes to spare, or, you know, or, or ten minutes to spare, and you could do do one an evening. Couple of or butterflies. Or you could, you know, if you're a hardcore sewer, you spend. I mean, it would take you probably a couple of hours to wore a duplicate and do all of that to on, do all on of one quilt block, I think, unless you're unless you're uh, a whiz. A whiz. <laughs> and as you can see, I'm, I, I like to go slowly. Um, so yeah, and then you and then you can either bind it as 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 the pack has got. You've yeah. got your binding, which is that lovely Wiltshire. And that comes in the bundle. It comes in the bundle. Or if you want to turn it into something bigger, I mean, this makes a lovely wall hanging in a girl's bedroom, or 
doesn't it? I just think it's lovely. It's just to hang it up, absolutely. Yeah. Like, we've got a quilt here, actually, that was um, that's all those mm -hmm. Liberty prints as well. That's a Tree of Life quilt. It's lovely, isn't it? And they do work really well just as a yeah. wall hanging. It's sort of an art feature. Yeah, they do. And then you can turn it into whatever big project or small project or cushion cover or whatever you fancy, cushions, really. Cushions, I think, really lovely I think cushions. it really suits a, a cushion. I think yeah. Alice designed it originally as a cushion, but obviously you, you, know, can, use it. you can use it for things. whatever you want to, really. So this is about to sell out. We've only got three of those left in stock, oh. but you get all of those uh, Liberty fabrics for the butterflies themselves. You get the uh, Liberty fabric for the binding. You get the white fabric <coughs> for the main body of the quilt block and all of your instructions. Everything in there for 20 95 PVBY31. So um, we've also got a clutch bag in this hour. I don't yeah. know where if we've got that. Oh, it's here. So you made this previously, didn't you, um, on a show, but in a different colour combination. Yep. So was it, that was a pink one. Diana sent in a picture this morning, actually, of one that she'd it made. It was, um, that was a patchwork one. A patchwork. And that was in the, ex the Alice Caroline exclusive fabrics, you know, the ones I was telling you about that earlier. You, have, but... you can't get anywhere else. Yeah, I know. That's, and so that's quite exciting. But actually this, I think this one is amazing, because look at the fabric. Oh, you've changed oh, your I shoes. Oh, I have changed my shoes. I meant to bring them I in. I have had matching <laughs> shoes on. <laughs> if somebody can race to the dressing room, they can go and get my <laughs> shoes. I don't think they went with my dress, my, uh, my no. Tresco <laughs> trainers. <laughs> But this fabric's called Tresco, not, not Tesco, it's something called Tresco. Tresco. <laughs> Tresco. And it was designed as the, the Liberty um, design team went up to um, oh, some island somewhere and looked at all the gardens on, look, and they did all this uh, sort of drawings of all the beautiful gardens. All oh, this beautiful, all the sort of foliage and the flowers. And yeah. you can just see that here. It's a really bright, it's really, um, bright, really bright, vibrant. Bright, it's one of the most print. popular prints that we sell. So this Tresco clutch, it comes with everything you need to make this. And inside, there's also a lovely lo uh, Liberty fabric there. I don't know if you can see that one. You, again, need your wadding for this. Before we even start, a quarter of the stock of this is already oh. gone. ZUBY68, you can see there everything, including the zip, um, including your, uh, that clip hook to pop on the side for the handle and all of your fabric for the lining. And this is canvas, isn't it, this bottom section? It's linen. It's linen? It's linen. Oh, it's linen. <laughs> this isn't a Liberty print. But this it, is it's, a solid sort of... It's a lovely yeah. solid linen fabric. Oh, it's, and it's lovely. I, I love the, the colour matching that Alice has done on this. So how do we do this one then? So I've got bits and pieces here. Um, so you get everything in this pack apart from your wadding again. So, so all of them actually, you just need to add wadding and batting. You do so need to add yes, wadding all batting. All what do you do. call it? Wadding. Wadding. Well, actually, you can call it either. Yeah, there's a bit of a debate, isn't there, or you're wadding or batting. Yeah, so um, what should we do first? So what let's you do, do yeah, first... Yeah, let's do the whole process for this one. So you get your... You obviously have to cut your fabric out to size. Yeah. And then you would get your Liberty fabric, so your Tresco fabric, and then you would attach it... Excuse me a second. And then you would attach it to your linen. to your linen. That's a quarter inch seam. That is. And again, <laughs> you would for this. Obviously, with this one, we've used a matching thread. You can see because there's a top stitch on here, and I'm going to be doing that top stitch in a minute. But I'm going to it's be doing a different cream, thread, and it will look a bit <laughs> naff. But it obviously, just you so you need can to, see. And on the handle, you'll need to get a green matching thread. Well, you just had. Yeah, we have some Gutemann, had those Gutemann the ones. Goose Gutemann threads. Or so on the cotton ones, the Aurofil, there's a green um, oh, yes. Aurofil set. Yes, so um, you, you probably need to get a matching thread because it will look a bit rubbish with cream. <laughs> At least you'll be able to see it. That's the, um... <laughs> you will be able to see it. So, yeah, so we're sewing this at a quarter inch seam. I really like that this has um, got wadding in it. It just gives it that really lovely soft... It has a soft sort of oh, feel to it. See, now I've done the uh, thing. Oh, we've got the foot. We've got the other got foot the, on. And, I've, and I haven't done the feed dog. Feed well. Why isn't it going anywhere? Oh, that's for <laughs> the feed dog. So you need to make sure when you're saying normally, you return it to normal. You return your feed dog back to normal. I always get caught out. Oh, so <laughs> what's my sewing machine doing now? Blame the machine. It's always, well. always the machine's fault. It's not. It's always the maker. <laughs> it's always me. Oh, I'm on, and I'm on snail. We need to go a bit faster now. Now we're not on raw applique. We, we can move to the hair. We can, we can move to the hair. So what's the seam allowance on this? Quarter inch. Quarter inch. Most of Alice's seam allowances are a quarter inch. Um, and she always says if it's otherwise. Okay. And then we would press this. We've got time for pressing today, haven't we? For this yeah. Up, for this. Let's need our quilt block. And you would always press to the darker side, although actually this one needs to go... Normally you'd press to the dark side. Why is that? So that it doesn't show. Oh, so that they're yeah. on the other side. But because this is a heavier weight fabric, this linen, 
it's, um, it's, it's better to press it upwards, otherwise you'll get a, a bit of a clump. Okay, so that's that. Trim that off. Down the scissors go. And then we need to add our wadding, which okay. is here. So we're going to go for a bit of a sandwich with the... Well, the sandwich, yes. <laughs> we love the sandwich. Um, and then so we you cut that to size just a little bit bigger, actually? Cut it a little bit bigger, yeah. You said earlier you prefer to I do, do that. quite like to cut a bit bigger. Um, and then trim down. And then we're going to um, sew along here at a quarter inch seam allowance. Along so you're just going to top stitch that? Yeah. Just, yeah. Again, it's just giving it that, it's another element, it's another dimension. And because it has got wadding, it gives it that yeah. nice sort of feel. Well, it fixes it to the wadding, but it also, yeah, you're right, it's quite a nice little, it's like a nice little effect, detail. Isn't it? With yeah. And actually, when you feel the finished bag, it feels fab, doesn't it? This, it, this, I'll tell you what, when you do feel it, you do really notice that silkiness of the, um, of the Liberty fabric. Yeah. It really does have such a, <clears throat> silk is the only word really to describe it. It's it is. just so soft. We're just sewing all the way along. I don't think that cream looks that bad, you know. Is it not? No. Mm -hmm. Well, because I think that the background fabric's um, cream. I mean, for the rest of it, you could use you could use a cream, but um, obviously for the for the detail on the uh, teal linen, yes. it's quite a fab colour that teal linen, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's a sort of really deep. Well, we've had a message in from Sharon. Morning, Sharon. Who's Oh, what was the last time when we had um, had you in? Do you? It, second of July, I second think. Second of July. See, look at that. I can remember. Um, so, second of July. If you want to rewatch the show, you can do that on YouTube, and um, you'll be able to see. And um, you made this bag, didn't you? But in a the yes. patchwork version, in a different yes, colourway. Yes, I did. So, um, what did I show on the last show? I showed the zip. I'm, in fact, I'm going to. If I've got time today, I'll show that again. Um, what else did you make that day? That, that day. Oh, uh, what else did I make? May, uh, <laughs> a patchwork uh, cushion, I'm being a told. Cushion. Yeah, a patchwork cushion, thank you. <laughs> At least your uh, Mitzi Star cushion. Oh, that's fab because that uses um, that uses um, your eight inch, uh, your eight square triangles, oh, the half square okay. triangles in the. Uh, yeah, that, so there's some good there's some good sort of quilting techniques in that. Um, in, in that, that show. In that show. Yeah. That was the sun, second of July. Yes, it was a oh, Sunday. Gosh, I, the I can't July. even remember. Like, lots How of things awful happen is that? between now and then. So yes, um, that's if you if you did want to watch watch that back, you can go on YouTube and all of the shows are on there. And you can click through as well to certain hours. So if you look in the drop down um, underneath the YouTube feed, you can go to you can sort of fast forward to whichever hour you want to watch, depending on which um, project or which designer you want to see. Yeah, I made six things that those six two hours things. as well. I can't, you know, I can only obviously have run out of two of them. Speedy Gonzales. There was some a bags travel in bag? there. Was there a travel bag? No, there was a bag. There was a, there was a Caroline. Cl oh, yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> but we're doing. They're the all very lovely <laughs> again. But this time in, the, in that different in that Tresco um, yeah. Liberty fabric, <clears throat> and it's combined with a linen this time round. So then we're adding our Visaline onto the back. And this gives it body. So you've got your so you've got your um, quilt block, and then you've got. The visoline on the back. Okay. So what's that for? It's just to give it a bit more body. Mm. So you've got your, because um, as, as you can feel with it, it's it's really sort of quite sturdy. I think with a clutch bag, it needs to be well, you a bit more sturdy. Yeah, lots of things in there. Well, and it, I suppose it's an evening thing. You don't want it to flop, do you? I always think this sort of bag is a thing you would take um, maybe to a wedding. Oh, it's or lovely, if you're out yeah. an evening on holiday, you know, if you're just going down for dinner or you're going, you don't want to take lots of things. Because I don't know what you're like. But if I take a big bag, I will fill it. I'll just put things oh, in no, for that's the sake perfect. of it. Got... This, this limits me to probably purse, sunglasses, phone, lipstick. What do you reckon? That's all you, need. Glasses, that's all you need for my tag. You don't need glasses to read the menu. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> These days, <laughs> that's what you've in there. Um, so we've had an, an email in as well from let's see, <clears throat> uh, from Beverly. Good morning, Beverly. Um, morning, loving the fabrics. I'm glad you are too because I'm in love with these fabrics. Is the wool hanging Alice Caroline too? This one? Yes. It is. That is the Tree of Life pattern. We could have that on a show, actually. We've, um, yeah, we yeah, should it definitely make a, do that. I mean, it's the this same technique as, well. as the raw Beautiful. edge applique. This is basically exactly the same t technique as, as the butterfly quilt block. But um, in the... Yeah, it's gorgeous, isn't it? Producer Hannah saying in my ear, I'm going to try. I'm going to try and get that in. She's so going to get that, it in. That on a show. That is beautiful. Yeah, is that it's in lovely. Any, um, that's not in the book. No, obviously that's not in the book. No, it's, it's not. Project. You can get that on our website, but I mean, obviously it would be great if we could get it on We here. want it here. We need it yeah. here. We'll, uh, we'll sort that out for you, Beverly. <laughs> <laughs> trim so then we're just going to trim down again. And, um, and that's basically one side of your 
Let's go clutch. Lovely. So we would repeat that then. You'd so you repeat that for the other that. side. Iron yeah. into place. So we've got the um, fabric, you've got your wadding and that um, interfacing there. Yep. And you basically repeat that on the other side. And then oh, you make your handle. Again. We can see it again. Yeah, you can see it again. Okay. Yeah. Over so, half of these have gone now. Oh. I know. <laughs> what can see for the last 10 minutes? We'll have to you know, add it. <laughs> so we go, we really want to see the technique, so it's fine. <laughs> so we've got this folder band again, which is, which is you know, the... the the product of, of the so day and it was the product I didn't see this earlier can we just show this yeah. so you can see so this um folder band it's got um sort of little notches already in it and what that enables you to do is just to fold those inwards when you iron them to create the handle so it's really it's, it's such a simple product but really does Who make it easier yeah people it's sitting at their desks working out these planning, things i know genius yeah <laughs> so we, we do you use this for all your bag handles we do now because yeah. we've only just discovered it about <laughs> uh, I think it we, I think the first thing that we used it on was the last show oh the, the Catherine <coughs> yeah on the and um, and the um the last show that we were on oh. so on the Caroline clutch from the last show because I, and I think the reason we discovered it was because we'd um we used to get our webbing from a a, a, a supplier in France and they'd run out <laughs> like panic mode <laughs> how are we going to fulfill almost the, by accident then yeah you kind of yeah yeah so um I suppose that's what Alice is really good at, is finding the right. It's funny, isn't it, how you discover yeah. things just, you know, not when you're not, when you're not looking for it. It's actually, that, was, that yeah. was a problem that turned yeah. into something. Yeah. So I've, I've done a half inch extra, can we see? So I've done a half inch extra over the edge of the, hold that. Of the uh, folder band. Okay. And then we've pressed it in, because that's because we want one neat edge. And then as, as before, we're folding in our edges and pressing them. So folding in that narrow edge first. Yep. You do that either side. You do that either side. And you do actually need quite a hot iron to do it because as you can see it just pings back up again, but it does it does work. And then you you fold in this side. Would it would you use a damp cloth for this or you, you could, do, could yeah. do, yeah. Yeah, you could do. To be honest with you, it doesn't really matter because by the time you get in to the middle, you've got your it gives a nice sharp edge as well, doesn't it? It gives you that crisp sort of... Um, it does. Not a wonky edge. No, rather than it being... Yeah. Yeah, wonky. Because it's all done by computers. It's a nice... A nice... Rather um, than the eye. Sort of straight line. <clears throat> yeah. So there with that. And this is, this is the basis to make both the D-ring clasp handle. You use oh, the... Oh, yes. You use some of the side <clears throat> section too. Yeah. So this is the part we're making at the moment. I don't know if you can just see here this loop um, section. I but made the has... D-ring on the last show, on the 2nd of July. So you can see that and how that's done on there. It's a really professional finish. I like that on there. It looks very, um, you know, there's no way you wouldn't think that that wasn't something you could buy in a shop. It's yeah, really exactly. smart. And it is smart. I think it's uh, the details, and you'll see on the zip in a minute where we're going to hide the ends of the zip. The metal, uh, the metal attachment as well, I just think adds another... Oh, it's nice. It's really nice, oh, That's it? detachable, so you could take that off and you could just take it... You could. Um, to sort of take it on the go, yeah. like that, and then if yeah. you want to have the... to hang around your wrist. Do you like a handle on a bag? I do. You do. I, well, I so like the handle on a big bag. I, personally, I probably wouldn't hang that around my wrist. I would have that without... The, I would... You could make it without. I would hold it like that. You would. Like this. What would you, you do? It goes well nicely with your top. Mm, greens. Oh, don't say that because I might have to... <laughs> Might it go missing it, at the yeah, end of the show? Some might go missing. No, I love it. I do really love it. So, what, yeah, what would you would you hang that on your wrist then? I don't generally hang a bag on my wrist. I don't wrist. I don't think. But no. it's But it's something. But you could hold I, it. I, I would hold it. Yeah, in my hand. just like that. Just yeah. hold it like that. I would hold it. And also, you can hang it in your wardrobe if you have um, and just pop that on hangers. You know, for like accessories. Yes. Now this is the point where, obviously, it would look terrible because I've got cream thread. Red. <laughs> but we're edging it along the end. So this is the end that I folded in. Actually, I've got my pin around the wrong way now. And so you're edge stitching it. So you had a half inch at either end that you... that you Half an inch half at either inch. end. Yep, so this one is still raw. That one is tucked in. Nice and neat. Yep. So we'll cut off our ends there. Do you need a different foot for this? Because obviously by this point it's starting to get a bit thicker, isn't it? You, it's 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 more the needle. I don't. I wouldn't use a different foot, but it is it is it is catching a little bit because it is quite thick. You could probably just have to sort of feed it through and uh, maybe lift it up a bit. And, and so it's only in the corners where you've got the 
So maybe you would change your needle once you've done both sides of the bag for this thicker yeah. section. You could just go for. Oh, it does. It is doing it. Is, it, it is doing it. It's got a little bit stuck at the end there, but obviously you can. Depends on your sewing machine what what your what it's capable of really. I'm honestly not just saying it. I actually really like the cream stitching. Do you? Yeah. No, you think it gives it a. I do. I, I just think because you can see it, it's it's visible. You can see it as well on here. I don't know if you can see on the bag itself. I, don't, I just think it adds something else. Do you? Yeah. I think because it, it picks contrast. out this cream in the back of the Liberty fabric. I don't think. Yeah, maybe you're just used to seeing it in the green. So you're like, oh, it looks horrible. I'm used to matchy matchy. <laughs> yeah. um, everything else it does matches. Look, it does look smart. It's just different. But yeah, it on is. camera, it's nice for us to be able to see what the. Um, where the thread's going. So you would go down the other side as well, but I, I won't I won't today. Okay. But um, just so that you can see how it's made. And I've got one here. Can you see that? So at this point, we're going to go for a fold. Is that what happens next? We're going for a fold. And we've got our smart edge. And you've got... See, we're never, I'm not very good at doing things upside down. What shall I try? If you can. If not, don't worry. We can... So we've got our... Uh, what's it? The, the clip. Yeah. So that's the D ring, and then we've got the clip here. So we're butting this up through the end here. And we're butting it up against this the neat edge, and then we're going to use this raw edge, and then we are going to fold it up and over. Okay. Can I just show me. that? Is that okay? And you might want to do it a bit further along, depending on your sewing machine. You might want to. So you want that of, quite tight. You want it quite tight and quite and straight. Just... And that is quite thick, so you're saying you will need yeah, to... Yeah, um, quite a few layers, isn't yeah. it? Just if you didn't see, I'll just see if we can do that on a close-up. So if you've got this raw edge here, you're just popping the hook um, over the edge of that raw edge, here like that. So that this is the raw edge there. Let me try and lift that. Then you're going to... You folded that in twice, didn't you? So in, yeah. and then over again. Yeah. And then you're... Mm -hmm. that in there so then you've got that quite thick section there to sew through so this is the point at which you might want to change your needle and um, just to go through all of those layers but obviously then you've got some nice you've got nice security there for the hook so you know it's going to be nice and secure and strong okay great so i won't i won't do that okay I th so I that's think gonna, that, that will end up that like will that. end up like that like we've got three <laughs> got three <laughs> so it will end up looking like this and then you can, as you say, you can either attach it to your D-ring yep. or you can not. Let me show you And the, the, the loop as well is just the same, using that interfacing, yep. that special trick interfacing to make the, uh, the band. Yep. Um, so you get all of that in the kit. You've got the interfacing, you've got the uh, zip there, you've got the D-ring, the actual metal clasp itself. You've got the Liberty Tresco fabric, you've got the lining fabric, the linen, and you've got all of your instructions too. ZUBY68. I'm being told it's worth checking out your basket on this because it's very, very popular and it's $24.95. So we can show you the D-ring here. So it's basically exact, made in exactly the same way as the handle. So you've got the folder bands, yeah. you just iron it on and then you, put your, you fold it in half, put your D-ring on and sew it onto the end. So you can keep those as raw edges with the d yep. bag. You didn't have to do those neatening nope. half inch at the edge. Yeah, just keep okay. the raw edges, sew it in because that's actually sewn into the seam. Oh, so it's going to be hidden yep. anyway. Yep. Fab. So I just wanted to show you how we do the zip. As you can see, the zip's a bit long, so the zip that you'll get in the pack is too long for the project, but you can, what we're gonna do is we're gonna neaten the end of it, and then we're gonna we'll snip it, it off. Over. Yeah, well, we're gonna snip it off, actually, because you don't need it, actually. Oh, but sewn is, over. has that been chosen just because the colours match? It's been chosen because yeah. of the colours. This is Alice. So it's all about her colours. She, I'm not sure she'll go for your... Uh, Real the threads. No, Sorry, no. Alice. I'm not sure she's like, gonna go for that. What's she talking about? <laughs> but you can just see here that um, that sort of soft green zip there that just blends in really beautifully um, with the Tresco. It's quite unusual for it to, to have coloured zips, actually. It's really nice. It gives oh, it that nice finish. Yeah, Alice always use coloured zips, actually. And um, I think it, it does look nice, doesn't it? Keeps it nice and spring, spring and sort of summery film. We're doing this edge part here so you can get that nice neat finish and sort of casing the zip in. That's yeah. what you're about to do now. It is what I'm about to do. So what we do with the zip is we have, I think this is one and a half inches of fabric by one inch, which is the width of your zip. Okay. And we are just... Make, measuring nine inches apart, so nine inches, here we are, and then you want to make sure that your fold, try it out, because when you, when you fold it back, it needs to be folded back like that, so that's basically covering the ends of the zip, Yeah. as you can see Obviously on here. Obviously on one end it's not going to cover the end, is it though, because it's longer? 
Do you see it's, what I mean? Uh, well, you can see it on here. Oh, you right, can okay. see it, Yeah, because we're going to snip that off. Yeah. So you can see that instead of seeing the end of your zip in here, you've got the, you've got the Tresco fabric coming across. So it gives you that nice curve. It, it gives you the nice curve and it gives you the sort of detail of the, of the, of the finish rather mm. than seeing the end. You don't really want to sew the, 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 the zip the into your zip. seam. No. And you don't want to see the end, no. So all we're doing is sewing those. It gives it that freedom of movement as well, actually, because it's not going to jar right to the edge. You know, sometimes if you go too far, yeah, it exactly. has something for, for it to stop, somewhere for it to... Exactly. So we're just going to sew along there. Again, we're going to have to tug it through, I think. Some people are scared of zips. Do you think they're... Do you, how do you find them to work with? I, I think they're fine. I mean, mm. I, I've discovered invisible zips recently, which I was quite scared of. I was quite yeah. scared of invisible zips, but now... Did you, no. did, how did you find it if it was invisible? <laughs> <laughs> Love that. Oh, this is you what you're it? into, me, you isn't it? <laughs> I, don't, I lost it. <laughs> I, think that, <laughs> I think that's the point. You're all supposed to lose it. I, I did used to be very good at zips, but... Um, yeah, I think it's, it's all, all about sewing is just practice. It's all practice, 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 isn't it? Yeah, and, with um, it, as with anything. Exactly, as with anything. <laughs> but with finding invisible zips. Find yeah, <laughs> you won't need a big magnifying glass for that. <laughs> this is why we need our glasses, Anna. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right, at this point, you want to move your zip along because otherwise it will get caught. And you just need to make sure that you've, you're, you're tucking it in neatly, not uh, doing what I'm doing. And So, yeah. So you know you're cutting the zip. Which um, which end? Does it matter which end you cut? Obviously the cutting you've got this the end. <clears throat> it doesn't actually matter because no. it's basically you're sewing across it, so you're you're creating a stopper. So that's going to be your by end cutting anyway. across there. You are creating a, a sort of a stop for the zip. Well, we've had a question in. Let's see. Oh yeah. Um, Oh, this is from Sandra. Morning, Sandra. Um, can you buy the handle fusible binding separately, please? Um, we don't have that at the moment. It's that folding uh, fusible uh, bi um, <laughs> binding. Folder band. Yeah, folder <laughs> band. That's what I'm looking for. We don't have that at the moment. That's something that actually um, Alice Caroline's introduced to us. Um, but we're working on it. We're going to hopefully try and get some of that in stock because it's a great product. It, you know, it's, it it's is making, a great product. It's make, making bag handles much easier. Yeah, it it's, is. Just with that fold rather it, than doing all of your binding. Uh, yes, and there's no fiddle, is there? So we've got the, you can see we've got the neatness there, and then we will chop the zip off. Don't be scared, just chop. Just go for it. And then that will go into your seam allowance. So you actually the want zip. the fabric to go over the zip. That yeah. can be cut underneath. Yep. Yeah. So that, you're sewing, you're sewing the fabric into the seam allowance rather than the zip, because actually the zip can be quite bulky. Mm. So okay, yeah. keeping that nice and smooth. So yeah. So in fact, when I, when I was first doing this, I, I texted Alice to say, your zip's too long. <laughs> it's not right, you put the wrong one. She but said, what does she say? It's the right colour, though. It's the right colour. Yeah. It's always the right colour. So, yes, basically, and that's what we would sew into. Okay. Into so, how would we, so, obviously, if we had two of these, what order would you do it in? Would you do the D-ring and then you would do the zip? I don't, I don't, well, it's probably easier to do the D-ring first. Um, okay. I mean, it's all in the instructions. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, just follow the instructions, but it's easier to do the D-ring first because then you've got that tucked out of the way while you're putting your zip in. Yeah, okay. So, yeah. And then what would the next part be? The next part would be this, ta-da! <laughs> when it starts to be, a, <laughs> there now is a bag. <laughs> yeah, so we've, we've put the, the D-ring on and then we've got the... So basically I've pinned this zip from the last process onto one side. So it's the zip right, so side, right side down. Together. Yes, so it's the zip right side down and the, um, the bag. Right side up. Yeah. Yep. All of the construction as well is on that 2nd of July show, so if there's any element that you're not sure of <coughs> and that we might have sort of just skimmed through, you can go back and watch that one on YouTube just in case um, there's any that you're not sure about. Yeah. So we're changing our foot now. Changing our foot to a zipper foot. Which... So what does a zipper foot do? It enables you to get close to the zip. Because what a regular foot does... <clears throat> is you, you can't quite get so close to the zip. So it allows you to, to sew in here. To get really up tight yeah. and close against it. It does. I'm just going to have a little fiddle here because you need to move... What you need to do is you need to move the zip out of the way as well so that this... the pull on the zip... So moving it along <coughs> a little way so it's not going to get sewn in. Yeah. So then we'll pin that here. And so basically this is what you do for both sides of the bag. Yes. You would just do exactly the same. It's almost the same principle is um, 
you know the Catherine bag that we were the making earlier bag. because once you've once you've made both sides you then you are then attaching the lining I'll show you how to do attach you make the, the lining. lining separately or are you just attaching the lining to either <coughs> side we're attaching, attaching the lining either side so it's slightly different to that Catherine one in that you just do that as two sort of um rectangles rather than creating like a bagged a bagged effect when yes. you just pull it through yes well I'll show you we'll we will hopefully get time yes oh, wait. Ooh, yes ten to you're not going to do that three minutes five ish minutes Sorry, we're getting stuck on the end. Bear with me. When you start the zip, you have to sort of tug it through. That's it. Just a bit of tugging. So just feeding that through. Yep. Yeah. You're trying to sew it as close to the close to the zip as you can. And then when we go past this point, <coughs> I would always lift the lift the foot, slide oh, so that along, pass it through. so you're passing it. So you're through. not going to try and sort of go because otherwise it makes it that. go. Yeah. I used to do zips on my old granny Singer sewing machine. It's all about my granny today. With the scissors. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and uh, it obviously didn't have a zipper foot. And. Um, yeah, you used to have this wonk, you know, just where, where you, you'd like, you know, where you hopped around. The, yes, it's like a swerve in the road around, yeah. <laughs> around the zip. Yes. It's a chicane. Yes, just a wonk. Just a chicane on your on your foot. <laughs> oh yeah, we're just sewing the zip in here. And then I really hope we've got time to show the lining bit. I'm trying to finish projects. That's okay. We're nearly there. It's all good. <clears throat> so you can see there, we've got our zip in. And then what you do is you get your lining and again right side down you sort of sandwich your zip into okay. the lining and the, in between so your zip is in between the lining and the bag so you're going to flip that over <coughs> yeah for it then to be in the right place okay yeah. so we're going to be stitching to this top side of the zip that's closest to the top of the edge of the wadding yeah, yeah. you're going to basically just repeat exactly what we've done just with the lining i must just show you this lining fabric if you've not seen it. This is, a, this is one of our exclusives. It's lovely, right. isn't it? It's called it Jeans Meadow. Really lovely. So if you can see that there. What's it called? Jeans, Jeans Meadow. Meadow. I know, they've all got such nice names, haven't they? Just that <coughs> lovely sort of pastels and pinks and greens. And just works really well with that linen on the front as well. And then your Tresco underneath. Yeah, it's beautiful, isn't it? Really beautiful. Okay. So we'll... Oh, we've had a message in to see this cushion behind me. I, with <laughs> pleasure, I will show you this cushion. <laughs> Who is that from, Hannah? Let's see. Oh, oh, we don't have a name, but look <clears> at this gorgeous cushion. <laughs> the um, pat I just oh, I love it. The pattern for this is in the book. So if you um, if you want, if you like the um, the design of this, is in that. You can just see peeping in the corner here the Little Lady Liberty book. It's actually on the front of the book as well. Fab, all it? of the pattern in there for that. Oh, it's gorgeous. You're quite fond of that, aren't you? Got this on the back too. It is lovely, really lovely. I really am hoping that we do um, the. I'd like to do the quilt and the cushion. Ooh, well, we'll see what we can do. <laughs> I love this. You're giving us our ideas for the next show. <laughs> I'm just get, giving you more work. So we don't sell the Liberty Fabrics by the half metre at the moment, um, but, but, <coughs> but, well, the, the, hopefully when we have Alice Caroline in, we can, um, the Alice Caroline shows, we can do those quilts and cushions. Yeah, it'll be great to yeah, do. We really lovely. want to do a, a quilt next. Project. We want to do a big quilt project next. It just, it's all in the design time. Yes. Yeah, I mean, it's been a very <laughs> lengthy process. Yeah, the Alice tree of is, life. Well, she was very, um, the today's quilter thing, you know, um, she's done a, this amazing quilt it's called Summer Meadow Quilt in Today's Quilter, yeah. which is um, which is one of your magazines, isn't it? And yes. um, and it took a lot of design, and so she um, it doesn't just turn up, does it? It has to be done. It has to no. be made. And if you're and so basically that is why we've been slightly delayed in doing any design for anything else. But you know, when uh, <laughs> wrapped up in quilt land and doing <laughs> wrapped up in quilt land. So you can see here, we've basically got one side of the bag. <coughs> So Let's just show that, that was our then. So we've got so that was our right side down on top of the zip, and then when you flip it over, you can see. Lovely. When you open the zip up, you've you've got your. That's lining your lining, fabric. and then you would make the other side. I don't think we've got time, have we? But when you'd make so the, other the other side, side you so would this just is the do, other yeah. side. Yep. 
And so we do exactly the same on the zipper okay. on the other side. And then we would just attach those together. together. Yes. Do, do we have time show? to do that, um, Hannah? Well, we'll let you start sewing that and I'll look at these other, at the okay. other bags while you yeah, do great. those and then we might be able to get to the attaching yep. part. Um, so we also had, this morning, you might have seen at 8 o'clock, um, we had the lovely Catherine tote bag, which was, was Catherine the operations manager? Yeah. Operations manager at Alice Caroline. Um, so, so they're all named after people in the, uh, in the Alice Caroline office. <laughs> so you can just see that there. It's a patchwork bag. It's quilted, so it's really lovely and soft. And it's got this firm base as well on the bottom. I can show you here. Which just means that it stands up on its own. It's, you know, it's got that nice, and it gives you that room, that space at the bottom to put things in, in, in the bottom of your bag so you can still find them. So in that kit, you get that, um, what was it called, the folder web? Bon bon folder band. Folder band. I know, I've <laughs> Folder been, band for the handles. I've been basically the bag trying itself. to memorise that. So folder band, that folder band. Um, so you get that for the handles. You get the uh, hot pink lining fabrics, all of those Liberty prints for the patchwork section in the body of the bag itself and the strip inside too. You get the base and all of your instructions from Alice Caroline with um, really thorough uh, diagrams and pictures talking you through the, the construction process for that. 47.45, this is the bag itself. Well over half of the stock of this one's gone. I don't know if you can see here, but this is that boxed in base um, that Anna was showing us how to do this morning. So it's got that nice rigid uh, bottom there so it stands up. Also giving you lots of space inside the bag, that hot pink lining, keeping the, um, that chain piecing section in the, in the top. The handles with the folder band there, so they're nice and strong and rigid. And inside, we've got some bits and pieces in there, but lots of space for storage. Lovely. So that's the Catherine. That one's still in stock. And then we also had the, um, the Sarah bag, which is this one here. Thank you, Jay. Um, this one has actually sold out, I'm afraid. So someone's asked about this. This is a canvas Liberty bag um, that Anna made this morning, but the process, if you wanted to uh, make something similar with a different fabric, the actual uh, making process is shown in the eight o'clock show this morning. And then we've got this Tresco clutch, which we're doing at the moment with, um, with Anna. This is that lovely uh, Tresco fabric there that you can see those bright, lovely, bold lime greens and yellows and pinks, that green linen. Well over half of this stock has gone, and then that Liberty fabric inside as well. June Meadow? June, June's Meadow. June's Meadow you've got inside an amazing there. <laughs> so you've got the zips, you've got the D-ring, the clip, you've got the um, folder band, and then you've got all of your fabrics there too, and the instructions. For $24.95, a lovely summer bag to take out on a summer's evening or on holiday. We also had two, two charm packs, and one of those has sold out, but the pink one is still available, which is this one here. 36 squares and um, Liberty fabrics there and um, these are two and a half inch charm squares so you could use those to create a little cushion or a um, toiletry or makeup bag patchwork you can use those for again um, that chain piecing ALBY92 in pink and blue I forgot the word there chain piecing that's what I was looking for 995 so we're just finishing off this Tresco bag we're nearly there. We're just putting the zip into this there. one. And we had the book as well. So, so many things. That, that was where the pattern for that cushion comes from. And some of these other lovely um, sort of dolls and skirts and all of these um, Liberty uh, fabrics incorporated into projects by Alice Caroline in the Little Lady Liberty book. Please check out your baskets on the book if you do want that one. And um, we're limited on stock on that now. QOFW09. And that's 15.95. Gorgeous projects for little girls, grandchildren or your own children. So let's just quickly look at this finishing stage. Well, We're so nearly sort there. Of nearly there. So I've sewn the zip into the other side, and now I'm attaching the lining onto the other side. So it's exactly the same process as I just showed. Okay. So you again right sides together on the zip and the and the tress go on the top. On the top. On the, yep. Yep. And then you've got right side down on top of the zip. Okay. Yep. So it's, it's all in the instructions, but it's right side down, so so that the lining is. It's around the right way. Okay, we've run out of time. Oh no, I oh, know. We did this bag, a similar bag, well, the exact same bag, but in different fabric. Can I just um, explain how you fix it together? Yes, so when you, when you actually, when you've done, sewn your zip in, you then sew your lining together, leaving a gap to put okay. it through, and then you sew all the way down around the outsides. Yeah, and then, and then you pull, you it, pull through. it through. And then you get the ta-da. And then you get the ta-da. Oh, I need to do a ta-da. I'll do the ta-da <laughs> next time. Just do a ta-da with the yeah. other one. Here, do it with this one. Ta-da! <laughs> 
<laughs> so, I like and that, this is your last day at work. You're off to France for a month, oh. aren't you? She's made it to holiday time. Very jealous. Yeah. But thank you so much for coming in today. These are lovely really fun. Yeah. Have a lovely morning. So thank, thank you. you. Hope you find your invisible zip. I will. So, <laughs> we'll be back in three minutes. See you shortly. <laughs> Follow us on Instagram. Search for our Sewing Quarter page and follow us to get our latest posts. Don't forget, shopping with us is easy and simple. You can just contact us at 0800 112 4433 and speak to our UK-based call centre to place an order or shop online with us at www.sewingquarter.com. Today I'm going to be showing you how to do diagonal tacking, which is also uh, known as pad stitching, but depending on what you're using it for. Diagonal tacking would be a temporary stitch just to attach layers of fabric together, like interlinings or interfacings, and you'll be doing that to the wrong side of the fabric. So normally you would use two layers of fabric, but I'm going to be just using this fabric here on a hoop, just so I can show you, show you the stitches. So I'm going to be taking my needle through my fabric, and then I'm going to be doing in and out to create a diagonal shape. And then I'm going to go further down and again coming in and out. So you can see that I'm moving from the right to left, but if you're right or left handed, then this can change either way, whatever's more comfortable for you. So it's this small stitch here that gives you the diagonal shapes and you just keep going down your fabric. So once you've done these stitches down here, you then need to go back up to create a second row of stitches. But this time you need to come in and out the other way. So this time I'm going from right to left, so I'm mirroring that stitch. Like so. Tilly Rose returns to our studio on Tuesday the 1st of August with two inspirational hours using Thread's printable fabric. With Thread's, the creative possibilities are endless as you can print any image onto fabric from your home printer and textile artist Tilly is here to offer a little inspiration. She'll show us how to enhance your printed images with machine embroidery to create beautiful effects and she'll also demonstrate how to make a personalised quilted photo album cover. So, join us for Threads with Tilly Rose, Tuesday the 1st of August at 9am and 11am, only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78. When you spend £10 on your first purchase, you will receive this free sewing kit from the Sewing Quarter worth £14.99. Sewing Quarter is at the very heart of sewing as we bring you all things sewing and quilting. The team behind us live and breathe sewing day to day. We strive to bring you exclusive offers, exciting live demonstrations, and most importantly, we will custom cut fabric to your specification in our very own cutting room. We will also be bringing you TV exclusives that you won't be able to find anywhere else. So come and join us today at the Sewing Quarter. Welcome to the Sewing Quarter.
Good morning, welcome back. If you've been with us this morning, I hope you've been enjoying those Liberty fabrics as I have just given Anna a big squeeze as she's left the, the studio this morning. I've had such a lovely time working with her on those gorgeous Tresco bags, the Catherine bag and the Sarah tote. Congratulations if you've got any of those. Please do send us in a picture once you've made them. I'd love to see them. Let me see them in action. If you're taking it on holiday, send us a snap on the beach of you with your Catherine bag. Um, so we've had this Liberty book as well that they've um, that Alice Caroline has brought in this morning. Um, well, from Alice Caroline, obviously, we had Anna in. It all gets confusing with, the, with the, all the A's. Um, but this book is by Alice Caroline. She has a lifelong passion for Liberty fabrics, and she's got such a close relationship with Liberty. Um, they get some exclusive fabrics from them, and she's incorporated these into this lovely book with lots of project ideas for little ladies, for our little girls. So whether that's for grandchildren or for your own children, you could work on projects with them or perhaps um, just making something for them. So as it says here on the back, making little girls' dreams come true. So lovely little projects that you can incorporate, um, that you can wear and also incorporate into bedrooms and playrooms. Let's have a look inside. So it's a really beautifully put together book. The photography is gorgeous. You, the, the Liberty fabrics speak for themselves. You know, these gorgeous um, pinks and whites and florals. Really lovely. Such a girly book. There's that cushion that we've had on earlier today, hoping to do a show on that at some point in the future. But as you go through, talking first of all, just an introduction to the fabrics. So those Tarn lawns that are um, in, that Liberty of London are infamous for, you know, that lovely silky fabric. There they are, you can see those there. So talking about color, Anna was saying that Alice really does have an eye for color. So just lots of projects in here incorporating those. So you've got the doll, you've got um, cushions, you've got lovely, gorgeous um, sort of pillow sets and uh, duvet sets. It is a really gorgeous book, well put together. You've got those butterflies there that you can see incorporated. They've popped those onto curtains. We were just doing that raw edge applique. Congratulations if you've got that uh, quilting set. So you've got lampshades. Lovely, there you can see that butterfly lampshade. They look lovely on there. If you've got those templates from that quilting set, you could certainly incorporate those with some fabrics onto a lampshade. But you've got um, storage baskets. So again, these are things that you could use anywhere around the house. They don't have to be just for little girls. But lots of great projects in here and tips and hints and some clothes as well. I showed you some of those um, little skirts that um, Anna bought in today. Lovely rah-rah skirts. Very fun, very girly. and a dress as well. And then you've got all these little things as well, little bags. These were all bit, these have all been named after, Adam was saying after people um, that Alice knows, so named after little girls who she knows. So this is one, this is the Molly purse. One was named after Lily, Anna's daughter. So there's loads of different projects in here. Oh, look at that pencil case. You'd be the talk of the town at school if you went into school with that. <laughs> Patchwork pencil case, you could use that charm pack, actually, that we had this morning for two and a half inch squares. You could use those to make that. You've got the Sara drawstring bag. And here's that lovely little dolly as well, the Mia doll. So QOFW09, that's for the little lady book. If you do love your Liberty fabrics, you want to incorporate them into some projects for a little lady or just for yourself, um, then that's 15.95 for that book there. So this hour, we're doing Quilt As You Go. Another thing that's always incredibly popular here at Sewing Quarter, this is taking the stress and the work out of quilting. You get that pre-printed batting that you can apply straight your fabric straight onto. So let's go across and have a look. Look at this table. Gosh, we're, we're covered this morning. We've got brand new Quilt As You Go set this morning. This is an example of a Quilt As You Go here. Um, this is one that we've, we've made on the show. And um, how this works, if you... Imagine, if you've never heard of Quilt As You Go, imagine uh, painting by numbers. So basically, the uh, batting or the wadding is pre-printed with numbers on it. So we've got a brand new one this morning. This is a premiere, the Colorado Quilt As You Go, which is this one here. So let me just move this one out of the way a little bit. So if you can see here, this is the uh, Colorado, the brand new one that we're launching this morning. And this is pre-printed on the batting. So you can just see those numbers there. If you can see if we look really closely, you can see that it's all been printed on. If I show you on the back here, you can maybe see some of these grid lines. So this is indicating where you're going to pop your fabrics onto. So you can quilt straight onto this wadding. You're just adding your fabric to this. 
and it creates a really good effect. Perhaps if you um, want a quicker quilt, this is what this is going to look like, your finished quilt. It's 40 inches by 40 inches. So this one is a lap quilt. We've not made this one yet because it's brand new. We've never had it in before. It's a, this is a launch this morning. But you can just see there how as you add your uh, fabrics, as you work outwards on that Colorado cabin quilt, you, you get that quilted effect straight onto the batting. And also the back, um, the, the back side of the batting is fusible. So you can just add your backing straight onto that and you're automatically quilting as you sew. Also, you, just, you can just pop your binding on there. So this is only 10.95, this is a premiere. So you can just buy this on its own this morning. And this one is a brand new material in their, uh, their batting and wadding. This is 100% polyester. So this is 10.95 for the Colorado brand new quilt as you go set. Now, because this is brand new, this morning we've got a, a, a brand new thing that we're going to offer this morning too. This is bundled with some fabric for you in a, in a separate combination. So let's show you what you get in that. As you can see, we've teamed that with some lovely uh, soft greys, some aquas and some pinks. And you've got some blue there as well to create that, um, that cabin quilt using five metres of fabric, which is all the fabric you need to create this 40 inch square quilt. So I'm going to show you the different fabrics that you get for this quilt. Uh, as I said, you just attach these straight onto the batting. So you literally just go straight to your machine. Once you've cut your pieces, um, you can just attach those to the wadding, sewing those through. Um, and, and you know, you get that quilted effect much more quickly. This is taking all of the piecing elements out of it for you. You don't have to worry about thinking of the pattern. You just pop it straight on. So let's look at these colors. So first of all, you get the, uh, you get obviously the quilt as you go. That's the first thing that's in the bundle. All of that wadding and batting there for you. Then moving on to the fabrics, these are your colours. So you've got your aqua spot on, which is this one here. Half a metre of this one. So you've got that really soft aqua, 100% cotton with those cream polka dots as well that you can use for whichever element of the quilt you want to. We would suggest maybe using this for the uh, binding. The spot on always looks really lovely on your binding or the central panels. Then you've got half a metre here of your, um, this is just your solid aqua, so just a rich uniform colour. Again, 100% cotton and the colours have been matched perfectly there. Then you've got your candy spot on. If you get a metre of this one, let me just show you. Here we go. Oh, this might make your eyes go a bit funny actually because it's little dots. Let's have a look. So this is your spot on, on your pink there. So that's again, perfect for your binding. There it is. Let's not look at that for too long. It might make your eyes go funny. Let's get that one away. <laughs> then you've got a solid pink as well. Let me just find that one. So you've got a meter of that spot on pink. Then you've got a meter and a half of your magenta here. So this is enough here if perhaps you wanted to use that for your backing. Then you've also got sea blue, half a metre of this. Again, another solid, so just that, uh, that one rich colour. Half a metre of mercury, again a solid. So that lovely soft grey there. These are 100% cotton, as you would want with a quilt. And then you've also got your heron grey. This is your linear texture fabric. So this is just adding some depth. You've got that cross hatch detailing there. You can just see almost like little threads all the way through it. It does give a, a linear effect. You also get a Gutemann thread. So you have literally got everything there to do your quilt. So you, you would pop all of these different, uh, different fabrics, your spot ons, your blues, your pinks, your aquas, all of these team together with the Colorado batting and the thread to create a finished product that's 40 inches by 40 inches. You can just see here an example of a finished one and how it would look. But that is pre-printed, so you can see your three steps. You cut your fabric, you sew by numbers, and then you just complete the quilt. Um, with, you know, you just got to do your seams and your bindings. So on, this, is a, this is a premiere, this Colorado cabin quilt as you go. On the bottom of your screens, XHEQ60, that's the um, item number if you just want to do the um, 
if you just want the quilt as you go set so if you want to add your own fabric you can buy that um, in isolation but if you do want that with a bundle so everything arrives ready to go you just start that as a project and then that's QCGC42 and that's 5145. Okay so let's move on to sophisticated stripes that sounds fun doesn't it so sophisticated stripes this is another um, pattern from quilt as you go this is the one you can see behind me um on the on the wall here so you've got those um lovely diagonal strips i can't remember which date we did this but i was definitely in when we did this show i'm trying to think we'll find out the date of when we made this one and um, but you've got lovely the diagonal sort of corners and these two this corner here as well and then that main central panel and this starts to come together really quickly you can just see this is obviously a bigger quilt but we've used this incorporated this here with our purples and and um, lovely teals so this one here is it's this one is it not i don't want to get the wrong one Let's just check. Sophisticated strips. Yes, this is the one. So this is a slightly different um, wadding. I don't know if you can see here the difference. This is really super soft. Um, it's almost like a fleecy um, sort of feel. If we can just look at that one. So again, your sophisticated stripes. This one is 40 inches by 50 inches. Lovely just to see it hung up so you can see, um, you know, how it looks when it's finished. This one's 80% cotton and 20% polyester. So it is very different. If I just hold these two side by side, I don't know if you can just see there those different, because this is actually a bigger quilt. So this is, um, this, this one is a thicker polyester wadding. This one here is 80% cotton and 20% polyester. Again, all of your lines are printed on here, so you've got those all marked on, and they're numbered, so you just add your, um, add your fabric to that. So this, the great thing about this quilt as well is it's good for pre-cuts, and it's all strips and straight lines, so you can get that rotary cutter out, and you can just start sewing your fabric on. Comes together really quickly. It's a great way, if you haven't got the time, um, you know, to go through that traditional quilting process, because you're attaching your fabric straight onto the wadding. Even some of our, you know, uh, lots of our viewers who are very accomplished quilters and they still love these quilt as you go sets because sometimes you want something a bit quicker. You need, um, you know, maybe you've got a new baby in the family or you've got someone who you'd like to make a quilt for. You've got fabric that you want to use up. And um, then you, these, these quilt as you go sets are great for that because you can, um, you can get from A to, a to B really quite quickly and have something that you, you can finish and pass on to someone um, without spending years or months um, making a quilt. Anna was saying in the last hour her quilting project been on the go for, for ages and it does just take a while to, to finish one so these are super speedy really quick quilt as you go so this one here sophisticated strips the one you can see behind me a nice large quilt there um, you can just see those different blocks coming together 11.95 NTEQ46 has anybody made a quilt as you go that can send in a picture if you've made one please send it in a, in a snap you can send it to studio at sewingquarter.com we can show it on the show so if you have got a picture of one that you've made i'd love to see it and um, i know that some of these other quilt as you go sets have been on before so perhaps you've already done this one and you're ready to tackle the new one the colorado cabin so the next one here is our um, Paris on Point. So this is a slightly, this is a different, again, offering a different pattern, introducing some diamond shapes into this. And this is also a different um, shape. So I'll just show you your measurements here. Let's have a look where it is. So this one here is utilizing pre-cuts. So um, your fabric requirements, you can use charm squares, um, pre-cut uh, strips and squares, or obviously you can cut your own and for your sashing and binding as well. So this is 24 inches by 36 inches. So this is a smaller quilt, but also people sometimes buy, uh, multi-buy these and attach them together to make a bigger quilt. So you could buy, you know, a couple of these and make one big one. But this is the pattern here that you can see for Paris on point. So you've got those points in your diamonds, six main diamonds. We haven't actually uh, got a made up one of these, but as I say, you could um, multi-buy these, create those blocks and then sew them together to create a bigger one. The block pattern here, you can just see at the side. As with sophisticated strips, this one is the, uh, the same in terms of the, uh, the, the uh, fabric that the batting is made out of. So this is 80% cotton and 20% polyester. You can see all of your lines marked on there. Introducing some triangles here to obviously get that diamond effect. 
but this is a piece by number construction. So as you're, um, as you're piecing those together, the blocks all start to form, you know, very quickly you start to create that quilt and create that shape and you're quilting as you go. I know that sounds obvious because it's in the name, but as you're attaching your fabric to the wadding, you're quilting, you're getting that quilted effect. So very quickly, you're getting that lovely 3D texture, that 3D finish and feel by adding your thread and fabric to the, uh, to the batting itself. So this one, Paris on Point, LXEQ15 is your item number for that one. And this is 11.95. Lovely. So the next one, we've got some of this made up. So this is great. So you can start to see how it, this comes together. Oh, look at that. So this one here, another quilt as you go. We've got lots of options this morning. This one is London Labyrinth. So we've had Paris on point. We're moving to a different city. We're heading over to London. Again, 80% cotton, 20% polyester for this one. Here you've got your block patterns here. Let me just show you the size of that finished quilt for this one. It says it just here. This one again, same as Paris on point, 24 inches by 36 inches. You could combine these if you wanted to, your Paris and Point and London Labyrinth. This is a really great example where you can see here your numbers. So as I said, let's turn it around. Um, like painting by numbers, you've got all of your different sections marked there for you. It's all labelled up, ready to go. You just have to add your fabric to it. Let's look at what that really looks like in reality. So, oh, this is beautiful. I don't know what these fabrics are but they're lovely. So let's have a look at, this is just, your, I'm giving you an idea of your formation. So these are your blocks that are uh, being created for this quilt. Lovely shapes. This is a slightly more intricate design, so you get that, um, you get that really lovely finish. Great again for if you want to use up pre-cuts or if you've got some fabric in your stash where you want to use smaller sections. Oh, that's a nice idea. Producer Hannah just said this would be nice in sort of an ombre effect. So you could go with light to dark. You can see it there on the pink side as well. So you've got that central block in the middle and then working outwards to create those lovely um, sort of all variations on your rectangles and your strips. On the back here, you can just see those different shapes. If you can't see, just because you've got that um, that cream cotton, but just this is this is the shape of the block itself. So this just gives you an idea of what the um, what you're aiming for. So you can see this um, sort of spiraling outwards effect all the way around. X R E Q sixty nine, and that's that lovely fleecy batting. Again, if you want to make it bigger, you can just attach another one. You can have two quilt as you go, or three or four, and scale that up to whichever size you wish. So this one here is uh, one of the much bigger ones. That's the sophisticated strips. And um, these ones are 36 by 24 inches, the Paris on Point and London Labyrinth. So these are slightly smaller quilts, and they do lend themselves to being scaled up. Or if you just want a lap quilt or a little small one, um, then these are great for that. So six blocks, so you'd have, this would be replicated three times. So the finished quilt would be uh, three of these. I don't know if we can just see that in terms of scale, but it would be, I'm trying to think how we would mark that on the desk. One again on there. So it's sort of that sort of size. Really lovely. I love this central strip as well through the middle. I don't know if you can see, but you sort of get that, um, that sashing. You can just see here, it's dividing up those different blocks. But you would just build these all the way down. So you'd have one, two, three, and then you end up with those six blocks. And again, you could replicate if you wanted 12, or if you wanted to go really big, you could go for 24. So here we are. Also, um, what's lovely about Quilt As You Go, I don't know if you can see here, but they reference on their packaging and they have a YouTube channel. So you can watch videos on these quilts on YouTube, um, sort of showing you the, the process, instructions of how to use them, of how to do Quilt As You Go. And they've got some really um, thorough instructions. And we've also got previous shows where we've done Quilt As You Go, like we made this one on a show. So you can go back and watch those on YouTube too. Um, you've got tutorials, you know, in the process of how you apply those, um, those different parts of the fabric together and put them straight onto the batting. Okay, fabulous. 
So our premier one, which is the uh, Colorado, that's this brand new one. This one is already selling really well. This is really popular. We've never had this on the show before. So we got loads of stock of this one in because it's brand new um, and we knew it would be popular, but it is flying out. Um, this is it on its own, XHEQ60. So you can just see there, this is the, uh, the effect that you get. It's the Colorado Cabin. This is 40 inches by 40 inches, so this is a square quilt, perfect as a lap quilt. And this is 10.95, 100% polyester. This is the all new material um, that quilt if you, quilters you go are going for. You can see here it's got quite a high loft to it. It's got, it's got a really lovely uh, squidgy feel, but it is nice and thick. You can just see that as it's wrapped around in the packaging there and that it is a nice thick uh, batting. All marked as well on the back. So if obviously as it's a square, if you bought four, you could make a really big square quilt. Um, this is a brand new one this morning for 10.95. Now, across the bottom, we've bundled that up with some fabric as well, if you want to buy that with the fabric all ready to go. So you need five metres of fabric for this quilt, the Colorado quilt. But everything you need there is in that kit. You've got the spot on pink, the spot on aqua. You've got a solid pink and aqua. You've also got the heron grey linear fabric. You've got the lovely uh, soft blue and you've also got your grey as well. So everything there you need for your backing and for the front of the quilt too. With quilt as you go, the backing's fusible, so you can just pop your backing straight onto it. So, 10.95 for that brand new Colorado cabin quilt on its own. So we've also got one other option. We're, we've got lots of quilt as you go options this morning. Really, really popular. This one here, so this is out Rolling Stone, the Rolling Stone quilt as you go. I feel like we should have some music going on in the background of this. We need to, I'm, I'm not going to sing, but we, yeah, but we should have some quilt as you go, uh, quilt as you go Rolling Stone background music. So you can see again that pre-printed um, wadding, you can see all of your numbers on the back there, all of your sections marked out. This one, the finished size is 24 inches by 36 inches. So we've made half of this up, almost as a, as a runner actually, but you can just see the, um, the design here, the rolling stone block pattern. Obviously, um, and if you're changing your colours as well, you get a really different style quilt, so with those different layouts. Again, highlighting that YouTube channel here, where you can uh, get some info on quilt as you go and how to do that. You can add more to that. You've got the block pattern on this side. Let's have a look at the one we've made. Here it is. Ooh. So this would be, hang on, let's just check. So we've done this like a table runner. And um, this is double the size of this. So you would have two of these next to each other. So it's a fairly sizable quilt. And um, this one here, you can just see they've done that with three blocks here. And um, this makes a, a lovely table runner actually, but you can just, you get an idea of what that pattern looks like, introducing those triangles and those main sections. I love these windows where these are peeping through and where this is quilted, you can just see, you get that nice detail there. So this is the rolling stone pattern that comes on that quilt as you go block. I think that's what works really well as a table runner. But you can see as well that star effect coming away. So you can see this on the quilt as you go here, rolling stone block. There it is. You've got six of those that would all be assembled. So you're using that uh, rolling stone replicated. So it's duplicated, sorry, um, six times over. So you end up with this overall effect. And then you've got those sort of dividing sections there, your sashing, all the way around. So you get that really nice star effect with the central section too. OXEQ79, and that one is 8.95. So loads of quilt as you go options this morning. We've got one more. One more, I know you're going, one more, how can we? we have got another quilt as you go option, depending which one you like. These are a fab way to introduce children to quilting um, because you're putting it straight on and you get the satisfaction of having something finished far more quickly. Um, I know we keep referencing the summer holidays, perhaps if you want a summer project, let's pop that one on there, um, to do with a grandchild or, or your child, then this is a, is a great way of doing that. So this one here, where's the name on this one? Oh no, that's the Colorado cabin. 
oh, this has just randomly been put here. Our floor manager, Jay, has randomly picked something up. They're all laughing upstairs. This one here is not. <laughs> But this is the this is the Colorado that you can just see. And this he thought this was the Colorado. He's got mixed up. Oh Jay, what are we going to do with you? But let's let's put that away so you don't get confused. <laughs> but this packing this packaging here is actually another quilt as you go a Colorado cabin. This is the premier one. Um, <laughs> He's got totally mixed up. They're saying upstairs now, we're going to go through what quilt as you go is with you, Jay. They're all talking. Um, so you can just see here. This is the. <laughs> This is the Colorado cabin. You can see that one there. The pre-printed batting again. That one is brand new today. That's flying out. If that's in your basket, let's just talk you through that process as well. So if you want to add something to your basket online, can we show that on the web? Fantastic. So what you do is you head to the Sewing Quarter website, which is sewingquarter.com. And then if you go to the watch page, there's an icon, sort of a menu along the top. If you click on the watch icon, there it is. Once you click on the watch icon, if you just scroll down underneath that live feed of today's show, there's me laughing about Jay. As you just go under there, there's a shopping list of everything from today's show. So you've got all of those uh, quilt as you go sets. You can see a lot, a lot of these products this morning have actually sold out, but you've got those bobbin rings, the spool racks, you've got the Guterman threads, all oh, that fantastic uh, creative option storage system the thread magic, everything there, and those Liberty uh, patchwork, uh, the charm squares too. So you can add something to your basket, you click on it there, and then you log in, so you create an account, you can just see that basket option, add to your basket. So you click on that, that will go into your shopping trolley, which you can see. And then from there, you can just, you can change the quantity, you can just see that next to the price. And you can check out securely on the website there. So we also do um, one post postage and packaging per day. So that's quite unique to Sewing Quarter. We cap our PMP at 295. It's put on at midnight. So if you bought something, perhaps you bought the Catherine tote or the Sarah tote this morning. If you managed to get one, congratulations. If you have bought one of those, um, so you're thinking, oh, I've already, you know, I've paid one lot of PMP today. If you want to add something else, you'll only pay um, one lot of 295 per day. So you'll only be charged once. Also, um, our, if you've not bought anything from Sewing Quarter before, I was just seeing if I've got one. Oh, it's here. The first order that you place that's over £10, you get a Sewing Quarter sewing kit. So this is a little gift from us to you. This is worth £14.95. It's perfect to take on your travels. So you can just see this here. It's got our Sewing Quarter branding on it. Thousands and thousands of these have got out, which I think is lovely. It's lovely to imagine that if you're in the Sewing Quarter Club, how many people have got one of these. So if you, um, if you buy that Colorado quilt as you go today, you will have spent over £10 if that's your first order. You'll also get one of these. So you're getting 12 threads in there, all different colours. You've also got your tape measure. You get safety pins. You get your scissors, which are out of place because I used them earlier. You've got your seam unpicker. You've got your buttons. And you've also got some needles at the bottom there. So everything you would need is a little travel kit to take with you on the go. Perhaps if you're going on holiday and you want, this is great for mending as well, if you've got any little repairs that you might need to do or alterations. And that is completely free from us to you, worth £14.95 on any orders over £10. Lovely. So on the website, um, if you are interested in Quilt As You Go, perhaps you've already tackled some of these other ones. We even have a couple of other ones that we've not got on the show today. So if you've got some other designs, perhaps, uh, perhaps you want to look at some of the other designs they have on offer, we have got those on the website. So you can just search. There's a search bar. You can type in Quilt As You Go um, and you'll see some of the other options that we do have and that we don't have here in the studio. But the ones that we do have in the studio, this launch today is the Colorado, the Colorado Cabin. So this is this one that we've also got bundled up. This is really popular. We've bundled this up with some fabric as well, which I'll talk you through in a moment. You can see that effect here with the, um, the Colorado block. Over 50 of these already just quickly gone this morning. So you've got those, um, you can see there that quilt being built outwards to create a 40 inch by 40 inch square. The batting is 100% polyester, so this is a brand new material, an all new material from Quilt As You Go. And all of your marks are popped on there in navy blue, so you can see, but you can see these lines here, this is where you apply your um, fabric to it. 
So in terms of you don't have to worry about thinking about the uh, the pattern or the placement of your fabric. It's more about picking where you choose your um, where you want to put your different colours or the different fabric that you have. Now you also have this bundled up um, with some fabric as well. So this is the Colorado Cabin bundle. You get five meters of fabric, so that's how much fabric you need for this quilt. And we've bundled this up. Look at this stash of fabric that we would send you. So you get all these lovely aquas and pinks. You've got your spot on pink there. You've got your spot on aqua. Your solid aqua. You've got your solid pink. And you've got a lovely sort of cornflower blue. A soft grey. And that linear texture, linear look fabric with that uh, cross hatching there in your heron grey. So five metres of fabric in total, that's also paired with the Quilt As You Go bundle. So all of that comes together so you can get that finished product straight away and you get, your, you get some thread with that too. So everything you need there to create the 40 inch square quilt. And that one is XCGC4251.45 for that one. Oh, we've had a question in. So, oh, first of all, we've had a comment on this sophisticated stripes quilt. We'll look at that one in just a second. Bear with me. Don't worry, Sandra. Um, so I've also had a question in from Catherine. Good morning. Um, hi, Sewing Quarter. Thanks for another super program. You're very welcome. I've had a super morning with Anna. I've loved it today. Um, can I ask if the Quilt As You Go packs come in one piece of batting or separate blocks that you join together? Can we open one of these, Hannah? I don't know if I can open one of these to show you, but they come as one big piece. Um, so you can cut them if you want to into separate blocks. So if you wanted to do uh, like that, you can see like that table runner there, um, but they come as one big piece of batting. So they're ready to go for that finished assembled quilt, really, particularly with that Colorado cabin or your strips. Um, they're all ready, that all you're doing is applying your fabric to that. It's almost just like adding paint to a picture. And then you get that finished product with your binding and everything on there as well. Oh, we've got a picture been sent in. Let's have a look. Who's this one from? Morning, Lizzie. This is from Lizzie. So that's one of the blocks there singly. Oh, to make a cushion cover. And that's using the K facet fabric for a friend's birthday. Oh, that's lovely. That's gorgeous, Lizzie. So that's this, this one here, is it not? Let's just check. That's the rolling stone block. Um, is it, or is it Paris on point? Let's see. Going Paris on point. Yes, we're Paris on point. That's Paris on point from Lizzie. Um, so yeah, you can separate them if you want to. You can cut those up and use them as different blocks. Incorporate them into a cushion as Lizzie has done. Um, oh, and also we've got K facet, the actual K facet coming to sewing quarter. It's the, is it the 10th of August? It's the 10th of August he's gonna be in. So that is gonna be incredible. So Lizzie, if you like your K facet, you're gonna want to tune in then. So um, Liz has used the Paris on point quilt as you go set there. So you can see this is when the six are all together. So it comes as one big piece of, um, big piece of batting, but you can separate those if you want to. This one is 80% cotton and 20% polyester. So it's got that soft fleecy feel to it. This is the one that's been used there for that. That's the still of what it looks like. This is Lizzie's cushion that she made for her friend. So you could make six cushions if you wanted to. You could separate these uh, quilted sections, incorporate them into cushions or even into a bag if you wanted that to peep through. And that's 11.95. Now this morning we've also got some best press sprays. So Lucy Brennan is a re I saw on her um, on her Instagram actually she was using this the other day. You can use these. They're like a starch spray, but they um, they're really lovely. They smell fantastic. We've got three different options this morning. You use them for your ironing, uh, for pressing, and for just giving you that nice crisp finish. So let's look first of all. Can I spray it just so I can enjoy the smell? I just like having it in the air. Oh, it smells lovely. <laughs> This is lovely. This is the lavender one. I chose a good, good one there. Um, so this one here is a, it's a clear starch spray, so it's not going to leave any residue like some of those uh, traditional starch sprays do. You're not going to get any. Oh, it smells gorgeous. I wish you could smell. Can you? Can I? Can, can you smell it? Who else in the studio can smell it? You can't smell it yet. It's travelling your way. Um, so this is, you can see here, it's a, it's a starch alternative. You spray that straight onto your fabric. You just give that a shake and you can spray that straight on. You can give quite a generous squirt of it onto the uh, fabric itself. It comes in a nice clear bottle so you can see how much you've got left rather than it being in an aerosol can. Obviously, that's environmentally friendly. And you can see how much you've got left inside once when you need to get a new one. 
So that one is the lavender, 170 ml of that, 4.95. Now we also have another smell. This one here, can I spray it? Can I spray it? I just have a big mishmash of sprays in the studio. This is linen fresh. Let me step back so we have a different smell. Mmm. Oh, that, oh, I like, I love the smell of fresh, um, fresh laundry. They're laughing at me upstairs, but it, it, that is, oh, that's my favourite one. Oh, that's gorgeous. So that one there is a, a fresh linen spray. So that's, it's got that lovely smell of nice, fresh laundry. This is where we need like smelly telly, smelly telly. <laughs> you need a TV that you can smell. I wish you could smell these this morning. So again, this is, uh, this is the starch spray that you can pop straight on to your, uh, to your fabric when you're ironing. And it gives you not only adding, uh, you know, that element of starch, so that lovely, uh, clean, fresh, professional finish, that nice, uh, crisp finish. Um, great for shirts as well, um, for, you know, for collars and for cuffs, but also um, adding a scent too. This is useful for quilt as you go, just making it easier to work with. Again, if you're pressing as you, as you apply your fabric to that quilting and to that wadding, giving you that nice crisp finish. So that's your um, fresh linen spray. That's that smell. RDEQ08. Oh, that smells so nice. And this is a pump spray as well, so it's nice and easy. It's not, um, it's not, you know, rather than like an aerosol can, like a deodorant, this is a nice, easy pump. This one here, this is scent-free. So perhaps if you don't want to add a scent, perhaps if you're, you are using this more for dressmaking, I won't need to spray this one because I won't be able to smell it. Um, but if, you're, if you don't want to add another, um, another sort of uh, fragrance to your laundry, then this is a scent-free one. Perhaps you don't want to add another smell. But again, it's that starch spray giving you that crisp finish for, uh, for collars or for cuffs. And this is the scent-free version, NDEQ38. Again, with that um, easy pump spray on the top. And you can just see there, 170 mil inside. 4.95. So three different options, lavender, fresh linen and scent free. The fresh linen is my favourite, that smells absolutely gorgeous. If I could spray that onto my top this morning, uh, then I would, but mate, I probably shouldn't spray it straight on without an iron. But we've got those three there. I'd have a nice crisp top. <laughs> Um, so we've also had another image sent in from, who's this one from, Hannah? Lorraine. Good morning, Lorraine. Thanks for sending that in. Let's see what we've got. Oh, so this is one with the London Labyrinth quilt as you go. Let's have a look at the finished effect of that. Oh, wow. Oh, I love the colour combinations. So that's that, what I like about that. So you've got mainly your monochrome there, but with that splash of pink as well. And that goes really nicely with, uh, with your, is that, I don't know if that's your carpet, but that goes, goes perfectly with that, with your greys and whites and blacks. So let's have a look at that one. Thanks, Lorraine. Thanks for sending that one in. Where's your, where is it? Here it is. So we've got a little bit made up of this one if you wanted to chop it down and use that for smaller sections. Obviously, you've just seen Lorraine's. When you've got six, it makes a bigger quilt. Here it is. And you could always, if you wanted to buy two, you could double the size of that so you ended up with 12 blocks. But the London Labyrinth one here, the finished size of this, let me just double check that for you. 24 inches by 36 inches if you keep that all in one piece. XREQ69. Let's just show how, um, this is how we've made up. This is how, you know, this is how if you bring in your different fabrics, whichever, whatever you want to add, whatever colour and that, that side of the design. This, this really shows how they could be so different using different fabrics. So this is the one that we've done. You can see that here in lovely greens and blues. This is the same quilt as you go. So it's that same wadding and batting. This is just introducing different fabrics. So we've decided to add these to our one. Even in those two different colorways, I mean, these are the same collection, but they look very different depending on what fabric you choose to introduce. And then we've got Lorraine's, which also looks entirely different again with that monochrome and pink feel. Let's look at that picture again, can we? Here it is. really just sort of making it individual. So although you're getting the, um, the quilt as you go takes the, the, the pattern designing out of it for you, it's taking away that stress, you still get an element of design. It's still customizable because you're choosing what fabrics you introduce. You're choosing your colorways, you're choosing where you place your fabrics. That's the fun part, you know, getting to choose whether you want to have, you know, if you want to start dark and, and, and work inwards towards a lighter fabric, having sort of an ombre effect, or if you want to have a busy pattern section and then introduce team it with some solids or some uh, plain fabrics. If you've got some designer prints that you want to feature maybe in that central section, maybe you've got one little charm square left over from those Liberty prints this morning, you could pop that in a, in a central section and then work out with some plainer fabrics as well. 
So there's loads of possibilities, but quilters, you go like paint by numbers, you just add the fabric. So you just add that element of the design. You don't have to worry about um, figuring out, you know, measuring. You're just adding your, um, your cut fabric and adding your strips. So we've also had another picture in. I'm loving this. Thank you so much for getting in touch and sending in your photos. Who's this one from? This one's from Jean. Good morning, Jean. Let's just check. This one is, is this, this is, this is Paris on point again. So looking again, this is a really popular one, but you can see how different it is. That's got a really, uh, that's a really nice, more traditional feel to that with that color palette. What's that fabric in the middle? Is that a batik? I don't know if that's, that's really lovely. So again, if anyone else has got pictures, please do send them in like Jean has just done and Lorraine. That's that Paris on point. Having a relaxing Saturday morning, Jean, watching Sewing Quarter. I love it. That's great. Thank you for sending in your picture. Um, so you can see here the Paris on point quilt. And Jean said she loved doing it as well. So it's a nice, quick process. Really, is, it's a satisfying process as well because you get to finish it far more quickly than you would if you were designing a quilt from, strat, from scratch. But that Paris on point one, can we see those two side by side, those two pictures? Or can we look at them one, just so you can see um, those two Paris on points when you're introducing the two different, um, the two different fabric options to that, how different they look depending on what you choose to introduce. We'll get those up though, um, we'll show you those two different options. Lovely. So we've had London Labyrinth, we've had Paris on point. Then the one you can see behind me here is Sophisticated Stripe. So this is a bigger quilt, as you can see. 50 inches by 40 inches. I'm pretty sure this was Lucy Brennan who did this one. Yeah, I think it was Lucy Brennan. But you can see here, it looks so good hung on the wall. You know, if you wanted to add that as a feature to a room, you don't have to use this, you know, on a bed or on a sofa, but you could just see this as well, sort of thrown over the back of a settee, would be really lovely. What's nice about this is you've got that lovely diagonal detail with your strips and all straight lines, so keeping it nice and simple for cutting. And then obviously your diagonal working through this way as well through the main body of the quilt. That one there, sophisticated stripes. You can see this here on the packet. And this again is your 80% cotton, 20% polyester. So it's that nice, soft, fleecy quilt. All of your lines marked on. And you can just see there that sophisticated stripes um, as well in a different colorway, in a different color option. Cutting your fabric sewing it into place and quilting as you go. If you've got some fabric you love, this is gonna be really, you know, this is a really great way to feature it because particularly on this one, it's quite large sections of fabric. So if you've got some fabric off the bolt, maybe you've got some half meters, you're really getting to feature that in those main panels because it's nice big sections here. And also you can, you can add extra quilting. If you wanted to add maybe uh, diagonal lines to this or more um, sort of cross hatching detail, then you could do that. You could do some free motion embroidery. So you can add, you can add on, there's the, there's the option to, to step it up if you want to add the, to add the skill level. Oh, they've done, what, they've done what I just suggested upstairs. We've got these two um, Paris on points, uh, two different, color, two different uh, images that people have sent in this morning. So on, you can see there, um, Lizzie and Jean have both sent in pictures of Paris on Point Quilt As You Go projects that they've done. And they look so different. So one there has been incorporated K facet into a cushion. And one you can see as more of a, um, either a table runner or just as a strip. But those two different color options with the different fabrics, they look so different, but really effective in both, whichever you choose to do. Gorgeous, thank you for sending in your pictures. I love getting them. Studio at sewingquarter.com. Anyone else, get them in quick. We've still got, how long have we got? 15 minutes, go, go, go. So, um, something slightly different, but we are talking about quilting, so I'm just gonna show you this book that we've got in this hour. You wouldn't use this with Quilt As You Go because you don't need to. The Quilt As You Go sets are doing the actual quilting for you or your lines are marked up, you're just adding your fabric. But this is a quilting manu manual. Um, it's sort of designed to uh, boost your creativity. So there's lots in here. Um, it says it's sort of about energizing your quilting with there's lots of uh, standalone designs for blocks and for borders. Let me show you some of these. So the blocks and borders are at the back. You can just see here. Can I lay this down? I don't know if we can do our overhead. So if you're separate to quilt as you go, if you're doing your own quilt, you want some inspiration, 
we get lots of questions in about about um, quilting design you know that next step once you've done a quilt as you go um, and maybe if you want that next step up and you want to design your own there's some inspiration here for all over and um, you know some free motion quilting lots of different designs here we saw that free motion foot being used today by Anna from Alice Caroline and some border and um, border inspiration too this quilting manual as well has been contributed to by lots of different designers so you're getting inspiration from lots of different people these are good for uh, these would have been good for Christmas in July our Holly and Ivy <laughs> We've done Christmas, we've got to wait till Christmas, Christmas now. So you've got these borders here. Then you've also got some motifs that you could start to incorporate into your quilts. Lovely different effects here. Oh, I love the strawberry. That's gorgeous, I really like that. And grapes as well. A teapot and teacup. So you can incorporate these different motifs into your quilting designs. This is about if you want to, if you want to design your own quilt and you want some inspiration, you can obviously scale these up. So you wouldn't be using these with quilt as you go. These are more of a, if you want to design your own quilt, these are some inspiration for, um, you know, sort of templates and designs that you can incorporate into your own design. And then also at the front of the book, you've got loads of different techniques here on threads and fabrics, on using your sewing machine for quilting. Um, on the tension. Choosing quilting design, so it is talking to you about designing your own quilts. Block skeletons, so how you build those up. This isn't something we've really explored here a lot at Sewing Cauldron, it's something we want to do more of and we've not looked a lot at designing your own quilt so um, we're using sort of uh, templates and designs and, and patterns but if you, if you are at the stage where you're wanting to design your own quilt um, that's something we're really hoping to do some more of and also um, a book like this is, is, is a really great way to sort of hold your hand through that process. So sort of talking about envisaging the quilt um, and you know marking that up and, and how you can create that design. Free motion quilting, that's what we were doing this morning. We had the free motion foot, but we were doing some uh, quilting on that uh, quilt cover with the butterflies from Liberty. Hand quilting as well. Some sashiko, that Japanese sashiko. And then you have all of your motifs, your borders, and your all over patterns. So you can see here as well, all of these different designers contributing to the book. So you're getting design elements from lots of different people. And also referring you to some, all of these authors, different books. So perhaps if you like, all of the motifs are marked who they've been designed by. So perhaps if you find yourself really drawn to one of the designer's works, then you can go back and you can reference uh, books that they've, that they've written themselves. So SHSP46, that's the quilting manual, manual. it's 1595, some inspiration for designing your own quilt. If you want to move beyond the basics, if you want to, you know, use those techniques that you've learnt um, to, to introduce some motifs and some all over designs to different quilts, um, then you can do that with your free motion quilting and um, also for long arm quilters too. So we also had some other little tools in this hour this morning. We had those best press sprays that I was spraying in the studio just to make it smell lovely. Um, so we've got three best press, pr <laughs> best press spray options from Mary Ellen. Um, so three different scents. These are, um, they've got starch in them. So they're giving you that crisp um, sort of uh, finish to your ironing. You can use these as your um, ironing you know, garments, whether that's shirts, nice crisp collars and cuffs giving you that lovely, um, lovely professional sharp finish. Three different scent options. You've got the lavender first of all, that nice pump spray as well. And you can see how much you've got left because it's a clear bottle. YGEQ50 for the lavender. Which one's most popular at the moment? The lavender is the most popular. 4.95 for that. Then next up, we've also got the fresh linen. This one's my favorite. So that lovely fresh laundry smell that I don't think you can beat when you take your clothes out of the washing machine. So this is the fresh linen best press spray. 
Can I give, I might have to give that one another squirt in the studio just because I love the scent. <laughs> RDEQ08, 4.95. All of these are the same price point, just different scents. And if you don't want a scent, if you want to keep it nice and neutral and you don't want to add anything, perhaps you've already, you know, your washing powder and washing uh, fabric conditioner have already given you enough of a scent. This one is a scent-free um, spray, so you can use that again as a starch spray and giving you that crisp finish without a, any, scent, any scent or fragrance. So RDEQ08, that's the uh, fresh spray without any scent at all. And again, at 4 95 Now we also had some threads um, that were shown earlier. Oh, that one there was the wrong graphic. They're just gonna change the graphic for that one. Sorry, for that one there is just coming up on your screens for the uh, scent-free linen spray. There it is. It says it there, scent-free, NDEQ38 for that. So I've got some Aurifil threads to show you, but I just had another picture sent in. Thank you, who's this one from? This is from Sue, good morning, Sue. Oh, wow. So this is sophisticated stripes, like the one hanging behind me. Wow, is that like a metallic -y fabric? It's got a lovely sheen to it. Oh, so they've used that as a template, as a cuddle blanket for her grandson. That's a lovely idea. That's got a really love. I love that fabric. It's sort of got a bronzy, um, and almost, is that like a glittery? That's really nice, I like that. NTEQ46, that's sophisticated stripes. And again, you can see that, that's like that, that one there, that's been used as a template for a cuddle quilt, but you can see that um, that design, it's the same as the one on the wall behind me, different fabrics, different look, but you've got that wadding and batting that you can just sew your fabric straight onto. So like the picture we've just seen, or the one on the wall behind me, that's sophisticated stripes, which is this one just here. 50 inches by 40 inches for this one. And that one is 80% cotton, 20% polyester, NTEQ46. Thank you for that, Sue. Loving your pictures this morning. And if, I know we don't get a chance to show all of them on the show. I will look at them when I come off air as well. I do love seeing everything you've sent in. So we've also got these Aurifil threads this morning. So we showed these earlier. Someone's asked to see them again. And we had these on the show at, let me work back, nine o'clock. And these are perfect for quilting. And these are 100% cotton. Aurifil threads, these are from Italy. So they're um, from Milan. First of all, we've got Dandy Days. So these are a mixture of weights in this. You've got 50%, uh, 50 weight and 80 weight cottons. The higher they are, the uh, finer they are. We learned that this morning. So these are 100% cotton, which obviously you want to use for your, uh, for your quilt. Let me open that there. And you've got a vast array of colors in there. These are ones on the wooden spools here. These are your 80 weights, so these are finer threads. And then you've got your 50 weights on these red spools. But you've got corals and turquoises, yellows, greys. Dandy days, LBUA05. You get 200 meters on these spools. 10 in total. So that one there is 33.95. So another option as well, different colors. These ones are all 50 weight. So these are 100% cotton. This is why quilters love them. Um, Aurifil, uh, you know, are, are renowned for their quilting cottons and that lovely superior quality thread. You want to maintain that if you're doing a quilt with 100% cotton. So the happy colors one, you can just see on the front here, nice and happy. We're happy, it's Saturday. And this is a really bright, bold, vivid set of threads here. And these are all 50 weights, so 10 50 weight threads in this bundle. RAUA46, 33.95. And just quickly, one other option. This one is going home to roost, so this has got an autumnal feel to this one. This one's actually the most popular. Oh, we can't be thinking about autumn already, surely. We need some more sun. Please, please, come on, sun. So this is the home to roost uh, thread bundle from Aurifil again. And you've got some nice soft uh, corals in, in this one, and also some coppers and some golden colours, and those minty greens as well. Really great value. If you were buying these separately, they do work out much more expensive. So by bundling them in a pack, like this neutral thread pack, you do make a saving on your 100% cotton threads from Aurifil. TNUA58. 
So that's 33.95. Gorgeous. So we've seen these threads individually elsewhere and they range between four to six pounds per thread. So for 10 in a bundle, um, obviously it depends where you shop, but if you've got 10 in a, in a kit there at 33.95, they are good value um, and they are 100% cotton. And you've got 200 meters on all of those spools, so lots and lots of thread. So we're looking at all of these different quilt as you go this morning. The brand new launch that we've never had on before is this Colorado cabin. You can buy this on its own or you can buy this in a fabric bundle with five meters of fabric on the show today. We've never had this on before. We had loads of stock of this and it's selling really quickly this morning as it's a brand new one. 10.95. This is their new uh, formula as well, their new material. So it's 100% polyester. It's got a really high loft to it. You can just see here the thickness at the side. XHEQ60, create this 40 inch square here, 1095. So we've had loads of different uh, quilt as you go options in this show this morning. Let's have a look at what's coming up on tomorrow's show. Oh, we haven't got a menu. I'll just tell you what's coming up tomorrow. So John Scott is in in the morning. He's here from eight o'clock. We've got Joy in tomorrow morning. So eight o'clock is what are we doing? Uh, oh, the garden quilt at 8 a.m. in the morning, Joy and John. Then at nine o'clock, we've got John doing some cave facets. Oh, it's a cave showcase, so lots of cave facets uh, fabrics. And cave is in on the 10th of August, the king of colour himself. And um, then at 10 o'clock is Joy back again with John. She is. Joy and John are back and they're doing Good Night Sweetheart. Another, some more quilting. So lots of quilting this weekend. So that's with Joy and John. And at 11 o'clock, John is back and he's doing some bag making. So lots of different canvas fabrics. So thank you so much for your company today and for sending all your pictures. I've loved it. I'll see you soon. Bye. Follow us on Twitter for more inspiration, top tips, news and share your own creations with us. Don't forget, shopping with us is easy and simple. You can just contact us at 0800 112 4433 and speak to our UK-based call centre to place an order. Or shop online with us at www.sewingquarter.com.